ears for them. Already wide open would they have their mouths to howl. For if my foresight here deceive me not, they shall be sad ere he has bearded cheeks, who now is hushed to sleep with lullaby. O brother, now no longer hide thee from me. See that not only I, but all these people are gazing there, where thou dost veil the sun. Whence I told him, If thou bring back to mind what thou with me hast been, and I with thee, the present memory will be grievous still. Out of that life he turned me back, who goes in front of me. Two days are gone when round the sister of him yonder showed herself. And to the sun I pointed, Through the deep night of the truly dead has this one led me, With his true flesh that follows after him. Thence his encouragements have led me up, Ascending and still circling round the mount that you doth straighten, Whom the world made crooked. He says that he will bear me company, till I shall be where Beatrice will be. There it behoves me to remain without him. This is Virgilius, who thus says to me, and him I pointed at. The other is that shade for whom just now shook every slope your realm that from itself discharges him. Canto 24 nor speech the going, nor the going that slackened, but talking we went bravely on, even as a vessel urged by a good wind. And shadows that appeared things doubly dead, from out the sepulchres of their eyes betrayed wonder at me, aware that I was living. And I, continuing my colloquy, said, Peradventure he goes up more slowly than he would do, for other people's sake. But tell me, if thou knowest, where is Picarda? Tell me if any one of note I see among this folk that gazes at me so. My sister, who, twixt beautiful and good, I know not which was more, triumphs rejoicing already in her crown on high Olympus. So said he first, and then, "'Tis not forbidden to name each other here, so milked away is our resemblance by our dieting. This, pointing his finger, is Buona Giunta, Buona Giunta of Luca, and that face beyond him there, more peaked than the others, has held the holy church within his arms. From Tours was he, and purges by his fasting Bolsena's eels and the Vernacchia wine. He named me many others one by one, and all contented seemed at being named, so that for this I saw not one dark look. I saw for hunger bite the empty air Ubaldin Dalapila and Boniface, who with his crook had pastured many people. I saw Messer Marchese, who had leisure once at Forley for drinking with less dryness, and he was one who ne'er felt satisfied. But as he does who scans, and then doth prize one more than others, did I him of Luca, who seemed to take most cognizance of me. He murmured, and I know not what Gentuka from that place heard I, where he felt the wound of justice that doth macerate them so. O soul, I said, that seemest so desirous to speak with me, do so that I may hear thee, and with thy speech appease thyself and me. A maid is born, and wears not yet the veil, began he, who to thee shall pleasant make my city, howsoever men may blame it. Thou shalt go on thy way with this prevision. If by my murmuring thou hast been deceived, True things hereafter I will declare to thee. But say if him I here behold, Who forth evoked the new invented rhymes, Beginning, ladies that have intelligence of love, And I to him, one am I who, Whenever love doth inspire me, note, And in that measure which he within me dictates, Singing go. O oh, brother, now I see, said he, the knot which me, the notary, and Gitone held short of the sweet new style that now I hear. I do perceive full clearly how your pens go closely following after him who dictates, which with our own forsooth came not to pass, and he who sets him forth to go beyond no difference sees from one style to another, and as if satisfied he held his peace. Even as the birds that winter towards the Nile, 
sometimes into a phalanx form themselves, then fly in greater haste and go in file. In such wise all the people who were there, turning their faces, hurried on their steps, both by their leanness and their wishes light, and as a man who weary is with trotting lets his companions onward go and walks until he vents the panting of his chest, so did Forese let the holy flock pass by and came with me behind it, saying, When will it be that I again shall see thee? How long, I answered, I may live, I know not, yet my return will not so speedy be, but I shall sooner in desire arrive, because the place where I was set to live from day to day of good is more depleted, and until dismal ruin seems ordained. Now go, he said, for him most guilty of it at a beast's tail, behold, I dragged along towards the valley where is no repentance. Faster at every step the beast is going, increasing ever more until it smites him and leaves the body vilely mutilated. Not long those wheels shall turn, and he uplifted his eyes to heaven, ere shall be clear to thee that which my speech no father can declare. Now stay behind, because the time so precious is in this kingdom that I lose too much by coming onward thus abreast with thee. As sometimes issues forth upon a gallop a cavalier from out a troop that ride, and seeks the honour of the first encounter, so he with greater strides departed from us, and on the road remained I with those two who were such mighty marshals of the world. And when before us he had gone so far, mine eyes became to him such pursuivants as was my understanding to his words appeared to me with laden and living boughs another apple-tree, and not far distant from having but just then turned thitherward. People I saw beneath it lift their hands, and cry I know not what towards the leaves, like little children, eager and deluded, who pray, and he they pray to doth not answer, but to make very keen their appetite, holds their desire aloft, and hides it not. Then they departed as if undeceived, and now we came unto the mighty tree, which prayers and tears so manifold refuses. Pass farther onward without drawing near, the tree of which Eve ate is higher up, and out of that one has this tree been raised. Thus said I know not who among the branches, whereat Virgilius, Stasius, and myself went crowding forward on the side that rises. Be mindful, said he, of the accursed ones formed of the cloud-rack, who inebriate combated Theseus with their double breasts, and of the Jews who showed them soft in drinking, whence Gideon would not have them for companions when he towards Midian the hills descended. Thus, closely pressed to one of the two borders, on we passed, hearing sins of gluttony, followed forsooth by miserable gains. Then set at large upon the lonely road, a thousand steps and more we onward went, in contemplation, each without a word. What go ye thinking thus, ye three alone? said suddenly a voice, whereat I started as terrified and timid beasts I won't. I raised my head to see who this might be, and never in a furnace was there seen metals or glass so lucent and so red as one I saw who said, if it may please you to mount aloft, here it behoves you turn. This way goes he who goeth after peace. His aspect had bereft me of my sight, so that I turned me back unto my teachers, like one who goeth as his hearing guides him. And as, the harbinger of early dawn, the air of May doth move and breathe out of fragrance, impregnate all with herbage and with flowers, so did I feel a breeze strike in the midst my front, and felt the moving of the plumes that breathed around an odour of ambrosia, and heard it said, Blessed are they whom grace so much illumines, that the love of taste excites not in their breasts too great desire, hungering at all times so far as is just. Canto 25 now was it the ascent no hindrance brooked, because the sun had his meridian circle to Taurus left, and night to Scorpio. 
Wherefore, as doth a man who tarries not, but goes his way, whate'er to him appear, if of necessity the sting transfix him, in this wise did we enter through the gap, taking the stairway, one before the other, which by its narrowness divides the climbers. And as the little stork that lifts its wing with a desire to fly, and does not venture to leave the nest, and lets it downward droop, even such was I, with the desire of asking, kindled and quenched, unto the motion coming he who doth address himself to speak. Not for our pace, though rapid it might be, my father sweet forbore, but said, Let fly the bow of speech thou to the barb hast drawn. With confidence I opened then my mouth, and I began, How can one meagre grow there where the need of nutriment applies not? If thou wouldst call to mind how Meleager was wasted by the wasting of a brand, this would not, said he, be to thee so sour. And wouldst thou think how at each tremulous motion trembles within a mirror your own image, that which seems hard would mellow seem to thee, and that thou mayst content thee in thy wish, lo, Statius here, and him I call and pray he now will be the healer of thy wounds. If I unfold to him the eternal vengeance, responded Statius, where thou present art, be my excuse that I can naught deny thee. But he began, Son, if these words of mine thy mind doth contemplate and doth receive, they'll be thy light unto the how thou sayest. The perfect blood which never is drunk up into the thirsty veins, and which remaineth like food that from the table thou removest, takes in the heart for all the human members virtue informative, as being that which to be changed to them goes through the veins, again digest, descends it where it is better silent to be than say, and then drops thence upon another's blood in natural vase. There one together with the other mingles, one to be passive meant, the other active by reason of the perfect place it springs from, and being conjoined, begins to operate, coagulating first, then vivifying what for its matter it had made consistent, the active virtue being made a soul as of a plant, in so far different this on the way is that arrived already, then works so much that now it moves and feels like a sea fungus, and then undertakes to organize the powers whose seed it is, now, son, dilates and now distends itself the virtue from the generator's heart, where nature is intent on all the members. But how from animal it man becomes, thou dost not see as yet. This is a point which made a wiser man than thou once err so far, that in his doctrine separate he made the soul from possible intellect, and he no organ saw by this assumed. Open thy breast unto the truth that's coming, and know that, just as soon as in the fetus the articulation of the brain is perfect, the primal motor turns to it well pleased, and so great art of nature, and inspires a spirit new with virtue all replete, which what it finds there active doth attract into its substance, and becomes one soul, which lives and feels, and of itself revolves and that thou less may wonder at my word, behold the sun's heat which becometh wine, joined to the juice that from the vine distills. Whenever Lachesis has no more thread, it separates from the flesh, and virtually bears with itself the human and divine. The other faculties are voiceless all, the memory, the intelligence, and the will in action far more vigorous than before. Without a pause it falleth of itself, in marvellous way on one shore or the other, there of its roads it first is cognizant. Soon as the place there circumscribeth it, the virtue informative rays round about, as, and as much as, in the living members, and even as the air, when full of rain, by alien rays that are therein reflected, with diverse colours shows itself adorned, so there the neighbouring air doth shape itself into that form which doth impress upon it virtually the soul that has stood still. And then in manner of the little flame which followeth the fire where'er it shifts, 
after the spirit followeth its new form. Since afterwards it takes from this its semblance, it is called shade, and thence it organizes thereafter every sense, even to the sight. Thence it is that we speak, and thence we laugh. Thence it is that we form the tears and sighs that on the mountain thou mayhap hast heard according as impresses our desires and other affections, so the shade is shaped, and this is cause of what thou wonderest at. And now, unto the last of all the circles had we arrived, and to the right hand turned, and were attentive to another care. There the embankment shoots forth flames of fire, and upward doth the cornice breathe a blast that drives them back and from itself sequesters, Hence we must needs go on the open side, and one by one, and I did fear the fire on this side, and on that the falling down. My leader said, Along this place one ought to keep upon the eyes a tightened rein, seeing that one so easily might err. Summe Deus Clementiae, in the bosom of the great burning chanted then I heard, which made me no less eager to turn round, and spirit saw I walking through the flame. Wherefore I looked to my own steps and theirs, apportioning my sight from time to time. After the close which to that hymn is made, aloud they shouted, Virum non cognosco, then recommenced the hymn with voices low. This also ended, cried they, to the wood Diana ran and drove forth Helice therefrom, who had a Venus felt the poison. Then to their song returned they. Then the wives they shouted, and the husbands who were chaste, as virtue and the marriage vow imposes. And I believe that them this mode suffices, for all the time the fire is burning them. With such care is it needful, and such food, that the last wound of all should be closed up. Canto 26 while on the brink, thus one before the other, we went upon our way, oft the good master said, Take thou heed, suffice it that I warn thee. On the right shoulder smote me now the sun, that raying out already the whole west changed from its azure aspect into white. And with my shadow did I make the flame appear more red, and even to such a sign shade saw I many, as they went, give heed. This was the cause that gave them a beginning to speak of me, and to themselves began they to say, That seems not a factitious body. Then towards me, as far as they could come, came certain of them, always with regard not to step forth where they would not be burned. O oh, thou who goest, not from being slower but reverent perhaps behind the others, answer me, who in thirst and fire and burning nor to me only is thine answer needful, for all these have greater thirst for it than for cold water, Ethiop or Indian. Tell us how is it that thou makest thyself a wall unto the sun, as if thou hadst not entered as yet into the net of death? Thus one of them addressed me, and I straight should have revealed myself, were I not bent on other novelty that then appeared. For through the middle of the burning road there came a people face to face with these, which held me in suspense with gazing at them. There see I hastening upon either side each of the shades, and kissing one another without a pause, content with brief salute. Thus in the middle of their brown battalions, muzzle to muzzle, one ant meets another, perchance to spy their journey or their fortune. No sooner is the friendly greeting ended, or ever the first footstep passes onward, each one endeavours to outcry the other. The newcome people, Sodom and Gomorrah, the rest, into the cow Pasiphae enters, so that the bull unto her lust may run. Then as the cranes that to Riphaean mountains might fly in part, and part towards the sands, these of the frost, those of the sun avoidant, one folk is going and the other coming, and weeping they return to their first songs, and to the cry that most befitteth them. And close to me approached, even as before, the very same who had entreated me, attempt to listen in their countenance. I, who their inclination twice had seen, began, 
O soul secure in the possession, whene'er it may be, of a state of peace, neither unripe nor ripened have remained my members upon earth, but here are with me, with their own blood and their articulations. I go up here to be no longer blind. A lady is above, who wins this grace, whereby the mortal through your world I bring. But as your greatest longing satisfied may soon become, so that the heaven may house you, which full of love is, and most amply spreads, tell me, that I again in books may write it, who are you, and what is that multitude which goes upon its way behind your backs? Not otherwise with wonder is bewildered the mountaineer, and staring round is dumb, when rough and rustic to the town he goes, than every shade became in its appearance. But when they of their stupor were disburdened, which in high hearts is quickly quieted, blessed be thou who of our borderlands, he recommenced who first had questioned us, experienced freightest for a better life. The folk that comes not with us have offended in that which once Caesar, triumphing, heard himself called in contumely queen. Therefore they separate, exclaiming Sodom, themselves reproving even as thou hast heard, and add unto their burning by their shame. Our own transgression was hermaphrodite, but because we observe not human law, following like unto beasts our appetite, in our opprobrium by us is read, when we part company, the name of her who bestialized herself in bestial wood. Now knowest thou our acts, and what our crime was. Wouldst thou perchance by name know who we are? There is not time to tell, nor could I do it. Thy wish to know me shall in sooth be granted. I am Guido Guinicelli, and now purge me, having repented ere the hour extreme. The same that in the sadness of Lycurgus two sons became, their mother re-beholding such I became, but rise not to such height. The moment I heard name himself the father of me and of my betters, who had never practised the sweet and gracious rhymes of love, and without speech and hearing, thoughtfully for a long time I went, beholding him, nor for the fire did I approach him nearer. When I was fed with looking, utterly myself I offered ready for his service, with affirmation that compels belief, and he told me, Thou leavest footprints such in me from what I hear, and so distinct, Lethe cannot efface them, nor make dim. But if thy words just now the truth have sworn, Tell me what is the cause why thou displayest in word and look, That dear thou holdest me. And I to him, Those dulcet lays of yours, which, long as shall endure our modern fashion, Shall make for ever dear thy very ink. O oh, brother, said he, he whom I point out, and here he pointed at a spirit in front, was of the mother tongue a better smith. Verses of love and proses of romance he mastered all, and let the idiots talk who think the lemosin surpasses him. To clear more than truth they turn their faces, and in this way establish their opinion, ere art or reason has by them been heard. Thus many ancients with Gitone did, from cry to cry still giving him applause, until the truth has conquered with most persons. Now if thou hast such ample privilege, tis granted thee to go unto the cloister wherein is Christ the abbot of the college. To him repeat for me a paternoster, so far as needful to us of this world, where power of sinning is no longer ours. Then to give place perchance to one behind, whom he had near, he vanished in the fire as fish in water going to the bottom. I moved a little towards him, pointed out, and said that to his name my own desire an honourable place was making ready. He of his own free will began to say, Tan ma bellis vostra cortes de man, que je non puesque ni vuele a vos cobrir. Je suis Arnaud, que plora ve chantan, con si los ve la pasada folor, e ve josen la jorn que sper danan, ara vus preg per aquel valor, que vus conduce al som de la scalina, so venja vus a temprama dolor. Then hid him in the fire that purifies them. 
footnote translation. So pleases me your courteous demand, I cannot and I will not hide me from you. I am Arnaud who weep and singing go, contrite I see the folly of the past, and joyous see the hoped for day before me. Therefore do I implore you, by that power which guides you to the summit of the stairs, be mindful to assuage my suffering. Canto 27 And when he vibrates forth his earliest rays, in regions where his maker shed his blood, the Ebro falling under lofty Libra, and waters in the Ganges burnt with noon, so stood the sun. Hence was the day departing when the glad angel of God appeared to us. Outside the flame he stood upon the verge, and chanted forth, Beati mundo corde, in voice by far more living than our own, then, No one farther goes, souls sanctified, if first the fire bite not, within it enter, and be not deaf unto the song beyond. When we were closed behind him, thus he said, Wherefore e'en such became I, when I heard him, as he who is put into the grave, Upon my clasped hands I straightened me, scanning the fire, and vividly recalling the human bodies I had once seen burned. Towards me turned themselves my good conductors, and unto me Virgilius said, My son, here may indeed be torment, but not death. Remember thee, remember, and if I on Gerion have safely guided thee, what shall I do now I am near a god? Believe for certain. Shouldst thou stand a full millennium in the bosom of this flame, it could not make thee bald a single hair. And if perchance thou think that I deceive thee, draw near to it, and put it to the proof that thine own hands upon thy garments hem. Now lay aside, now lay aside all fear, turn hitherward, and onward come securely. And I still motionless and against my conscience, Seeing me stand still motionless and stubborn, somewhat disturbed, he said, Now look thou, son, twixt Beatrice and thee there is this wall. As at the name of Thisbe oped his lids the dying Pyramus, and gazed upon her, what time the mulberry became a vermilion, even thus, my obduracy being softened, I turned to my wise guide, hearing the name that in my memory evermore is welling, whereat he wagged his head and said, how now? Shall we stay on this side? Then smiled as one does at a child who's vanquished by an apple. Then into the fire in front of me he entered, beseeching Stasius to come after me, who a long way before divided us. When I was in it, into molten glass I would have cast me to refresh myself, so without measure was the burning there. And my sweet father, to encourage me, discoursing still of Beatrice, went on, saying, Her eyes I seem to see already. A voice that on the other side was singing directed us, and we, attent alone on that, came forth where the ascent began. Venite, benedicte patris mei, sounded with a splendour which was there, such it overcame me, and I could not look. The sun departs, it added, and night cometh, tarry ye not, for onward urge your steps, so long as yet the west becomes not dark. Straight forward through the rock the path ascended, in such a way that I cut off the rays before me of the sun that now was low, and a few stairs we yet had made assay, ere by the vanished shadow the sun setting behind us we perceived, I and my sages. And ere in all its parts immeasurable the horizon of one aspect had become, and night her boundless dispensation held, each of us of a stair had made his bed, because the nature of the mount took from us the power of climbing more than the delight. Even as in ruminating passive grow the goats who have been swift and venturesome upon the mountain tops ere they were fed, hushed in the shadow while the sun is hot, watched by the herdsman, who upon his staff is leaning, and in leaning tendeth them. And as the shepherd, lodged out of doors, passeth the night beside his quiet flock, watching that no wild beast may scatter it, such at that hour were we, all three of us, I like the goat, and like the herdsman they, begirt on this side and on that by rocks. Little could there be seen of things without, 
but through that little I beheld the stars more luminous and larger than their wont. Thus ruminating and beholding these, sleep seized upon me, sleep that oftentimes before a deed is done has tidings of it. It was the hour, I think, when from the east first on the mountain Cytheria beamed, who with the fire of love seems always burning. Youthful and beautiful in dreams, methought I saw a lady walking in a meadow, gathering flowers, and singing, she was saying, Know whosoever may my name demand that I am Leah, and go moving round my beauteous hands to make myself a garland, to please me at the mirror, here I deck me, but never does my sister Rachel leave her looking-glass, and sitteth all day long, to see her beauteous eyes, as eager is she as I am to adorn me with my hands. Her seeing, and me doing, satisfies. And now before the Antelucan splendours that unto pilgrims the more grateful rise, as home returning, less remote they lodge, the darkness fled away on every side, and slumber with it, whereupon I rose, seeing already the great masters risen. That apple sweet which through so many branches the care of mortals goeth in pursuit of, to-day shall put in peace thy hungerings. Speaking to me, Virgilius of such words as these made use, and never were there guerdons that could in pleasantness compare with these. Such longing upon longing came upon me, to be above, that at each step thereafter for flight I felt in me the pinions growing, when underneath us was the stairway all run o'er, and we were on the highest step, Virgilius fastened upon me his eyes, and said, The temporal fire and the eternal son thou hast seen, and to a place art come whereof myself no farther I discern. By intellect and art I here have brought thee. Take thine own pleasure for thy guide henceforth. Beyond the steep ways and the narrow art thou. Behold the sun that shines upon thy forehead. Behold the grass, the flowerlets, and the shrubs which of itself alone this land produces. Until rejoicing come the beauteous eyes which weeping cause me to come unto thee. Thou canst sit down, and thou canst walk among them. Expect no more or word or sign from me. Free and upright and sound is thy free will, and error were it not to do its bidding. Thee or thyself I therefore crown and mitre. Recording by Christy Nowak Purgatorio Canto 28 Eager already to search in and round the heavenly forest, dense and living green, which tempered to the eyes the newborn day, without and more delay I left the bank, taking the level country slowly, slowly over the soil that everywhere breathes fragrance. A softly breathing air that no mutation had in itself upon the forehead smote me no heavier blow than of a gentle wind whereat the branches, lightly tremulous, did all of them bow downward toward that side where its first shadow casts the holy mountain, yet not from their upright direction swayed, so that the little birds upon their tops should leave the practice of each art of theirs. But, with full ravishment the hours of prime, singing, received they in the midst of leaves that ever bore a burden to their rhymes, such as from branch to branch goes gathering on through the pine forest on the shores of Chiasi when Aeolus unlooses the Sirocco. Already my slow steps had carried me into the ancient wood so far that I could not perceive where I had entered it. And lo, my further course a stream cut off, which toward the left hand with its little waves bent down the grass on which its margin sprang. All waters that on earth most limpid are would seem to have within themselves some mixture compared with that which nothing doth conceal, although it moves on with a brown, brown current under the shade perpetual that never ray of the sun lets in, nor of the moon. With feet I stayed, and with mine eyes I passed beyond the rivulet to look upon the great variety of the fresh May. And there appeared to me, even as appears suddenly something that doth turn aside through very wonder every other thought, a lady, all alone, 
who went along singing and culling floweret after floweret, with which her pathway was all painted over. Ah, beauteous lady, who in rays of love dost warm thyself, if I may trust to looks which the heart's witnesses are wont to be, may the desire come unto thee to draw near to this river's bank, I said to her, so much that I might hear what thou art singing. Thou makest me remember where and what Proserpina that moment was when lost her mother her, and she herself the spring. As turns herself, with feet together pressed, and to the ground, a lady who is dancing, and hardly puts one foot before the other, on the vermilion and the yellow flowerets, she turned towards me, not in other wise than maiden, who her modest eyes casts down. And my entreaties made to be content, so near approaching, that the dulcet sound came unto me together with its meaning, as soon as she was where the grasses are. Bathed by the waters of the beauteous river, to lift her eyes, she granted me the boon. I do not think there shone so great a light under the lids of Venus when transfixed by her own son, beyond his usual custom. Erect upon the other bank she smiled, bearing full many colors in her hands which that high land produces without seed. Apart three paces did the river make us, but Hellespont where Xerxes passed across, a curb still to all human arrogance, more hatred from Leander did not suffer for rolling between Cestus and Abydos than that from me, because it oped not then. Ye are newcomers, and because I smile, began she, peradventure in this place elect to human nature for its nest, some apprehension keeps you marveling, but the psalm, delictasi, giveth light which has the power to uncloud your intellect. And thou who foremost art, and didst entreat me, speak, if thou wouldst hear more, for I came ready to all thy questionings as far as needful. The water, said I, and the forest's sound are combating within me my new faith in something which I heard opposed to this. Whence she, I will relate how from its cause proceedeth that which maketh thee to wonder, and purge away the cloud that smites upon thee. The good supreme, soul in itself delighting, created man good, and this goodly place gave him as hansel of eternal peace. By his default short while he sojourned here. By his default to weeping and to toil he changed his innocent laughter and sweet play. That the disturbance which below is made by exultations of the land and water, which far as may be follow after heat, might not upon mankind wage any war, this mount ascended towards the heaven so high and is exempt from there where it is locked. Now, since the universal atmosphere turns in a circuit with the primal motion, unless the circle is broken on some side, upon this height that all is disengaged in living ether, doth this motion strike and make the forest sound, for it is dense. And so much power the stricken plant possesses that with its virtue it impregns the air and this revolving scatters it around. And yonder earth, according as tis worthy in self or in its clime, conceives and bears of diverse qualities the diverse trees. It should not seem a marvel then on earth, this being heard, whenever any plant without seed manifest there taketh root. And thou must know, this holy table-land in which thou art is full of every seed, and fruit has in it never gathered there. The water which thou seest springs not from vain restored by vapor that the cold condenses, like to a stream that gains or loses breath, but issues from a fountain, safe and certain, which, by the will of God, as much regains as it discharges, open on two sides. Upon this side with virtue it descends, which takes away all memory of sin, on that every good deed done restores it. Here Lethe, as upon the other side Unui it is called, and worketh not if first on either side it be not tasted. This every other savour doth transcend, and notwithstanding slaked so far may be thy thirst, that I reveal to thee no more. I'll give thee a corollary still in grace nor think my speech will be to thee less dear if it spread out beyond my promise to thee. Those who in ancient times have feigned in song the age of gold and its felicity dreamed of this place perhaps upon Parnassus. Here was the human race in innocence. Here evermore was spring, and every fruit. This is the nectar of which each one speaks.
And then backward did I turn me wholly round unto my poets, and saw that with a smile they had been listening to these closing words. Then to the beautiful lady turned mine eyes. End of Canto 28 Purgatorio Canto 29 Singing like unto an enamored lady, she, with the ending of her words, continued, Beati quorum tecta sunt peccata. And even as nymphs that wandered all alone among the sylvan shadows, sedulous one to avoid and one to see the sun, she then, against the stream, moved onward, going along the bank, and I, abreast of her, her little steps with little steps attending. Between her steps and mine were not a hundred, when equally the margins gave a turn in such a way that to the east I faced. Nor even thus our way continued far before the lady wholly turned herself unto me, saying, Brother, look and listen. And lo, a sudden luster ran across on every side athwart the spacious forest, such that it made me doubt if it were lightning. But since the lightning ceases as it comes, and that continuing brightened more and more, within my thought I said, What thing is this? And a delicious melody there ran along the luminous air, whence holy zeal made me rebuke the hardihood of Eve. For there, where earth and heaven obedient were, the woman only, and but just created, could not endure to stay neath any veil, underneath which, had she devoutly stayed, I sooner should have tasted those delights ineffable and for a longer time. While mid such many-fold first-fruits I walked of the eternal pleasure all enwrapped, and still solicitous of more delights, in front of us, like an enkindled fire, became the air beneath the verdant boughs, and the sweet sound as singing now was heard. O virgin, sacrosanct, if ever hunger, vigils, or cold for you I have endured, the occasion spurs me their reward to claim. Now Helicon must needs pour forth for me, and with her choir Urania must assist me to put in verse things difficult to think. A little further on, seven trees of gold, in semblance the long space still intervening between ourselves and them, did counterfeit. But when I had approached so near to them, the common object, which the sense deceives, lost not by distance any of its marks. The faculty that lends discourse to reason did apprehend that they were candlesticks, and in the voices of the song, Hosanna. Above them flamed the harness beautiful, far brighter than the moon in the serene of midnight at the middle of her month. I turned me round with admiration filled to the good Virgilius, and he answered me with visage no less full of wonderment. Then back I turned my face to those high things, which moved themselves towards us so sedately they had been distanced by new-wedded brides. The lady chid me, Why dost thou burn only so with affection for the living lights, and dost not look at what comes after them? Then saw I people, as behind their leaders, coming behind them, garmented in white, and such a whiteness never was on earth. The water on my left flank was resplendent, and back to me reflected my left side, even as a mirror, if I looked therein. When upon my margin had such post that nothing but the stream divided us, better to see I gave my steps repose. And I beheld the flamelets onward go, leaving behind themselves the air depicted, and they of trailing pennons had the semblance, so that it overhead remained distinct with sevenfold lists, all of them of the colors whence the sun's bow is made, and Delia's girdle. These standards to the rearward longer were than was my sight, and, as it seemed to me, ten paces were the outermost apart. Under so fair a heaven as I describe, the four and twenty elders, two by two, came in coronet with flower de luce. They, all of them, were singing, Blessed thou among the daughters of Adam art, and blessed for evermore shall be thy loveliness. After the flowers and other tender grasses in front of me upon the other margin were disencumbered of that race elect, even as in heaven star followeth after star, there came close after them four animals, in coronet each one with verdant leaf. Plumed with six wings was every one of them, the plumage full of eyes, the eyes of Argus, if they were living, would be such as these. 
Reader, to trace their forms, no more I waste my rhymes, for other spendings press me so, that I, in this, cannot be prodigal. But read Ezekiel, who depicteth them as he beheld them from the region cold, coming with cloud, with whirlwind, and with fire. And such as thou shalt find them in his pages, such were they here, saving that in their plumage John is with me, and differeth from him. The interval between these four contained a chariot, triumphal on two wheels, which by a griffin's neck came drawn along. And upward he extended both his wings between the middle list and three and three, so that he injured none by cleaving it. So high they rose that they were lost to sight. His limbs were gold so far as he was bird, and white the others with vermilion mingled. Not only Rome with no such splendid car e'er gladdened Africanus or Augustus, but poor to it that of the sun would be. That of the sun, which swerving was burnt up at the importunate orison of earth, when Jove was so mysteriously just. Three maidens at the right wheel in a circle came onward dancing, one so very red that in the fire she hardly had been noted. The second was as if her flesh and bones had all been fashioned out of emerald. The third appeared as snow, but newly fallen. And now they seemed conducted by the white, now by the red, and from the song of her the others took their step, or slow or swift. Upon the left hand four made holiday, vested in purple, following the measure of one of them with three eyes in her head. In rear of all the group here treated of two old men I beheld, unlike in habit, but like in gait, each dignified and grave. One showed himself as one of the disciples of that supreme Hippocrates, whom nature made for the animals she holds most dear. Contrary care the other manifested, with swords so shining and so sharp it caused terror to me on this side of the river. Thereafter four I saw of humble aspect, and behind all an aged man alone, walking in sleep with countenance acute. And like the foremost company these seven were habited, yet of the flower de luci no garland round about the head they wore, but that of rose and other flowers vermilion. At little distance would the sight have sworn that all were in a flame above their brows. And when the car was opposite to me, thunder was heard, and all that folk august seemed to have further progress interdicted, there, with the vanward ensign standing still. End of Purgatorio, Canto 29 When the septentrion of the highest heaven which never either setting new or rising, nor veil of other cloud than that of sin, and which made every one therein aware of his own duty, as the lower makes whoever turns the helm to come to port, motionless halted, the voracious people that came at first between it and the griffin turned themselves to the car as to their peace. And one of them, as if by heaven commissioned, singing, Veni sponsa de Libano shouted three times, and all the others after. Even as the blessed at the final summons shall rise up quickened, each one from his cavern, uplifting light the reinvested flesh, so upon that celestial chariot a hundred rose ad vocem tante senis, ministers and messengers of life eternal. They all were saying, Benedictus qui venis, and scattering flowers above and round about, Manibus odate lilia plenis. Ere now have I beheld, as day began, the eastern hemisphere all tinged with rose, and the other heaven with fair serene adorned, and the sun's face uprising, overshadowed, so that by tempering influence of vapors for a long interval the eye sustained it. Thus, in the bosom of a cloud of flowers, which from those hands angelical ascended, and downward fell again inside and out, over her snow-white veil with olive synced, appeared a lady, under a green mantle, vested in color of the living flame. And my own spirit, that already now so long a time had been, that in her presence, trembling with awe, it had not stood abashed without more knowledge, having by mine eyes, through occult virtue that from her proceeded of ancient love and mighty influence, felt. As soon as on my vision smote the power sublime that had already pierced me through, ere from my boyhood I had yet come forth, to the left hand I turned, with that reliance with which the little child runs to his mother when he has fear or when he is afflicted, 
to say unto Virgilius, Not a drachm of blood remains in me that does not tremble. I know the traces of the ancient flame. But us, Virgilius of himself deprived, had left Virgilius, sweetest of all fathers, Virgilius, to whom I for safety gave me. Nor whatsoever lost the ancient mother availed my cheeks now purified from dew, that weeping they should not again be darkened. Dante, because Virgilius has departed, do not weep yet. Do not weep yet a while, for by another sword thou needst must weep. E'en as an admiral who on poop and prow comes to behold the people that are working in other ships and cheers them to well-doing, upon the left-hand border of the car, when at the sound I turned of my own name, which of necessity is here recorded, I saw the lady, who erewhile appeared veiled underneath the angelic festival, direct her eyes to me across the river. Although the veil that from her head descended, encircled with the foliage of Minerva, did not permit her to appear distinctly, in attitude still royally majestic, continued she, like unto one who speaks and keeps his warmest utterance in reserve. Look at me well. In sooth I'm Beatrice. How didst thou deign to come unto the mountain? Didst thou not know that man is happy here? Mine eyes fell downward into the clear fountain, but... Seeing myself therein, I sought the grass, so great a shame did weigh my forehead down. As to the sun, the mother seemed superb, so she appeared to me, for somewhat bitter tasted the savor of severe compassion. Silent became she, and the angel sang suddenly, In te domini speravi, but beyond pedis meus did not pass. Even as the snow among the living rafters upon the back of Italy congeals, blown on and drifted by Sclavonian winds, and then, dissolving, trickles through itself whene'er the land that loses shadow breathes, so that it seems a fire that melts a taper. E'en thus was I, without a tear or sigh, before the song of those who sing forever after the music of the eternal spheres. But when I heard in their sweet melodies compassion for me, more than had they said, O oh, wherefore, lady, dost thou thus upbraid him? The ice that was about my heart congealed to air and water changed, and in my anguish through mouth and eyes came gushing from my breast. She, on the right-hand border of the car, still firmly standing to those holy beings, thus her discourse directed afterwards, Ye keep your watch in the eternal day, so that nor night nor sleep can steal from you one step the ages make upon their path. Therefore, my answer is with greater care, that he may hear me who is weeping yonder, so that the sin and dole be of one measure. Not only by the work of those great wheels that destine every seed unto some end, according as the stars are in conjunction, but by the largesse of celestial graces, which have such lofty vapors for their reign that near to them our sight approaches not. Such had this man become in his new life, potentially that every righteous habit would have made admirable proof in him. But so much more malignant and more savage becomes the land untilled and with bad seed the more good earthly vigor it possesses. Some time did I sustain him with my look, Revealing unto him my youthful eyes, I led him with me, turned in the right way. As soon as ever of my second age I was upon the threshold and changed life, himself from me he took and gave to others. When from the flesh to spirit I ascended, and beauty and virtue were in me increased, I was to him less dear and less delightful. And into ways untrue he turned his steps, pursuing the false images of good that never any promises fulfill, nor prayer for inspiration me availed by means of which in dreams and otherwise I called him back, so little did he heed them. So low he fell that all appliances for his salvation were already short, save showing him the people of perdition. For this I visited the gates of death, and unto him who so far up has led him my intercessions were with weeping born. God's lofty fiat would be violated if let they should be passed, and if such viands should tasted be without in any scot of penitence that gushes forth in tears. End of Canto 30 Purgatorio Canto 31 O thou who art beyond the sacred river, 
turning to me the point of her discourse that edgewise even had seemed to me so keen, she recommenced, continuing without pause. Say if this be true, to such a charge thy own confessions need must be conjoined. My faculties were in so great confusion that the voice moved, but sooner was extinct than by its organs it was set at large. A while she waited, and then she said, What thinkest? Answer me, for the mournful memories in thee not yet are by the waters injured. Confusion and dismay together mingled forced such a yes from out my mouth that sight was needful to the understanding of it. Even as a crossbow breaks, when tis discharged too tensely drawn the bowstring and the bow, and with less force the arrow hits the mark, so I gave way beneath that heavy burden, outpouring in a torrent tears and sighs, and the voice flagged upon its passage forth. Whence she to me, in those desires of mine which led thee to the loving of that good beyond which there is nothing to aspire to, what trenches lying traverse, or what chains didst thou discover, that of passing onward thou shouldst have thus despoiled thee of the hope? And what allurements, or what vantages upon the forehead of the others showed, that thou shouldst turn thy footsteps unto them? After the heaving of a bitter sigh, hardly had I the voice to make response, and with fatigue my lips did fashion it. Weeping, I said. The things that present were, with their false pleasure, turned aside my steps, soon as your countenance concealed itself. And she, Shouldst thou be silent, or deny what thou confessest, not less manifest would be thy fault by such a judge tis known. But when from one's own cheeks comes bursting forth the accusal of the sin, in our tribunal against the edge the wheel doth turn itself. But still, that thou mayst feel a greater shame for thy transgression, and another time hearing the sirens thou mayst be more strong, cast down the seed of weeping and attend, so shalt thou hear how, in an opposite way, my buried flesh should have directed thee. Never to thee presented art or nature pleasure so great as the fair limbs wherein I was enclosed, which scattered are in earth. And... If the highest pleasure thus did fail thee by reason of my death, what mortal thing should then have drawn thee into its desire? Thou oughtst verily at the first shaft of things fallacious have risen up to follow me, who was no longer such. Thou oughtest not to have stooped thy pinions downward to wait for further blows, or little girl, or other vanity of such brief use. The callow birdlet waits for two or three, but to the eyes of those already fledged, in vain the net is spread or shaft is shot. Even as children, silent in their shame, stand listening with their eyes upon the ground, and conscious of their fault, and penitent, so was I standing. And she said, If thou in hearing sufferest pain, lift up thy beard, and thou shalt feel a greater pain in seeing. With less resistance is a robust home uprooted, either by a native wind, or else by that from regions of Iervis, than I upraised at her command my chin. And when she by the beard the face demanded, well, I perceived the venom of her meaning. And, as my countenance was lifted up, mine eye perceived those creatures beautiful had rested from the strewing of the flowers. And... Still but little reassured, mine eye saw Beatrice turned round towards the monster that is one person only in two natures. Beneath her veil, beyond the margined green, she seemed to me far more her ancient self to excel than others here when she was here. So pricked me then the thorn of penitence that of all other things the one which turned me most to its love became the most my foe. Such self-conviction stung me at the heart, overpowered I felt, and what I then became she knoweth who had furnished me the cause. Then, when the heart restored my outward sense, the lady I had found alone, above me, I saw, and she was saying, Hold me, hold me. Up to my throat she in the stream had drawn me, and dragging me behind her she was moving upon the water lightly as a shuttle. When I was near unto the blessed shore, Aspergus me, I heard so sweetly sung, remember it I cannot, much less ride it. The beautiful lady opened wide her arms, embraced my head, and plunged me underneath, where I was forced to swallow of the water. Then forth she drew me, and all dripping brought into the dance of the four beautiful, 
and each one with her arm did cover me. We here are nymphs, and in the heaven are stars. Ere Beatrice descended to the world, we as her handmaidens were appointed her. We'll lead thee to her eyes, but for the pleasant light that within them is, shall sharpen thine and three beyond who more profoundly look. Thus singing they began, and afterwards unto the griffin's breast they led me with them, where Beatrice was standing, turned towards us. See that thou dost not spare thine eyes, they said, before the emeralds have we stationed thee, whence love aforetime drew for thee his weapons. A thousand longings, hotter than the flame, fastened my eyes upon those eyes were loosened, that still upon the griffin steadfast stayed, as in the glass the sun, not otherwise within them was the twofold monster shining, now with one, now with the other nature. Think, reader, if within myself I marveled when I beheld the thing itself stand still, and in its image it transformed itself. While with amazement filled and jubilant, my soul was tasting of the food that, while it satisfies us, makes us hunger for it. Themselves revealing of the highest rank and bearing did the other three advance, singing to their angelic saraband, Turn, Beatrice, O turn thy holy eyes! Such was their song. Unto thy faithful one who has to see thee taken so many steps, in grace. Do us the grace that thou unveil thy face to him, so that he may discern the second beauty which thou dost conceal. O splendor of the living light eternal, who underneath the shadow of Parnassus has grown so pale, or drunk so at its cistern, he would not seem to have his mind encumbered, striving to paint thee, as thou didst appear, where the harmonious heaven o'ershadowed thee, when in the open air thou didst unveil. End of Canto 31 Purgatorio, Canto 32 So steadfast and attentive were mine eyes in satisfying their decennial thirst that all my other senses were extinct, and upon this side and on that they had walls of indifference, so the holy smile drew them unto itself with the old net, when forcibly my sight was turned away towards my left hand by those goddesses, because I heard from them a too intently and that condition of the sight which is in eyes but lately smitten by the sun bereft me of my vision some short while, but to the less when sight reshaped itself. I say to the less in reference to the greater splendor from which I perforce had withdrawn. I saw upon its right wing wheeled about the glorious host returning with the sun and with the sevenfold flames upon their faces. As underneath its shield, to save itself, a squadron turns, and with its banner wheels, before the whole thereof can change its front, that soldiery of the celestial kingdom, which marched in the advance, had wholly passed us, before the chariot had turned its pole. Then to the wheels the maidens turned themselves, and the griffin moved his burden benedite, but so that not a feather of him fluttered. The lady fair who drew me through the ford followed with Statius and myself the wheel which made its orbit with the lesser arc. So passing through the lofty forest, vacant by fault of her who the serpent trusted, angelic music made our steps keep time. Perchance as great a space had in three flights an arrow loosed from the string or passed as we had moved when Beatrice descended. I heard them murmur altogether, Adam! Then circled they about a tree, despoiled of blooms and other leafage, on each bough. Its tresses, which so much the more dilate as higher they ascend, had been, by Indians among their forests, marveled at for height. Blessed art thou, O griffin, who dost not pluck with thy beak these branches sweet to taste, since appetite by this was turned to evil. After this fashion, round the tree robust, the others shouted, and the twofold creature... Thus is preserved the seed of all the just. And turning to the pole which he had dragged, he drew it close beneath the widowed bough, and what was of it unto it left bound. In the same manner as our trees, when downward falls the great light, with that together mingled which after the celestial Alaska shines, begin to swell, and then renew themselves, each one with its own color, ere the sun harness his steeds beneath another star, less than of rose, and more than violet a hue disclosing, was renewed the tree that had erewhile its boughs so desolate. I never heard, nor here below is sung, the hymn which afterward the people sang, nor did I bear the melody throughout. 
Had I the power to paint how fell asleep those eyes compassionless, of syrinx hearing, those eyes, to which more watching cost so dear, even as a painter who from model paints I would portray how I was lulled asleep, he may who well can picture drowsyhood. Therefore I pass to what time I awoke, and say a splendor rent from me the veil of slumber, and a calling, Rise, what dost thou? as to behold the apple tree in blossom, which makes the angels greedy for its fruit and keeps perpetual bridles in the heaven. Peter and John and James conducted were, and overcome, recovered at the word by which still greater slumbers have been broken, and saw their school diminished by the loss not only of Elias but of Moses, and the apparel of their master changed. So I revived and saw that piteous one above me standing, who had been conductress aforetime of my steps beside the river. And all in doubt, I said, Where's Beatrice? And she, Behold her seated underneath the leafage new upon the root of it. Behold the company that circles her. The rest behind the griffin are ascending with more melodious song and more profound. And if her speech were more diffuse, I know not, because already in my sight was she who from the hearing of aught else had shut me. Alone she sat upon the very earth, left there as guardian of the chariot which I had seen the biform monster fasten, and circling her, a cloister made themselves the seven nymphs, with those lights in their hands which are secure from Acalon to Oster. Short while shalt thou be here a forester, and thou shalt be with me forevermore a citizen of that Rome where Christ is Roman. Therefore, for that world's good which liveth ill, fix on the car thine eyes, and what thou seest, having returned to earth, take heed thou right. Thus Beatrice, and I, who at the feet of her commandments all devoted was, my mind and eyes directed where she willed, never descended with so swift a motion fire from a heavy cloud, when it is raining from out the region which is most remote, as I beheld the bird of Jove descended down through the tree, rending away the bark, as well as blossoms and foliage new. And he with all his might the chariot smote, whereat it reeled like a vessel in a tempest tossed by the waves, now starboard, now larboard. Thereafter saw I leap into the body of the triumphal vehicle a fox that seemed unfed with any wholesome food. But for his hideous sins upbraiding him, my lady put him to as swift a flight as such a fleshless skeleton could bear. Then, by the way that it before had come, into the chariot's chest I saw the eagle descend and leave it feathered with his plumes. And such as issues from a heart that mourns, a voice from heaven there issued, and it said, my little bark, how badly art thou frightened! Methought then that the earth did yawn between both wheels, and I saw rise from it a dragon, who through the chariot upward fixed his tail, and as a wasp that draweth back its sting, drawing unto himself his tail malign, drew out the floor, and went his way rejoicing. That which remained behind, even as with grass a fertile region, with the feathers, offered perhaps with pure intention and benign, reclothed itself, and with them were reclothed the pole and both the wheels, so speedily a side doth longer keep the lips apart. Transfigured thus, the holy edifice thrust forward heads upon the parts of it, three on the pole and one at either corner. The first were horned like oxen. But the four had but a single horn upon the forehead, a monster such had never yet been seen. Firm as a rock upon a mountain high, seated upon it, there appeared to me a shameless whore, with eyes swift glancing round, and, as if not to have her taken from him, upright beside her I beheld a giant, and ever and on they kissed each other. But, because she her wanton, roving eye turned upon me, her angry paramour did scourge her from her head unto her feet. Then, full of jealousy and fierce with wrath, he loosed the monster, and across the forest dragged it so far, he made of that alone a shield unto the whore and the strange beast. End of Canto 32 Purgatorio Canto 33 Deus venerunt gentes Alternating, now three, now four, melodious psalmody the maidens in the mists of tears began, and Beatrice, compassionate and sighing, listened to them with such a countenance that scarce more changed was Mary at the cross. But, when the other virgins place had given for her to speak, 
uprisen to her feet with color as of fire, she made response, Modicum et non videbitis me, et iterum, my sister's predilect, modicum et vos videbitis me. Then, all the seven in front of her she placed, and after her, by beckoning only, moved me and the lady and the sage who stayed. So she moved onward, and I do not think that her tenth step was placed upon the ground when, with her eyes upon mine eyes, she smote, and with a tranquil aspect, Come more quickly, to me, she said, that, if I speak with thee, to listen to me thou mayst be well placed. As soon as I was with her as I should be, she said to me, why, brother, dost thou not venture to question now, in coming with me? And unto those who are too reverential, speaking in presence of superiors, who drag no living utterance to their teeth, it me befell that without perfect sound began I, My necessity, Madonna, you know, and that which thereunto is good. And she to me, Of fear and bashfulness henceforward I will have thee strip thyself, so that thou speak no more as one who dreams. Know that the vessel which the serpent broke was, and is not, but let him who is guilty think that God's vengeance does not fear a sop. Without an heir shall not forever be the eagle that left his plumes upon the car, whence it became a monster, then a prey. For verily I see, and hence narrate it, the stars already near to bring the time from every hindrance safe, and every bar within which a five hundred, ten, and five, one sent from God, shall slay the thievish woman, and that same giant who is sinning with her. And peradventure my dark utterance, like Themis and the Sphinx, may less persuade thee, since, in their mode, it clouds the intellect. But soon the fact shall be the Naides, who shall this difficult enigma solve, without destruction of the flocks and harvests. Note thou, and even as by me are uttered these words, so teach them unto those who live that life which is a running unto death. And bear in mind, whene'er thou writest them, not to conceal what thou hast seen the plant that twice already has been pillaged here. Whoever pillages or shatters it, with blasphemy of deed, offendeth God, who made it holy for his use alone. For biting that, in pain and in desire, five thousand years and more the firstborn soul craved him, who punished in himself the bite. Thy genius slumbers, if it deem it not for special reasons so preeminent in height and so inverted in its summit. And, if thy vain imaginings had not been water of Elsa round about thy mind, and Pyramus to the mulberry their pleasure, thou by so many circumstances only, the justice of the interdict of God morally in the tree, wouldst recognize. But since I see thee in thine intellect converted into stone and stained with sin, so that the light of my discourse doth daze thee, I will too, if not written at least painted, thou bear it back within thee for the reason that synced with palm the pilgrim's staff is born. And I, as by a signet is the wax which does not change the figure stamped upon it, my brain is now imprinted by yourself. But wherefore so beyond my power of sight soars your desirable discourse that I, the more I strive, so much the more I lose it? That thou mayest recognize, she said, the school which thou hast followed, and mayest see how far its doctrine follows after my discourse and mayst behold your path from the divine, distant as far as separated is earth from the heaven that highest hastens on. Whence her I answered, I do not remember that ever I estranged myself from you, nor have I conscience of it that reproves me. And if thou art not able to remember, smiling, she answered, recollect thee now that thou this very day hast drunk of lethe, and if from smoke a fire may be inferred, such an oblivion clearly demonstrates some error in thy will elsewhere intent. Truly, from this time forward shall my words be naked, so far as it is befitting to lay them open unto thy rude gaze. And more coruscant with slower steps the sun was holding the meridian circle, which with the point of view shifts here and there when halted, as he cometh to a halt who goes before a squadron as its escort, if something new he find upon his way. The Lady Seven, at a dark shadow's edge, such as, beneath green leaves and branches black, the elp upon its frigid border wears. In front of them, the Tigris and Euphrates methought I saw forth issue from one fountain, and slowly part, like friends from one another. O light, O glory of the human race, what stream is this, which here unfolds itself from out one source, and from itself withdraws? For such a prayer, t'was said unto me, Pray, Matilda, that she tell thee. 
and here answered as one does who doth free himself from blame the beautiful lady this and other things were told to him by me and sure i am the water of lethe has not hid them from him and beatrice perhaps a greater care which oftentimes our memory takes away has made the vision of his mind obscure but you know we behold that yonder rises lead him to it and as thou art accustomed revive again the half-dead virtue in him like gentle soul that maketh no excuse but makes its own will of another's will as soon as by a sign it is disclosed even so when she had taken hold of me the beautiful lady moved and unto statius said in her womanly manner come with him if reader i possessed a longer space for writing it i yet would sing in part of the sweet draught that ne'er would satiate me but inasmuch as full are all the leaves made ready for the second canticle the curb of art no farther lets me go from that most holy water i returned regenerate in the manner of new trees that are renewed with the new foliage pure and disposed to mount unto the stars recording by david lehman paradiso canto one the glory of him who moveth everything doth penetrate the universe and shine in one part more and in another less within that heaven which most his light receives was i and things beheld which to repeat nor knows nor can who from above descends because in drawing near to its desire our intellect engulfs itself so far that after it the memory cannot go truly whatever of the holy realm i have the power to treasure in my mind shall now become the subject of my song o good apollo for this last emprise make of me such a vessel of thy power as giving the beloved laurel asks one summit of parnassus hitherto has been enough for me but now with both i needs must enter the arena left enter into my bosom thou and breathe as at the time when marsyas thou didst draw out of the scabbard of those limbs of his o power divine lent thou thyself to me so that the shadow of the blessed realm stent in my brain i can make manifest thou see me come unto thy darling tree and crown myself thereafter with those leaves of which the theme and thou shall make me worthy so seldom father do we gather them for triumph or of caesar or of poet the fault and shame of human inclinations that the penian foliage should bring forth joy to the joyous delphic deity when any one it makes to thirst for it a little spark is followed by great flame perchance with better voices after me shall prayer be made that sira may respond to mortal men by passages diverse up rises the world's lamp but by that one which circles four uniteth with three crosses with better course and with a better star conjoined it issues and the mundane wax tempers and stamps more after its own fashion almost that passage had made morning there and evening here and there was holy white that hemisphere and black the other part when beatrice towards the left hand side i saw turn round and gazing at the sun never did eagle fasten so upon it and even as a second ray is wont to issue from the first and reascend like to a pilgrim who would fain return thus of her action through the eyes infused in my imagination mine i made and sunward fixed my eyes beyond our wont there much is lawful which is here unlawful unto our powers by virtue of the place made for the human species as its own not long i bore it nor so little while but i beheld it sparkle round about like iron that comes molten from the fire and suddenly it seemed that day to day was added as if he who has the power had with another sun the heaven adorned with eyes upon the everlasting wheels 
stood Beatrice, all intent, and I, on her, fixing my vision from above, removed, such that her aspect inwardly became as Glaucus, tasting of the herb that made him peer of the other gods beneath the sea. To represent, transhumanize in words, impossible were. The example, then, suffice him for whom grace the experience reserves. If I was merely what of me thou newly createdst, love who governest the heaven, thou knowest who didst lift me with thy light. When now the wheel, which thou dost make eternal, desiring thee, made me attentive to it, by harmony thou dost modulate and measure, then seemed to me so much of heaven enkindled by the sun's flame that neither, neither rain nor river ere made a lake so widely spread abroad. The nearness of the sound and the great light kindled in me a longing for their cause, never before with such acuteness felt, whence she, who saw me as I saw myself, to quiet in me my perturbed mind, opened her mouth, ere I did mind to ask, and she began, Thou makest thyself so dull with false imagining that thou seest not what thou wouldst see if thou hadst shaken it off. Thou art not upon earth, as thou believest, but lightning, fleeing its appropriate sight, ne'er ran as thou, who thitherward returnest. If of my former doubt I was divested, by these brief little words, more smiled than spoken, I in a new one was the more ensnared, and said, Already did I rest content from great amazement, but am now amazed in what way I transcend these bodies' light. Whereupon she, after a pitying sigh, her eyes directed towards me with that look a mother casts on a delirious child, and she began, all things, whatever they be, have order among themselves, and this is form that makes the universe resemble God. Here do the higher creatures see the footprints of the eternal power, which is the end whereto is made the law already mentioned. In the order that I speak of are inclined all natures, by their destinies diverse, more or less near unto their origin. Hence they move onward unto ports diverse, or the great sea of being, and each one with instinct given it which bears it on. This bears away the fire towards the moon. This is in mortal hearts the motive power that binds together and unites the earth. Nor only the created things that are without intelligence this bow shoots forth, but those that have both intellect and love. The providence that regulates all this makes with its light the heaven forever quiet, wherein that turns which has the greatest haste. And thither now, as to a sight decreed, bears us away the virtue of that cord which aims its arrows at a joyous mark. True is it, that as oftentimes the form accords not with the intention of the art, because in answering is matter death, so likewise from this course doth deviate sometimes the creature who the power possesses, though thus impelled to swerve some other way, in the same wise as one may see the fire fall from a cloud, if the first impetus earthward is rested by some false delight. Thou shouldst not wonder more, if well I judge, at thine ascent, than at a rivulet from some high mount descending to the lowland. Marvel it would be in thee, if deprived of hindrance, thou wert seated down below, as if on earth the living fire were quiet. Thereat she heavenward turned again her face. Paradiso, Canto 2 O ye, who in some pretty little boat, eager to listen, have been following behind my ship, that singing sails along, 
turn back to look again upon your shores. Do not put out to sea, lest peradventure in losing me you might yourselves be lost. The sea I sail has never yet been passed. Minerva breathes and pilots me Apollo, and muses nine point out to me the bears. Ye other few who have the neck uplifted, betimes to the bread of angels, upon which one liveth here, and grows not sated by it, well may you launch upon the deep salt sea your vessel, keeping still my wake before you upon the water that grows smooth again. Those glorious ones who unto Colchos passed were not so wonderstruck as you shall be. When Jason they beheld the plowman made, the con created in perpetual thirst for the realm deiform did bear us on as swift almost as ye the heavens behold. Upwards gazed Beatrice, and I at her, and in such space perchance as strikes a bolt and flies and from the notch unlocks itself. Arrived I saw me, where a wondrous thing drew to itself my sight, and therefore she, for whom no care of mine could be concealed, towards me turning, blithe as beautiful, said unto me, Fix gratefully thy mind on God, who unto the first star has brought us. It seemed to me a cloud encompassed us, luminous, dense, consolidated and bright, as adamant on which the sun is striking. Into itself did the eternal pearl receive us, even as water doth receive a ray of light, remaining still and broken. If I was body, and we here conceive not how one dimension tolerates another, which needs must be if body enter body, more the desire should be enkindled in us, that essence to behold, wherein is seen how God and our own nature were united. There will be seen what we receive by faith, not demonstrated, but self-evident, in guise of the first truth that man believes. I made reply, Madonna, as devoutly as most I can do, I give thanks to him, who has removed me from the mortal world. But tell me what the dusky spots may be upon this body which below on earth make people tell that fabulous tale of Cain. Somewhat she smiled, and then, if the opinion of mortals be erroneous, she said, where'er the key of sense doth not unlock, Certes, the shafts of wonder should not pierce thee now, for as much as, following the senses, thou seest that the reason has short wings. But tell me what thou thinkst of it thyself. And I, what seems to us up here diverse, is caused, I think, by bodies rare and dense. And she... By truly shall thou see immersed in error thy belief, if well thou hearest the argument that I shall make against it. Lights many, the eighth sphere displays to you, which in their quality and quantity may noted be of aspects different. If this were caused by rare and dense alone, one only virtue would there be in all, or more or less diffused or equally. Virtues diverse must be perforce the fruits of formal principles, and these, save one, of course, would by thy reasoning be destroyed. Besides, if rarity were of this dimness, the cause thou askest, either through and through this planet thus attenuate were of matter, or else, as in a body is a portion of the fat and lean, so in like manner, this would in its volume interchange the leaves. Were it the former, in the sun's eclipse it would be manifest by the shining through of light, as through aught tenuous interfused. This is not so, 
Hence we must scan the other. And if it chance the other I demolish, then falsified will thy opinion be. But if this rarity go not through and through, there needs must be a limit beyond which is contrary prevents the further passing, and thence the foreign radiance is reflected. Even as a color cometh back from glass, the which behind itself concealeth lead. Now thou wilt say the sunbeam shows itself more dimly there than in the other parts, by being there reflected farther back. From this reply, experiment will free thee, if ever thou try it, which is wont to be the fountain to the rivers of your arts. Three mirrors shalt thou take, and two remove alike from thee. The other, more remote between the former two, shall meet thine eyes. Turn toward these, cause that behind thy back be placed a light, viewing the three mirrors and coming back to thee by all reflected. Though in its quantity be not so ample the image most remote, there shalt thou see how it perforce is equally resplendent. Now, as beneath the touches of warm rays, naked the subject of the snow remains, both of its former color and its cold, thee thus remaining in thy intellect will I inform with such a living light that it shall tremble in its aspect to thee. Within the heaven of the divine repose revolves a body in whose virtue lies the being of whatever it contains. The following heaven that has so many eyes divines this being by essences diverse, distinguished from it, and by it contained. The other spheres, by various differences, all the distinctions which they have within them, dispose unto their ends and their effects. Thus do these organs of the world proceed, as thou perceivest now, from grade to grade, since from above they take and act beneath. Observe me well, how through this place I come unto the truth thou wishest, that hereafter thou mayst alone know how to keep the ford, the power and motion of the holy spheres, as from the artisan the hammer's craft forth from the blessed motors must proceed. The heaven, which lights so manifold make fair, from the intelligence profound which turns it, the image takes and makes of it a seal. And even as the soul within your dust, through members different and accommodated to faculties diverse, expands itself, so likewise this intelligence diffuses its virtue multiplied among the stars, itself revolving on its unity. Virtue diverse doth a diverse alloyage make with the precious body that it quickens, in which, as life in you, it is combined from the glad nature whence it is derived, the mingled virtue through the body shines, even as gladness through the living pupil. From this proceeds whatever from light to light appeareth different, not from dense and rare. This is the formal principle that produces, according to its goodness, dark and bright. Paradiso, Canto three. That sun, which erst with love my bosom warmed, of beauteous truth had unto me discovered, by proving and reproving, the sweet aspect. And, that I might confess myself convinced and confident, so far as was befitting, I lifted more erect my head to speak. But there appeared a vision, which withdrew me so close to it, in order to be seen, that my confession I remembered not, such as through polished and transparent glass, or waters crystalline and undisturbed, but not so deep as that their bed be lost, come back again the outlines of our faces, so feeble that a pearl on forehead white comes not less speedily unto our eyes. Such saw I many faces prompt to speak, so that I ran an error opposite to that which kindled love twixt man and fountain. As soon as I became aware of them, esteeming them as mirrored semblances, to see of whom they were, mine eyes I turned, and nothing saw, and once more turned them forward, direct 
into the light of my sweet guide, who smiling kindled in her holy eyes. Marvel thou not, she said to me, because I smile at this thy puerile conceit, since on the truth it trusts not yet its foot, but turns thee as tis wont on emptiness. True substances are these which thou beholdest, here relegate for breaking of some vow. Therefore speak with them, listen and believe, for the true light, which giveth peace to them, permits them not to turn from it their feet. And I, under the shade that seemed most wishful to speak, directed me, and I began, as one whom too great eagerness bewilders, O oh, well-created spirit, who in the rays of life eternal dost the sweetness taste, which being untasted ne'er is comprehended. Grateful will be to me, if thou content me both with thy name and with thy destiny. Whereat she promptly and with laughing eyes. Our charity doth never shut the doors against a just desire, except as one who wills that all her court be like herself. I was a virgin sister in the world, and if thy mind doth contemplate me well, the being more fair will not conceal me from thee. But thou shalt recognize I am Picarda, who is stationed here among these other blessed, myself am blessed in the slow sphere. All our affections that alone inflamed are in the pleasure of the Holy Ghost rejoice at being of his order formed. And this allotment, which appears so low, therefore is given us because our vows have been neglected and in some part void. Whence I to her. In your miraculous aspects there shines I know not what of the divine, which doth transform you from our first conceptions. Therefore I was not swift in my remembrance. But what thou tellest me now aids me so, that the refiguring is easier to me. But tell me, Ye who in this place are happy, are you desirous of a higher place, to see more, or to make yourselves more friends? First, with those other shades, she smiled a little. Thereafter answered me so full of gladness, she seemed to burn in the first fire of love. Brother, our will is quieted by virtue of charity, that which makes us wish alone for what we have nor gives us thirst for more. If to be more exalted we aspired, discordant would our aspirations be unto the will of him who here secludes us, which thou shalt see finds no place in these circles, if being in charity is needful here, and if thou lookest well into its nature. Nay, tis essential to this blessed existence to keep itself within the will divine, whereby our very wishes are made one, so that as we are stationed above stations throughout this realm, to all the realm tis pleasing, as to the king, who makes his will our will. And his will is our peace. This is the sea to which is moving onward whatsoever doth create, and all that nature makes. Then it was clear to me how everywhere in heaven is paradise, although the grace of good supreme there reign not in one measure. But as it comes to pass, if one food sates, and for another still remains the longing, we ask for this, and that decline with thanks. Even thus did I, with gesture and with word, to learn from her what was the web wherein she did not ply the shuttle to the end. A perfect life, and merit high in heaven, a lady o'er us, said she, by whose rule down in your world they vest and veil themselves, that until death they may both watch and sleep beside that spouse who every vow accepts, which charity conformeth to his pleasure. To follow her in girlhood from the world, I fled, and in her habit shut myself, and pledged me to the pathway of her sect. Then men accustomed unto evil more than unto good from the sweet cloister tore me. God knows what afterward my life became. 
this other splendor, which to thee reveals itself on my right side, and is enkindled with all the illumination of our sphere. What of myself, I say, applies to her. A nun she was, and likewise from her head was tamed the sh shadow of the sacred wimple. For when she too was to the world returned against her wishes and against good usage of the heart's veil, she never was divested. Of great Costanza, this is the effulgence, who from the second will of Suabia brought forth a third and latest puissance. Thus unto me she spake. And then began Ave Maria singing. And in singing vanished, as through deep water something heavy. My sight, that followed her as long a time as it was possible, when it had lost her, turned round unto the mark of more desire, and wholly unto Beatrice reverted. But she, such lightnings, flashed into mine eyes, that at the first my sight endured it not, and this, in questioning, more backward, made me. Paradiso, Canto Four. Between two viands, equally removed and tempting, a free man would die of hunger, ere either he could bring unto his teeth. So would a lamb between the ravenings of two fierce wolves stand fearing both alike, and so would stand a dog between two does. Hence, if I held my peace, myself I blame not, impelled in equal measure by my doubts, as it must be so, nor do I command. I held my peace, but my desire was painted upon my face, and questioning with that more fervent far than by articulate speech. Beatrice did as Daniel had done, relieving Nebuchadnezzar from the wrath which rendered him unjustly merciless, and said, well see I how attractive thee one and the other wish, so that thy care binds itself, so that forth it does not breathe. Thou arguest, if good will be permanent, the violence of others, for what reason doth it decrease the measure of my merit? Again for doubting furnish the occasion souls seeming to return unto the stars, according to the sentiment of Plato. These are the questions which upon thy wish are thrusting equally, and therefore first will I treat that which hath the most of gall. He of the seraphim, most absorbed in God, Moses and Samuel, and whichever John thou mayest select, I say, and even Mary, have not in any other heaven their seats than have those spirits that just appeared to thee, nor of existence more or fewer years. But all make beautiful the primal circle and have sweet life in different degrees by feeling more or less the eternal breath. They show themselves here, not because of what the sphere has been to them, but to give sign of the celestial which is least exalted. To speak thus is adapted to your mind, since only through the sense it apprehendeth what then it worthy makes of intellect. On this account, the scripture condescends unto your faculties, and feet and hands to God attributes, and means something else. And Holy Church, under an aspect human, Gabriel and Michael represent to you, and him who made Tobias whole again. That which Timaeus argues of the soul doth not resemble that which here is seen, because it seems that as he speaks, he thinks. He says the soul unto its star returns, believing it to have been severed thence whenever nature gave it as a form. Perhaps his doctrine is of other guise than the word sound, and possibly may be with meaning that is not to be derided. If he doth mean that to these wheels return the honor of their influence and the blame, perhaps his bow doth hit upon some truth. This principle ill understood once warped the whole world nearly, till it went astray invoking Jove and Mercury and Mars. The other doubt which doth disquiet thee, less venom has, for its malevolence could never lead the other way from me. That as unjust our justice should appear in eyes of mortals is an argument of faith and not of sin heretical. But still, that your perception may be able to thoroughly penetrate this verity as thou desirest, 
I will satisfy thee. It should be violence when he who suffers cooperates not with him who uses force. These souls were not on that account excused. For will is never quenched unless it will, but operates as nature doth in fire if violence a thousand times distort it. Hence, if it yieldeth more or less, it seconds the force. And these have done so, having power of turning back unto the holy place. If their will had been perfect, like to that which Lawrence fast upon his gridiron held, and Mutius made severe to his own hand, it would have urged them back along the road whence they were dragged, as soon as they were free. But such a solid will is all too rare. And by these words, if thou hast gathered them as thou shouldst do, the argument is refuted that would have still annoyed thee many times. But now another passage runs across before thine eyes, and such that by thyself thou couldst not thread it ere thou wouldst be weary. I have for certain put into thy mind that soul beatified could never lie, for it is near the primal truth. And then thou, from Picarda, I must have heard, Costanza kept affection for the veil, so that she seemeth here to contradict me. Many times, brother, has it come to pass, that to escape from peril, with reluctance that has been done it was not right to do, e'en as Alcmeon, who being by his father thereto entreated, his own mother slew, not to lose pity, pitiless became. At this point I desire thee to remember that force with will commingles, and the cause of the offences cannot be excused. Will absolute consenteth not to evil, but in so far consenteth as it fears, if it refrain, to fall into more harm. Hence, when Picarda uses this expression, she meaneth the will absolute, and I the other, so that both of us speak truth. Such was the flowing of the holy river that issued from the fount whence springs all truth. This put to rest my wishes one and all. O love of the first lover, O divine, said I forthwith, whose speech inundates me and warms me so, it more and more revives me. My own affection is not so profound as to suffice in rendering grace for grace. Let him who sees and can thereto respond. Well, I perceive that never sated is our intellect unless the truth illumine it, beyond which nothing true expands itself. It rests therein as wild beast in his lair when it attains it, and it can attain it. If not, then each desire would frustrate thee. Therefore springs up, in, in fashion of a shoot, doubt at the foot of truth. And this is nature, which to the top, from height to height, impels us. This doth invite me, this assurance give me with reverence, lady, to inquire of you another truth, which is obscure to me. I wish to know, if man can satisfy you for broken vows with other good deeds, so that in your balance they will not be light. Beatrice gazed upon me with her eyes full of the sparks of love, and so divine that, overcome my power, I turned my back and almost lost myself with eyes downcast. Paradiso, Canto V If in the heat of love I flame upon thee beyond the measure that on earth is seen, so that the valor of thine eyes I vanquish, marvel thou not thereat. For this proceeds from perfect sight, which as it apprehends to the good apprehended moves its feet. Well I perceive how is already shining into thine intellect the eternal light that only seen and kindles all is love. And if some other thing your love seduce, tis nothing but a vestige of the same, ill understood, which there is shining through. Thou fain wouldst know if with another service her broken vow can such return be made as to secure the soul from further claim. This canto thus did Beatrice begin, and, as a man who breaks not off his speech, continued thus her holy argument. The greatest gift that in his largesse God creating made 
and unto his own goodness nearest conformed. And that which he doth prize most highly is the freedom of the will, wherewith the creatures of intelligence, both all and only, were and are endowed. Now wilt thou see, if thence thou reasonest, the high worth of a vow, if it he made, so that when thou consentest, God consents, for closing between God and man the compact, a sacrifice is of this treasure made, such as I say, and made by its own act. What can be rendered then as compensation? Thinkest thou to make good use of what thou hast offered? With gains ill-gotten thou wouldst do good deed. Now art thou certain of the greater point. But because Holy Church in this dispenses, which seems against the truth which I have shown thee, behooves thee still to sit a while at table, because the solid food which thou hast taken requireth further aid for thy digestion. Open thy mind to that which I reveal, and fix it there within, for tis not knowledge that having heard without retaining it. In the essence of this sacrifice, two things convene together, and the one is that of which tis made, the other is the agreement. This last forevermore is cancelled not, unless complied with, and concerning this with such precision as above been spoken. Therefore it was enjoined upon the Hebrews to offer still, though sometimes what was offered might be commuted, as thou oughtst to know. The other, which is known to thee as matter, may well indeed be such that one errs not, if it for other matter be exchanged. Let none shift the burden on his shoulder at his arbitrament, without the turning both of the white and of the yellow key. And every permutation deem as foolish, if in the substitute, the thing relinquished, as the four is in six, be not contained. Therefore, whatever thing has so great weight in value that it drags down every balance, cannot be satisfied with other spending. Let mortals never take a vow in jest. Be faithful and not blind in doing that, as Jephthah was in his first offering, whom more beseemed to say, I have done wrong than to do worse by keeping, and as foolish thou, the great leader of the Greeks, wilt find, whence wept Iphigenia her fair face, and made for her both wise and simple weep, who heard such kind of worship spoken of. Christians, be ye more serious in your movements. Be ye not like a feather at each wind, and think not every water washes you. Ye of the Old and the New Testament, and the pastor of the church who guideth you, let this suffice you unto your salvation. If evil appetite cry aught else to you, be ye as men, and not as silly sheep, so that the Jew among you may not mock you. Be ye not as the lamb that doth abandon its mother's milk, and frolicsome and simple combats at its own pleasure with itself. Thus Beatrice to me, even as I write it, that all desireful turned herself again to that part where the world is most alive. Her silence and her change of countenance, silence imposed upon my eager mind, that had already in advance new questions. And as an arrow that upon the mark strikes ere the bowstring quiet hath become, so did we speed into the second realm. My lady there, so joyful I beheld, as into the brightness of that heaven she entered, more luminous thereat the planet grew. And if the star itself was changed and smiled, what became I, who by my nature am exceeding mutable in every guise? As in a fish pond which is pure and tranquil, the fishes draw to that which from without comes in such fashion that their food they deem it, so I beheld more than a thousand splendors drawing towards us, and in each was heard, Lo, this is she who shall increase our love. And as each one was coming unto us, full of beatitude the shade was seen, by the effulgence clear that issued from it. Think, reader, if what here is just beginning, no farther should proceed, how thou wouldst have an agonizing need of knowing more. 
and of thyself. Thou wilt see how I, from these, was in desire of hearing their conditions, as they unto mine eyes were manifest. O thou well-born, unto whom grace concedes to see the thrones of the eternal triumph, or ever yet the warfare be abandoned, with light that through the whole of heaven is spread, kindled are we. And hence, if thou desirest to know of us, at thine own pleasure, save thee. Thus, by some one among those holy spirits was spoken. And by Beatrice, speak, speak securely, and believe them even as gods. Will I perceive how thou dost nest thyself in thine own light, and drawest it from thine eyes, because they coruscate when thou dost smile, but know not who thou art, nor why thou hast, spirit august, thy station in the sphere that veils itself to men in alien rays. This said I in direction of the light which first had spoken to me, whence it became by far more loosened than it was before. Even as the sun that doth conceal himself by too much light, when heat has worn away the tempering influence of the vapor is dense, by greater rapture thus concealed itself in its own radiance, the figure saintly, and thus close, close and folded, answered me, in fashion, as the following canto sings. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Paradiso, Canto Six. After that, Constantine the Eagle turned against the course of heaven, which it had followed behind the ancient who Lavinia took. Two hundred years and more the bird of God into the extreme of Europe held itself, near to the mountains whence it issued first. And under shadow of the sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand, and changing thus upon mine own alighted. Caesar I was, and am Justinian, who by the will of primal love I feel took from the laws the useless and redundant. And ere unto the work I was attent, one nature to exist in Christ, not more, believed, and with such faith was I contented. But blessed Agapetus, he who was the supreme pastor to the faith sincere, pointed me out the way by words of his. Him I believed, and what was his assertion I now see clearly, even as thou seest, each contradiction to be false and true. As soon as with the church I moved my feet, God in his grace it pleased with this high task to inspire me, and I gave me wholly to it. And to my Belisarius I commended the arms to which was heaven's right hand so joined, it was a signal that I should propose. Now here to the first question terminates my answer, but the character thereof constrains me to continue with a sequel. In order that thou see with how great reason men move against the sacred sacrosanct, both who appropriate and who oppose it, behold how great a power has made it worthy of reverence, beginning from the hour when Pallas died to give it sovereignty. Thou knowest it made an Alba its abode, three hundred years and upward, till at last the three to three fought for it yet again. Thou knowest what it achieved from Sabine wrong, down to Lucretia's sorrow in seven kings, or coming round about the neighboring nations. Thou knowest what it achieved, borne by the Romans illustrious against Brennus, against Pyrrhus, against the other princes and confederates, Torquatus thence, and Quinctius, who from locks unkempt was named Deci and Fabi, Receive the fame I willingly embalm. It struck to earth the pride of the Arabians, who following Hannibal had passed across the alpine ridges, Po, from which thou glidest. Beneath it triumphed while they yet were young, Pompeii and Scipio, and to the hill, beneath which thou wast born, it bitter seemed. Then near unto the time when heaven had willed to bring the whole world to its mood serene, did Caesar by the will of Rome assume it. What it achieved from Var unto the Rhine, Iseri beheld, and Saone beheld the same, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled. What it achieved when it had left Ravenna, and left the Rubicon, was such a flight that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Round toward Spain it wheeled its legions, then toward Dorazzo and Pharsalia smote, that to the Calid Nile was felt the pain. Antandros and the Simios, whence it started, it saw again, and there where Hector lies and ill for Ptolemy then roused itself. From thence it came like lightning upon Juba, then wheeled itself again into your west, where the Pompeian clarion it heard. From what it wrought with the next standard-bearer, Brutus and Cassius howl and hell together, and Modena and Perugia dolent were. Still doth the mournful Cleopatra weep, because thereof who fleeing from before it, 
took from the adder sudden and black death. With him it ran even to the Red Sea shore. With him it placed the world in so great peace that unto Janus was his temple closed. But what the standard that has made me speak, achieved before and after should achieve, throughout the mortal realm that lies beneath it, becometh an appearance mean and dim, if in the hand of the third Caesar seen with eye unclouded and affection pure, because the living justice that inspires me granted it, in the hand of him I speak of, the glory of doing vengeance for its wrath. Now here attend to what I answer thee. Later it ran with Titus to do vengeance, upon the vengeance of the ancient sin. And when the tooth of Lombardy had bitten the holy church, then underneath its wings did Charlemagne victorious succor her. Now hast thou power to judge of such as those whom I accuse above and of their crimes, which are the cause of all your miseries. To the public standard one the yellow lilies opposes, the other claims it for a party, so that tis hard to see which sins the most. Let, let the Ghibellines ply their handicraft beneath some other standard, for this ever ill follows he who it and justice parts. And let not this new Charles e'er strike it down, he and his gulfs, but let him fear the talons that from a nobler lion strip the fell. Already oftentimes the sons have wept the father's crime, and let him not believe that God will change his scutcheon for the lilies. This little planet doth adorn itself with the good spirits that have active been, that fame and honor might come after them. And whensoever the desires mount thither, thus deviating must perforce the rays of the true love less vividly mount upward. But in commensuration of our wages, with our desert is portion of our joy, because we see them neither less nor greater. Herein doth living justice sweeten so affection in us that for evermore it cannot warp to any iniquity. Voices diverse make up sweet melodies, so in this life of ours the seats diverse render sweet harmony among these spheres. And in the compass of this present pearl shineth the sheen of Romeo, of whom the grand and beauteous work was ill rewarded. But the Provencals who against him wrought, they have not laughed, and therefore ill goes he, who makes his hurt of the good deeds of others. Four daughters, and each one of them a queen, had Raymond Berenger, and this for him did Romeo, a poor man and a pilgrim. And then the malicious words incited him to summon to a reckoning this just man, who rendered to him seven and five for ten. And he departed poor and stricken in years, and if the world could know the heart he had, in begging bit by bit his livelihood, though much it laud him, it would laud him more. End of Canto 6 Paradiso, Canto 7 O sana sanctus du saboth, super lustrans claritate tu felice signis hora malahoth. In this wise to his melody returning, the substance upon which a double light doubles itself was seen by me to sing, and to their dance this and the others moved, and in the manner of swift hurrying sparks veiled themselves from me with a sudden distance. Doubting was I, and saying, Tell her, tell her, within me, tell her, saying, Tell my lady, who slakes my thirst with her sweet effluences, and yet that reverence which doth lord it over the whole of me only by B and I C E, bowed me again like unto one who drowses. Short while did Beatrice endure me thus, and she began lighting me with a smile, such as would make one happy in the fire. According to infallible advisement, after what manner a just vengeance justly could be avenged has put thee upon thinking. But I will speedily thy mind unloose, and do thou listen, for these words of mine of a great doctrine will a present make thee. By not enduring on the power that wills, curb for his good, that man who ne'er was born, damning himself, damned all his progeny, whereby the human species down below lay sick for many centuries in great error, till to descend it pleased the word of God, to where the nature from which its own maker estranged itself, he joined to him person by the sole act of his eternal love. Now unto what is said direct thy sight, this nature when united to its maker, such as created was sincere and good, but by itself alone was banished forth from paradise, because it turned aside out of the way of truth and of its life. Therefore the penalty the cross held out, if measured by the nature thus assumed, none ever yet with so great justice stung, and none was ever of so great injustice, considering who the person was that suffered, within whom such a nature was contracted. From one act therefore issued things diverse, to God and to the Jews one death was pleasing, Earth trembled at it, and the heaven was opened. It should no longer now seem difficult to thee, 
when it is said that a just vengeance by a just court was afterward avenged. But now do I behold thy mind entangled, from thought to thought within a knot, from which with great desire it waits to free itself. Thou sayest, Well, discern I what I hear, but it is hidden from me why God willed for our redemption only this one mode. Buried remaineth, brother, this decree unto the eyes of every one whose nature is in the flame of love not yet adult. Verily, insomuch as at this mark one gaze is long and little is discerned, wherefore this mode was worthiest, I will say, goodness divine from which itself doth spurn all envy, burning in itself so sparkles of the eternal beauties it unfolds. Whate'er from this immediately distills has afterwards no end, for ne'er removed is its impression when it sets its seal. Whate'er from this immediately rains down is wholly free, because it is not subject unto the influences of novel things. The more conformed thereto, the more it pleases, for the blessed ardor that irradiates all things, in that most like itself is most vivacious. With all of these things has advantaged been the human creature, and if one be wanting from his nobility, he needs must fall. Tis sin alone which doth disfranchise him, and render him unlike the good supreme, so that he little with its light is blanched. And to his dignity no more returns, unless he fill up where transgression empties, with righteous pains for criminal delights. Your nature, when it sins so utterly in its own seed out of these dignities, even as out of paradise was driven, nor could itself recover if thou noticed with nicest subtlety by any way, except by passing one of these two fords. Either that God through clemency alone had pardon granted, or that man himself had satisfaction for his folly made. Fix now thine eye deep into the abyss of the eternal counsel, to my speech, as far as may be fastened steadfastly. Man in his limitations had not power to satisfy, not having power to sink in his humility obeying then. Far as he disobeying thought to rise, and for this reason man has been from power of satisfying by himself excluded. Therefore it God behooved in his own ways, man to restore unto his perfect life, I say in one, or else in both of them. But since the action of the doer is so much more grateful, as it more presents the goodness of the heart from which it issues, goodness divine, that doth imprint the world, has been contented to proceed by each, and all its ways lift you up again. Nor twixt the first day and the final night, such high and such magnificent proceeding, by one or by the other was or shall be. For God more bounteous was himself to give, to make man able to uplift himself, than if he only of himself had pardoned. And all the other modes were insufficient for justice, were it not the Son of God himself had humbled to become incarnate. Now to fill fully each desire of thine, return I to elucidate one place, in order that thou there mayest see as I do. Thou sayest, I see the air, I see the fire, the water and the earth and all their mixtures come to corruption, and short while endure. And these things notwithstanding were created, Therefore, if that which I have said were true, they should have been secure against corruption. The angels, brother, and the land sincere in which thou art created may be called just as they are in their entire existence. But all the elements which thou hast named, and all those things which out of them are made, by a created virtue are informed. Created was the matter which they have. Created was the informing influence within these stars that round about them go. The soul of every brute and of the plants by its potential temperament attracts the ray and motion of the holy lights. But your own life immediately inspires supreme beneficence, and enamors it, so with herself it evermore desires her. And thou from this mayest argue furthermore your resurrection, if thou think again how human flesh was fashioned at that time, when the first parents, both of them, were made. End of Canto 7 Paradiso, Canto 8 The world used in its peril to believe that the fair Cypria delirious love rayed out in the third epicycle turning. Wherefore not only unto her paid honor of sacrifices and a votive cry, the ancient nations in the ancient error, but both Dione honored they and Cupid that as her mother and this one as her son, and said that he had sat in Dido's lap. And they took from her whence I beginning take, took the denomination of the star that woos the sun, now following, now in front. I was not aware of our ascending to it, but of our being in it gave full faith, my lady, whom I saw more beauteous grow. And as within a flame a spark is seen, and as within a voice a voice discerned, when one is steadfast and one comes and goes, 
Within that light beheld I other lamps move in a circle, speeding more and less, methinks in measure of their inward vision. From a cold cloud descended never winds, or visible or not so rapidly, they would not laggard an impeded scene. To any one who had those lights divine seen come towards us, leaving the gyration begin at first in the high seraphim, and behind those that most in front appeared sounded Osana, so that never since to hear again was I without desire. Then unto us more nearly one approached, and it alone began, We all are ready unto thy pleasure, that thou joy in us. We turn around with the celestial princes, one gyre and one gyration and one thirst, in whom thou in the world of old didst say, Ye who intelligent the third heaven are moving, and are so full of love to pleasure thee, a little quiet will not be less sweet. After these eyes of mine themselves had offered unto my lady reverently, and she, content and certain of herself, had made them, back to the light they turned, which so great promise made of itself, and say, Who art thou? was my voice, imprinted with a great affection. Oh, how and how much I beheld it grow, with the new joy that superadded was unto its joys, as soon as I had spoken. Thus changed, it said to me, the world possessed me short time below, and if it had been more, much evil will be which would not have been. My gladness keepeth me concealed from thee, which rayeth round about me, and doth hide me, like as a creature swathed in its own silk. Much didst thou love me, and thou hadst good reason, for had I been below, I should have shown thee somewhat beyond the foliage of my love. That left-hand margin which doth bathe itself in roan, when it is mingled with the sorg, me for its lord awaited in due time. And that horn of Ausonio, which is towned with body, with Gaeta and Catona, whence Tonto and Verde in the sea disgorge, already flashed upon my brow the crown of that dominion which the Danube waters after the German borders it abandons. And beautiful Trinacria, that is murky, twixt Pratino and Peloro, on the gulf which greatest scathe from Joris doth receive. Not through Typhius, but through nascent sulphur, would have awaited her own monarch still, through me from Charles descended and from Rudolph. If evil lordship that exasperates ever the subject populations had not moved Palermo to the outcry of death, death, and if my brother could but this foresee the greedy poverty of Catalonia, straight would he flee that it might not molest him. For verily tis needful to provide, through him or other, so that on his bark, already freighted, no more freight be placed. His nature, which from liberal covetous descended, such a soldiery would need as should not care for hoarding in a chest. Because I do believe the lofty joy thy speech infuses into me, my lord, where every good thing doth begin and end. Thou seest as I see it, the more grateful is it to me, and this too hold I dear, that gazing upon God thou dost discern it. Glad hast thou made me, so make clear to me, since speaking thou hast stirred me up to doubt, how from sweet seed can bitter issue forth. This I to him, and he to me, if I can show to thee a truth, to what thou askest, thy face thou hold as thou dost hold thy back. The good which all the round thou art ascending, turns and contents, maketh its providence to be a power unto these bodies vast, and not alone the natures are foreseen, within the mind that in itself is perfect, but they together with their preservation, for whatsoever thing this bow shoots forth, falls foreordained unto an end foreseen, even as a shaft directed to its mark. If that were not, the heaven which thou dost walk, would in such manner its effects produce, that they no longer would be arts, but ruins. This cannot be if the intelligences that keep these stars in motion are not maimed, and maimed the first that has not made them perfect. Wilt thou this truth have clearer made it to thee? And I, not so, for tis impossible, that nature tire, I see, in what is needful. Whence he again, now say, would it be worse for men on earth were they not citizens? Yes, I replied, and here I ask no reason. And can they be so, if below they live not diversely unto offices diverse? No, if your master writeth well for you. So came he with deductions to this point, then he concluded, Therefore it behooves the roots of your effects to be diverse. Hence one is Solon-born, another Xerxes, another Melchizedek, and another he who flying through the air his son did lose. Revolving nature, which a signet is to mortal wax, doth practice well her art, but not one in distinguished from another. 
Thence happens it that Esau differeth in seed from Jacob, and Quirinius comes from Sire so vile that he is given to Mars. A generated nature its own way would always make like its progenitors, if providence divine were not triumphant. Now that which was behind thee is before thee, but that thou know that I with thee am pleased, with a corollary will I mantle thee. Evermore nature, if it fortune find discordant to it, like each other's seed out of its region maketh evil thrift. And if the world below would fix its mind on the foundation which is laid by nature, pursuing that, t'would have the people good. But you unto religion wrench aside him who was born to gird him with the sword, and make a king of him who is for sermons. Therefore your footsteps wander from the road. End of Canto 8 Paradiso, Canto 9 Beautiful Clements, after that thy Charles had me enlightened, he narrated to me the treacheries his siege should undergo, but said, Be still, and let the years roll round, so I can only say that lamentation legitimate shall follow on your wrongs. And of that holy light the life already had to the sun which fills it turned again, as to that good for which each thing sufficeth. Ah, souls deceived and creatures impious, who from such good do turn away your hearts, directing upon vanity your foreheads. And now, behold, another of those splendors approached me, and its will to pleasure me it signified by brightening outwardly. The eyes of Beatrice that fastened were upon me as before a dear assent to my desire assurance gave to me. Ah, bring swift compensation to my wish, thou blessed spirit, I said, and give me proof that what I think in thee I can reflect. Whereat the light that still was new to me, out of its depths whence it before was singing, as one delighted to do good, continued, Within that region of the land depraved of Italy that lies between Rialto and fountainheads of Brenta and of Piava, rises a hill and mounts not very high, wherefrom descended formerly a torch that made upon that region great assault. Out of one root were born both I and it. Kunitsa was I called, and here I shine, because the splendor of the star o'ercame me. But gladly to myself the cause I pardon of my allotment, and it does not grieve me which would perhaps seem strong unto your vulgar. Of this so luculent and precious jewel, which of our heaven is nearest unto me, great fame remained, and ere it die away, this hundredth year shall yet quintupled be. See if man ought to make him excellent, so that another life the first may leave. And thus thinks not the present multitude, shut in by a DJ and Taliamento, nor yet for being scourged as penitent. But soon twill be that Padia and the marsh will change the water that Vicenza bathes, because the folk are stubborn against duty. And where the Sile and Cagnano join, one lordeth it, and goes with lofty head, for catching whom e'en now the net is making. Feltro, moreover, of her impious pastor, shall weep the crime which shall so monstrous be, that for the like none ever entered Malta. Ample exceedingly would be the vat, that of the Federese could hold the blood, and weary who should weigh it ounce by ounce, of which this courteous priest shall make a gift, to show himself a partisan, and such gifts will to the living of the land conform. Above us there are mirrors, thrones you call them, from which shines out on us God judicant, so that this utterance seems good to us. Here it was silent, and it had the semblance of being turned elsewhither, by the wheel on which it had entered as it was before. The other joy, already known to me, became a thing transplendent in my sight, as a fine ruby smitten by the sun. Through joy effulgence is acquired above, as here a smile, but down below the shade outwardly darkens, as the mind is sad. God seeth all things, and in him, blessed spirit, thy sight is, said I, so that never will of his can possibly from thee be hidden. Thy voice, then, that forever makes the heavens glad, with the singing of those holy fires which of their six wings make themselves a cowl. Wherefore does it not satisfy my longings? Indeed, I would not wait thy questioning if I in thee were as thou art in me. The greatest of the valleys where the water expands itself forthwith its words began, that sea accepted which the earth in garlands. Between discordant shores against the sun extends so far that it meridian makes where it was wont before to make the horizon. I was a dweller on that valley's shore, twixt Ebro and Magra, that with a journey short doth from the Tuscan part the Genoese, with the same sunset and the same sunrise nearly sit Bugia and the city whence I was, that with its blood once made the harbor hot. Focal that people called me, unto whom my name was known, and now with me this heaven imprints itself, as I did once with it. 
for more the daughter of Belus never burned, offending both Sicius and Creusa, than I, so long as it became my locks, nor yet that Rodophian, who deluded was by Demophon, nor yet Alcides, when Aeoli he and his heart had locked. Yet here is no repenting, but we smile, not at the fault, which comes not back to mind, but at the power which ordered and foresaw. Here we behold the art that doth adorn, with such affection, and the good discover, whereby the world above turns that below. But that thou wholly satisfied mayst bear thy wishes hence, which in this sphere are born, still further to perceive behooveth me. Thou fain wouldst know who was within this light, that here beside me thus is scintillating, even as a sunbeam in the limpid water. Then know thou, that within there is at rest Rahab, and being to our order joined, with her in its supremest grade tis sealed. Into this heaven where ends the shadowy cone, cast by your world before all other souls, first of Christ's triumph was she taken up. Full meet it was to leave her in some heaven, even as a palm of the high victory, which he acquired with one palm and the other. Because she favored the first glorious deed of Joshua upon the Holy Land, that little stirs the memory of the Pope. Thy city, which an offshoot is of him, who first upon his maker turned his back, and whose ambition is so sorely wept, brings forth and scatters the accursed flower, which both the sheep and lambs hath led astray, since it has turned the shepherd to a wolf. For this the evangel and the mighty doctors are derelict, and only the decretals so steady that it shows upon their margins. On this are Pope and Cardinal's intent. Their meditations reach not Nazareth, there were his pinions Gabriel unfolded, but Vatican and the other parts elect of Rome, which have a cemetery been unto the soldiery that followed Peter, shall soon be free from this adultery. End of Canto 9 Paradiso, Canto 10 Looking into his son with all the love which each of them eternally breathes forth, the primal and unutterable power, what air before the mind or eye revolves with so much order made, there can be none who this beholds without enjoying him. Lift up then, reader, to the lofty wheels, with me thy vision straight unto that part, where the one motion on the other strikes, and there begin to contemplate with joy that master's art, who in himself so loves it, that never doth his eye depart therefrom. Behold how from that point goes branching off the oblique circle, which conveys the planets to satisfy the world that calls upon them. And if their pathway were not thus inflected, much virtue in the heavens would be in vain, and almost every power below here dead. If from the straight line distant more or less for the departure, much would wanting be above and underneath of mundane order. Remain now, reader, still upon thy bench, in thought pursuing that which is foretasted, if thou wouldst jocund be instead of weary. I've set before thee, henceforth feed thyself, for to itself diverteth all my care, that theme whereof I had been made the scribe. The greatest of the ministers of nature, who with the power of heaven the world imprints, and measures with his light the time for us, with that part which above is called to mind, conjoined along the spirals was revolving, where each time earlier he presents himself. And I was with him, but of the ascending I was not conscious, saving as a man of a first thought is conscious ere it come. And Beatrice, she who has seen to pass from good to better, and so suddenly, that not by time her action is expressed, how loosened in herself must she have been? And what is in the sun wherein I entered, apparent not by color but by light? I, though I call on genius, art, and practice, cannot so tell it could be imagined. Believe one can, and let him long to see it. And if our fantasies too lowly are for altitudes so great, it is no marvel, since o'er the sun was never I could go. Such in this place was the fourth family of the High Father, who forever sates it showing how he breathes forth and how begets. And Beatrice began, Give thanks, give thanks unto the Son of Angels, who to the sensible one has raised thee by his grace. Never was heart of mortal so disposed to worship, nor to give itself to God with all its gratitude was it so ready, as at those words did I myself become, and all my love was so absorbed in him that in oblivion Beatrice was eclipsed. Nor this displeased her, but she smiled at it, so that the splendor of her laughing eyes my single mind on many things divided. Lights many, saw I, vivid and triumphant, make us a center and themselves a circle, more sweet in voice than luminous in aspect. 
thus girt about the daughter of Latona, we sometimes see, when pregnant is the heir, so that it holds the thread which makes her zone. Within the court of heaven, whence I return, are many jewels found, so fair and precious they cannot be transported from the realm. And of them was the singing of those lights, who takes not wings that he may fly up thither, the tidings thence may from the dumb await. As soon as singing thus those burning suns had round about us whirled themselves three times, like unto stars neighboring the steadfast poles, ladies they seemed, not from the dance released, but who stopped short, in silence, listening till they had gathered the new melody. And within one I heard beginning, when the radiance of grace by which is kindled true love, and which thereafter grows by loving, within thee multiplied is so resplendent that it conducts thee upward by that stair, where without reascending none descends. Who should deny the wine out of his vial, unto thy thirst in liberty were not except as water which descends not seaward? Fain wouldst thou know with what plants is enflowered, this garland that encircles with the light, the lady fair who makes thee strong for heaven. Of the lambs was I of the holy flock, which Dominic conducteth by a road, where well one fattens if he strayeth not. He who is nearest me on the right, my brother and master was, and he, Albertus, is of Cologne, I, Thomas of Aquinium. If thou of all the others wouldst be certain, follow behind my speaking with thy sight, upward along the blessed garland turning, that next effulgence issues from the smile of Gratian, who assisted both the courts in such wise that it pleased in paradise. The other, which nearby adorns our choir, that Peter was, who, even as the poor widow, offered his treasure unto holy church. The fifth light, that among us is the fairest, breathes forth from such a love that all the world below is greedy to learn tidings of it. Within it is the lofty mind, where knowledge so deep was put, that if the true be true, to see so much there never rose a second. Thou seest next the luster of that taper, which in the flesh below looked most within the angelic nature and its ministry. Within that other little light is smiling, the advocate of the Christian centuries, out of whose rhetoric Augustine was furnished. Now if thou trainest thy mind's eye along with light to light pursuant of my praise, with thirst already of the eighth thou waitest. By seeing every good therein exalts the sainted soul, which the fallacious world makes manifest to him who listeneth well. The body whence twas hunted forth is lying down in Childaro, and from martyrdom and banishment it came unto this peace. See farther onward flamed the burning breath of Isidore, of Beta, and of Richard, who was in contemplation more than man. This whence to me returneth thy regard, the light is of a spirit unto whom in his grave meditations death seems slow. It is the light eternal of Sigir, who, reading lectures in the street of straw, did syllogize invidious verities. Then as a horologue that called us, what time the bride of God is rising up, with matins to her spouse that he may love her, wherein one part the other draws and urges, ting, ting, resounding with so sweet a note, that swells with love the spirit well disposed. Thus I beheld the glorious wheel move round, and render voice to voice in modulation, and sweetness that cannot be comprehended, excepting there where joy is made eternal. End of Canto 10 Paradiso, Canto 11 O oh, thou insensate care of mortal men, how inclusive are the syllogisms that make thee beat thy wings in downward flight! One after laws and one to aphorisms was going, and one following the priesthood, and one to reign by force or sophistry, and one in theft, and one in state affairs, one in the pleasures of the flesh involved wearied himself, one gave himself to ease. When I, from all these things emancipate with Beatrice above there in the heavens, with such exceeding glory was received. When each one had returned unto that point, within the circle where it was before, it stood as in a candlestick a candle. And from within the effulgence which it first had spoken unto me, I heard begin, smiling while it more luminous became. Even as I am kindled in its ray, so looking into the eternal light, the occasion of thy thoughts I apprehend. Thou doubtest, and wouldst have me to resift in language so extended and so open my speech that to thy sense it may be plain. Where just before I said, Where well one fattens, and where I said, There never rose a second, and here tis needful we distinguish well, the providence which governeth the world with counsel, wherein all created vision is vanquished ere it reach unto the bottom, so that towards her own beloved might go the bride of him, who uttering a loud cry espoused her with his consecrated blood self-confident, and unto him more faithful. Two princes did ordain in her behoof, which on this side and that might be her guide. 
The one was all seraphical and ardor. The other by his wisdom upon earth a splendor was of light cherubical. One will I speak of, for both is spoken. In praising one, whichever may be taken, because unto one end their labors were. Between Tupino and the stream that falls, down from the hill elect of the blessed Ubald, a fertile slope of lofty mountain hangs, from which Perugia feels the cold and heat, through Porta Sole, and behind it weep Gualdo and Nochera their grievous yoke. From out that slope, there where it breaketh most its steepness, rose upon the world a sun, as this one does sometimes from out of the Ganges. Therefore let him who speaketh of that place say not Ashesi, for he will say little, but Orient, if he properly would speak. He was not yet far distant from his rising, before he had begun to make the earth some comfort from his mighty virtue feel. For he in youth his father's wrath incurred, for certain dame to whom, as unto death, the gate of pleasure no one doth unlock, and was before his spiritual court at Coram Patre unto her united. Then day by day more fervently he loved her. She, reft of her first husband, scorned, obscure, one thousand and one hundred years and more, waited without suitor till he came. Not it availed to hear that with Amiclas, found her unmoved at sounding of his voice, he who struck terror into all the world. Not it availed being constant and undaunted, so that when Mary still remained below, she mounted up with Christ upon the cross. But that too darkly I may not proceed, Francis in poverty for these two lovers, take thou henceforward in my speech diffuse. Their concord and their joyous semblances, the love, the wonder, and the sweet regard they made to be the cause of holy thoughts, so much so that the venerable Bernard first bared his feet, and after so great peace, ran, and in running thought himself too slow. O oh, wealth unknown, O oh, veritable good! Giles bears his feet, and bears his feet Sylvester. Behind the bridegroom, so doth please the bride. Then goes his way that father and that master, he and his lady and that family, which now was girding on the humble cord. Nor cowardice of heart weighed down his brow at being son of Peter Bernardone, nor for appearing marvelously scorned. But regally his hard determination to innocent he opened, and from him received the primal seal upon his order. After the people mendicant increased, behind this man whose admirable life, better and glory of the heavens were sung, incoronated with a second crown, was through Honorius by the eternal spirit the holy purpose of this archimandrite. And when he had, through thirst of martyrdom, in the proud presence of the sultan preached, Christ and the others who came after him, and finding for conversion too unripe the folk, and not to tarry there in vain, returned a fruit of the Italic grass. On the rude rock twixt Tiber and the Arno, from Christ did he receive the final seal, which during two whole years his members bore, when he who chose unto him so much good was pleased to draw him up to the reward that he had merited by being lowly. Unto his friars as to the rightful heirs, his most dear lady did he recommend, and bade that they should love her faithfully and from her bosom the illustrious soul wished to depart, returning to its realm, and for its body wished no other beer. Think now what man was he, who was a fit companion over the high seas, to keep the bark of Peter to its proper bearings? And this man was our patriarch, hence whoever doth follow him as he commands can see that he is laden with good merchandise. But for new pasturage his flock has grown so greedy, that it is impossible they be not scattered over fields diverse. And in proportion as his sheep remote and vagabond go farther off from him, more void of milk return they to the fold. Verily some there are that fear a hurt, and keep close to the shepherd, but so few that little cloth doth furnish forth their hoods. Now if my utterance be not indistinct, if thine own hearing hath attentive been, if thou recall to mind what I have said, in part contented shall thy wishes be, for thou shalt see the plant that's chipped away, and the rebuke that lieth in the words where well one fattens, if he strayeth not. Recording by Rosalind Wills, Canto Twelfth. Soon as the blessed flame had taken up the final word to give it utterance, began the holy millstone to revolve, and in its gyre had not turned wholly round before another in a ring enclosed it, and motion joined to motion, song to song. Song that as greatly doth transcend our muses, our sirens in those dulcet clarions, as primal splendor that which is reflected. And as our span doth thwart a tender cloud, two rainbows parallel and like in color, when Juno to her handmaid gives command, 
the one without born of the one within, like to the speaking of that vagrant one whom love consumed as doth the sun the vapors. And make the people here, through covenant, God set with Noah presageful of the world that shall no more be covered with a flood. In such wise of those sempiternal roses the garlands twain encompassed us about, and thus the outer to the inner answered. After the dance and other grand rejoicings, both of the singing and the flaming forth, effulgence with effulgence, blithe and tender, together at once with one accord had stopped, even as the eyes that as volition moves them must needs together shut and lift themselves. Out of the heart of one of the new lights there came a voice, that needle to the star made me appear in turning thitherward. And it began, The love that makes me fair draws me to speak about the other leader, by whom so well is spoken here of mine. Tis right where one is to bring in the other, that as they were united in their warfare, together likewise may their glory shine. The soldiery of Christ, which it had cost so dear to arm again behind the standard, moved slow and doubtful and in numbers few. When the emperor who reigneth evermore provided for the host that was in peril, through grace alone, and not that it was worthy. And as was said, he to his bride brought succor, with champions twain, at whose deed, at whose word, the straggling people were together drawn. Within that region where the sweet west wind rises to open the new leaves, wherewith Europe is seen to clothe herself afresh, not far off from the beating of the waves behind which in his long career the sun sometimes conceals himself from every man, is situate the fortunate Calahora, under protection of the mighty shield in which the lion subject is and sovereign. Therein was born the amorous paramour of Christian faith, the athlete consecrate, kind to his own and cruel to his foes. And when it was created was his mind replete with such a living energy that in his mother her it made prophetic. As soon as the espousals were complete between him and the faith at holy font, where they with mutual safety dowered each other, the woman who for him had given assent saw in a dream the admirable fruit that issue would from him and from his heirs, and that he might be construed as he was, a spirit from this place went forth to name him, with his possessive whose he wholly was. Dominic was he called, and him I speak of, even as of the husbandman whom Christ elected to his garden to assist him. Envoy and servant sooth he seemed of Christ, for the first love made manifest in him was the first counsel that was given by Christ. Silent and wakeful many a time was he, discovered by his nurse upon the ground, as if he would have said, For this I came. O thou his father, Felix verily, O thou his mother, verily Joanna, if this interpreted means as is said. Not for the world which people toil for now, in following Ostiense and Tadio, but through his longing after the true manner. He in short time became so great a teacher that he began to go about the vineyard, which fadeth soon if faithless be the dresser, and of the sea that once was more benignant unto the righteous poor, not through itself but him who sits there and degenerates, not to dispense or two or three for six, not any fortune of first vacancy, non decimas que sunt pauperum dei. He asked for, but against the errant world, permission to do battle for the seed, of which these four and twenty plants surround thee. Then with the doctrine and the will together, with office apostolical he moved, like torrent, which some lofty vein outpresses, and in among the shoots heretical his impetus with greater fury smote, wherever the resistance was the greatest. Of him were made thereafter diverse runnels, whereby the garden Catholic is watered, so that more living its plantations stand. Of such the one wheel of the Bigo was, in which the holy church itself defended, and in the field its civic battle won. Truly full manifest should be to thee the excellence of the other, unto whom Thomas so courteous was before my coming. But still the orbit which the highest part of its circumference made is derelict, so that the mould is where was once the crust. His family that had straightforward moved with feet upon his footprints are turned round so that they set the point upon the heel. And soon aware they will be of the harvest of this bad husbandry, when shall the tares complain the granary is taken from them. Yet say I, he who searcheth leaf by leaf, our volume through, would still some page discover where he could read, I am as I am wont. Twill not be from Casal nor Aquasparta, from whence comes such unto the written word that one avoids it and the other narrows. Bonaventura of Banyoregio's life am I, who always in great offices postponed consideration sinister. Here are Illuminato and Agostino, 
who of the first barefooted beggars were, that with the cord the friends of God became. Hugh of St. Victor is among them here, and Peter Mangiador, and Peter of Spain, who down below in volumes twelve is shining. Nathan the seer, and Metropolitan Chrysostom, and Anselmus, and Donatus, who deigned to lay his hand to the first art. Here is Robanus, and beside me here shines the Calabrian abbot Joachim, he with the spirit of prophecy endowed. To celebrate so great a paladin have moved me the impassioned courtesy and the discreet discourses of Friar Thomas, and with me they have moved this company. Canto 13 Let him imagine who would well conceive what now I saw, and let him while I speak retain the image as a steadfast rock. The fifteen stars that in their diverse regions the sky enlivened with a light so great that it transcends all clusters of the air. Let him the wane imagine unto which our vault of heaven sufficeth night and day, so that in turning of its pole it fails not. Let him the mouth imagine of the horn, that in the point beginneth of the axis round about which the primal wheel revolves, to have fashioned of themselves two signs in heaven, like unto that which Minus's daughter made, the moment when she felt the frost of death, and one to have its rays within the other, and both to whirl themselves in such a manner that one should forward go, the other backward, and he will have some shadowing forth of that true constellation and the double dance that circled round the point at which I was, because it is as much beyond our want as swifter than the motion of the Kiana moveth the heaven that all the rest outspeeds. There sang they neither Bacchus nor Apollo, but in the divine nature persons three, and in one person divine and human. The singing and the dance fulfilled their measure, and unto us those holy lights gave need, growing in happiness from care to care. Then broke the silence of those saints concordant, the light in which the admirable life of God's own mendicant was told to me, and said, Now that one straw is trodden on, now that its seed is garnered up already, sweet love invites me to thresh out the other. Into that bosom thou believest whence was drawn the rib to form the beauteous cheek, whose taste to all the world is costing dear, and into that which by the lance transfixed before and since such satisfaction made, that it weighs down the balance of all sin. What air of light it has to human nature been lawful to possess was all infused by the same power that both of them created, and hence at what I said above dost wonder, when I narrated that no second had the good which in the fifth light is enclosed. Now open thine eyes to what I answer thee, and thou shalt see thy creed and my discourse fit in the truth as center in a circle. That which can die, and that which dieth not, are nothing but the splendor of the idea, which by his love our Lord brings into being. Because that living light, which from its fount effulgent flows, so that it disunites not from him, nor from the love in them entrined, though its own goodness reunites its rays in nine subsistences, as in a mirror, itself eternally remaining one. Thence it descends to the last potencies, downward from act to act, becoming such that only brief contingencies it makes. And these contingencies I hold to be things generated, which the heaven produces by its own motion, with seed and without. Neither the wax nor that which tempers it remains immutable, and hence beneath the ideal signet more and less shines through. Therefore it happens that the self-same tree, after its kind, bears worse and better fruit, and ye are born with characters diverse. If in perfection tempered were the wax, and were the heaven in its supremest virtue, the brilliance of the seal would all appear. But nature gives it ever more deficient, in the like manner working as the artist who has the skill of art and hand that trembles. If then the fervent love, the vision clear, of primal virtue do dispose and seal, perfection absolute is there acquired. Thus was of old the earth created worthy of all and every animal perfection, and thus the virgin was impregnate made. So that thine own opinion I commend, that human nature never yet has been nor will be what it was in those two persons. Now if no farther forth I should proceed, that in what way was he without a peer, would be the first beginning of thy words. But that may well appear what now appears not. Think who he was, and what occasion moved him to make request, when it was told him, Ask. I've not so spoken that thou canst not see clearly he was a king who asked for wisdom, that he might be sufficiently a king. T'was not to know the number in which are the motors here above, or if necesse with a contingent air necesse make. Non si es dare primo motum esse, or if in semicircle can be made triangle so that it have no right angle. 
Whence if thou notice this and what I said, a regal prudence is that peerless seeing in which the shaft of my intention strikes. And if on rose thou turnest thy clear eyes, thou'lt see that it has reference alone to kings who are many, and the good are rare. With this distinction take thou what I said, and thus it can consist with thy belief of the first father and of our delight. And led shall this be always to thy feet, to make thee like a weary man move slowly, both to the yes and no thou seest not. For very low among the fools is he who affirms without distinction, or denies as well in one as in the other case, because it happens that full often bends current opinion in the false direction, and then the feelings bind the intellect. Far more than uselessly he leaves the shore, since he returneth not the same he went, who fishes for the truth and has no skill. And in the world proofs manifest thereof, Parmenides, Melissus, Brissus are, and many who went on and knew not whither. Thus did Sibelius, Arius, and those fools who have been even as swords unto the scriptures, in rendering distorted their straight faces. Nor yet shall people be too confident in judging, even as he is who doth count the corn in field or ever it be ripe. For I have seen all winter long the thorn first show itself intractable and fierce, and after bear the rose upon its top. And I have seen a ship direct and swift run o'er the sea throughout its course entire to perish at the harbor's mouth at last. Let not Dame Bertha nor Sir Martin think, seeing one steal another offering make, to see them in the arbitrament divine, for one may rise and fall the other may. Canto 14 From center unto rim, from rim to center, in a round vase the water moves itself, as from without tis struck or from within. Into my mind upon a sudden dropped what I am saying at the moment when silent became the glorious life of Thomas, because of the resemblance that was born of his discourse and that of Beatrice, whom after him it pleased thus to begin. This man has need, and does not tell you so, nor with the voice, nor even in his thought, of going to the root of one truth more. Declare unto him if the light wherewith blossoms your substance shall remain with you eternally the same that it is now. And if it do remain, say in what manner, after ye are again made visible, it can be that it injure not your sight. As by a greater gladness urged and drawn, they who are dancing in a ring sometimes uplift their voices, and their motions quicken, so at that orison devout and prompt, the holy circles a new joy displayed in their revolving and their wondrous song. Whoso lamenteth him that here we die that we may live above, has never there seen the refreshment of the eternal rain. The one and two and three, whoever liveth, and reigneth ever in three and two and one, not circumscribed in all things circumscribing. Three several times was chanted by each one among those spirits, with such melody that for all merit it were just reward. And in the luster most divine of all, the lesser ring, I heard a modest voice, such as perhaps the angels was to Mary, answer, As long as the festivity of paradise shall be, so long our love shall radiate round about us such a vesture. Its brightness is proportioned to the ardor, the ardor to the vision, and the vision equals what grace it has above its worth. When glorious and sanctified our flesh is reassumed, then shall our persons be more pleasing by their being all complete. For will increase whate'er bestows on us of light gratuitous the good supreme, light which enables us to look on him. Therefore the vision must perforce increase, increase the ardor which from that is kindled, increase the radiance which from this proceeds. But even as a coal that sends forth flame, and by its vivid whiteness overpowers it, so that its own appearance it maintains, Thus the effulgence that surrounds us now shall be o'erpowered in aspect by the flesh, which still today the earth doth cover up. Nor can so great a splendor weary us, for strong will be the organs of the body to everything which hath the power to please us. So sudden and alert appeared to me both one and the other choir to say Amen, that well they showed desire for their dead bodies, nor so for them perhaps, but for the mothers, the fathers, and the rest who had been dear or ever they became eternal flames. And lo, all round about, of equal brightness, arose a luster over what was there, like a horizon that is clearing up. And as it rise of early eve begins along the welkin new appearances, so that the sight seems real and unreal, it seemed to me that new subsistences began there to be seen, and make a circle outside the other two circumferences. O oh, very sparkling of the Holy Spirit, how sudden and incandescent it became unto mine eyes, that vanquished bore it not! 
But Beatrice, so beautiful and smiling, appeared to me, that with the other sights that followed not my memory I must leave her. Then to uplift themselves mine eyes resumed the power, and I beheld myself translated the higher salvation with my lady only. Well was I aware that I was more uplifted by the enkindled smiling of the star that seemed to me more ruddy than its wont. With all my heart, and in that dialect which is the same in all, such holocaust to God I made as the new grace beseemed, and not yet from my bosom was exhausted the ardor of sacrifice, before I knew this offering was accepted and auspicious. For with so great a luster and so red splendors appeared to me in twofold rays, I said, O oh, Helios, who dost so adorn them! Even as the saint with less and greater lights glimmers between the two poles of the world, the galaxy that maketh wise men doubt, thus constellated in the depths of Mars those rays describe the venerable sign that quadrants joining in a circle make. Here doth my memory overcome my genius, for on that cross as leaven gleamed forth Christ, so that I cannot find in sample worthy. But he who takes his cross and follows Christ again will pardon me what I omit, seeing in that aurora lighten Christ. From horn to horn and twixt the top and base, lights were in motion, brightly scintillating as they together met and passed each other. Thus level and aslant and swift and slow, we here behold, renewing still the sight, the particles of bodies long and short. Across the sunbeam move, wherewith is listed sometimes the shade, which for their own defense people with cunning and with art contrive. And as a lute and harp, a cord and strung with many strings, a dulcet tinkling make to him by whom the notes are not distinguished, so from the lights that there to me appeared, up gathered through the cross a melody, which wrapped me, not distinguishing the hymn. Well was I where it was of lofty laud, because there came to me, Arise and conquer, as unto him who hears and comprehends not. So much enamored I became therewith, that until then there was not anything that e'er had fettered me with such sweet bonds. Perhaps my word appears somewhat too bold, postponing the delight of those fair eyes into which gazing my desire has rest. But who bethinks him that the living seals of every beauty grow in power ascending, and that I there had not turned round to those, can me excuse if I myself accuse to excuse myself, and see that I speak truly? For here the holy joy is not disclosed, because ascending it becomes more pure. Canto 15 A will benign in which reveals itself ever the love that righteously inspires, as in the iniquitous cupidity, Silence imposed upon that dulcet lyre, and quieted the consecrated chords, that heaven's right hand doth tighten and relax. How unto just entreaty shall be deaf those substances, which, to give me desire of praying them, with one accord grew silent? Tis well that without end he should lament, who for the love of thing that doth not last eternally despoils him of that love as through the pure and tranquil evening air there shoots from time to time a sudden fire, moving the eyes that steadfast were before, and seems to be a star that changeth place, except that in the part where it is kindled nothing is missed, and this endureth little. So from the horn that to the right extends unto that cross's foot there ran a star, out of the constellation shining there, nor was the gem dissevered from its ribbon, but down the radiant fillet ran along, so that fire seemed it behind alabaster. Thus piteous did Anchises' shade reach forward, if any faith our greatest muse deserve, when in Elysium he his son perceived. O sanguis meus, o super infusa gratia dei, sicut tibi, qui bis unquam coeli janua reclusa. Thus that effulgence whence I gave it heed, then round unto my lady turned my sight, and on this side and that was stupefied, for in her eyes was burning such a smile, that with mine own methought I touched the bottom both of my grace and of my paradise. Then pleasant to the hearing and the sight, the spirit joined to its beginning things I understood not, so profound it spake. Nor did it hide itself from me by choice, but by necessity, for its conception above the mark of mortal set itself. And when the bow of burning sympathy was so far slackened, that its speech descended, towards the mark of our intelligence, the first thing that was understood by me was, Benedite be thou, O trine and one, who hast unto my seed so courteous been. And it continued, Hunger long and grateful, drawn from the reading of the mighty volume wherein it never changed the white nor dark, thou hast appeased my son within this light, 
in which I speak to thee, by grace of her who to this lofty flight with plumage clothed thee. Thou thinkest that to me thy thought doth pass from him who is the first, as from the unit, if that be known, ray out the five and six. And therefore, who I am thou askest not, and why I seem more joyous unto thee than any other of this gladsome crowd. Thou thinkest the truth, because the small and great of this existence look into the mirror, wherein before thou thinkest thy thought thou showest. But that the sacred love in which I watch with sight perpetual, and which makes me thirst with sweet desire, may better be fulfilled. Now let thy voice secure and frank and glad proclaim the wishes, the desire proclaim to which my answer is decreed already. To Beatrice I turned me, and she heard before I spake, and smiled to me a sign that made the wings of my desire increase. Then in this wise began I. Love and knowledge, when on you dawned the first equality, of the same weight for each of you became. For in the sun which lighted you and burned with heat and radiance, they so equal are that all similitudes are insufficient. But among mortals will and argument, for reason that to you is manifest, diversely feathered in their opinions are. Whence I, who mortal am, feel in myself this inequality, so give not thanks save in my heart for this paternal welcome. Truly do I entreat thee, living topaz, set in this precious jewel as a gem, that thou wilt satisfy me with thy name. O leaf of mine, in whom I pleasure took, e'en while awaiting, I was thine own root. Such a beginning he in answer made me, then said to me, That one from whom is named thy race, and who a hundred years and more has circled round the mount on the first cornice, a son of mine and thy great-grandsire was. Well it behoves thee that the long fatigue thou shouldst for him make shorter with thy works. Florence, within the ancient boundary, from which she taketh still her tears and nuns, abode in quiet, temperate, and chaste. No golden chain she had, nor coronal, nor lady shod with sandal shoon, nor girdle that caught the eye more than the person did. Not yet the daughter at her birth struck fear into the father, for the time and dower did not o'errun this side or that the measure. No houses had she void of families, nor yet had thither come Sardinopolis, to show what in a chamber can be done. Not yet surpassed had Montemallo been by your Uselitojo, which surpassed shall in its downfall be as in its rise. Belincion Berti saw I go begirt with leather and with bone, and from the mirror his dame depart without a painted face. And him of Nerli saw, and him of Vecchio, contented with their simple suits of buff, and with the spindle and the flax their dames. O oh, fortunate women! And each one was certain of her own burial place, and none as yet for sake of France was in her bed deserted. One o'er the cradle kept her studious watch, and in her lullaby the language used that first delights the fathers and the mothers. Another, drawing tresses from her distaff, told o'er among her family the tales of Trojans and of Fessolae of Rome. As great a marvel, then, would have been held a la Posaltarello, a Chiangela, a Cincinnatus or Cornelia now. To such a quiet, such a beautiful life of the citizen, to such a safe community, and to so sweet an inn, did Mary give me, with loud cries invoked, and in your ancient baptistry at once, Christian and Cassia Guida I became. Moronto was my brother, and Eliseo, from Val di Pado, came to me my wife, and from that place thy surname was derived. I followed afterward the Emperor Conrad, and he begirt me of his chivalry, so much I pleased him with my noble deeds. I followed in his train against that law's iniquity, whose people doth usurp your just possession through your pastor's fault. Thereby that execrable race was I released from bonds of the fallacious world, the love of which defileth many souls, and came from martyrdom unto this place. Canto 16 O oh, thou art poor nobility of blood, if thou dost make the people glory in thee, down here where our affection languishes, a marvellous thing it ne'er will be to me. For there where appetite is not perverted, I say in heaven, of thee I made a boast. Truly thou art a cloak that quickly shortens, so that unless we piece thee day by day, time goeth round about thee with his shears. With you, which Rome was first to tolerate, wherein her family less perseveres, yet once again my words beginning made, whence Beatrice, who stood somewhat apart, smiling, appeared like unto her who coughed at the first failing writ of Guinevere. And I began, 
You are my ancestor. You give to me all hardihood to speak. You lift me so that I am more than I. So many rivulets with gladness fill my mind, that of itself it makes a joy, because it can endure this and not burst. Then tell me, my beloved root ancestral, who were your ancestors, and what the years that in your boyhood chronicled themselves? Tell me about the sheepfold of St. John, how large it was, and who the people were within it worthy of the highest seats. As at the blowing of the winds a coal quickens to flame, so I beheld that light become resplendent at my blandishments, and as unto mine eyes it grew more fair, with voice more sweet and tender, but not in this modern dialect, it said to me, From uttering of the Ave till the birth in which my mother, who is now a saint, of me was lightened, who had been her burdened, unto the lion had this fire returned five hundred fifty times and thirty more to reinflame itself beneath his paw. My ancestors and I our birthplace had, where first is found the last ward of the city, by him who runneth in your annual game. Suffice it of my elders to hear this, but who they were and whence they thither came, silence is more considerate than speech. All those who at that time were there between Mars and the Baptist, fit for bearing arms, were a fifth part of those who now are living. But the community that now is mixed with Campi and Sartaldo and Ficine, pure in the lowest artisan was seen. Oh, how much better twere to have as neighbors the folk of whom I speak, and at Galuzzo, and at Trespiano have your boundary, than have them in the town, and bear the stench of Aguglione's churl, and him of Signa, who has sharp eyes for trickery already. Had not the folk which most of all the world degenerates been a stepdame unto Caesar, but as a mother to her son benignant? Some who turn Florentines and trade and discount, would have gone back again to Simifonte, there where their grandsires went about as beggars. At Monte Morlo still would be the Counts, the Serci and the parish of Acone, perhaps in Valdegrieve, the Buen del Monte. Ever the intermingling of the people has been the source of malady in cities, as in the body food it surfeits on. And a blind bull more headlong plunges down than a blind lamb, and very often cuts better and more a single sword than five. If Luni thou regard, in Orbisaglia, how they have passed away, and how are passing Chiusi and Sinigaglia after them, to hear how races waste themselves away will seem to thee no novel thing nor hard, seeing that even cities have an end. All things of yours have their mortality, even as yourselves, but it is hidden in some, that a long while endure and lives are short. And as the turning of the lunar heaven covers and bears the shores without a pause, in the like manner fortune does with Florence. Therefore should not appear a marvellous thing what I shall say of the great Florentines, of whom your fame is hidden in the past. I saw the Uchi, saw the Catalini, Filippi, Gressi, Ormani, and Alberici, even in their fall illustrious citizens, and saw as mighty as they ancient were, with him of La Sanella, him of Arca, and Soldanir, and Ardighi, and Bostici. Near to the gate that is at present laden with a new felony of so much weight that soon it shall be jetsome from the bark, the Ravignani were from whom descended the county Guido, and who e'er the name of the great Bellincione since hath taken. He of La Presa knew the art of ruling already, and already Galigaggio had hilt and pommel gilded in his house. Mighty already was the column there, Sacchetti, Giuoci, Fifant, and Barucci, and Galli, and they who for the bushel blush. The stock from which were the Calfucci born was great already, and already chosen to curule chairs the Sizi and Arigucci. Oh, how beheld I those who are undone by their own pride, and how the balls of gold Florence and flowered in all their mighty deeds! So likewise did the ancestors of those who evermore, when vacant is your church, fatten by staying in consistory. The insolent race that like a dragon follows whoever flees, and unto him that shows his teeth or purse, is gentle as a lamb, already rising was, but from low people, so that it pleased not Uberton Donato that his wife's father should make him their kin. Already had Caponsacco to the market from Fessol descended, and already Giuda and Infangato were good burghers. I'll tell a thing incredible but true. One entered the small circuit by a gate, which from the Della Pera took its name. Each one that bears the beautiful escutcheon of the great baron whose renown and name the festival of Thomas keepeth fresh, knighthood and privilege from him received, 
though with the populace unites himself, today the man who binds it with a border. Already were Gualtarotti and Importuni, and still more quiet would the Borgo be, if with new neighbors it remained unfed. The house from which is born your lamentation, through just disdain that death among you brought, and put an end unto your joyous life, was honored in itself and its companions. O buon del monte, how in evil hour thou fledst the bridle at another's promptings! Many would be rejoicing who are sad if God had thee surrendered to the Ema the first time that thou camest to the city. But it behoved the mutilated stone which guards the bridge, that Florence should provide a victim in her latest hour of peace. With all these families and others with them, Florence beheld I in so great repose, that no occasion had she once to weep. With all these families beheld so just and glorious her people, that the lily never upon the spear was placed reversed, nor by division was vermilion made. Recording by Gem of Life Paradiso Canto 17 As came to Clymene, to be made certain of that which he had heard against himself, he who makes fathers cherry still to children. Even such was I, and such was I perceived by Beatrice, and by the holy light, that first on my account had changed its place. Therefore my lady said to me, Send forth the flame of thy desire, so that it issue imprinted well with the internal stamp. Not that our knowledge may be greater made by speech of thine, but to accustom thee to tell thy thirst, that we may give thee drink. O my beloved tree, that so doth lift thee, that even as minds terrestrial perceive, no triangle containeth too obtuse. So thou beholdest the contingent things, ere in themselves they are, fixing thine eyes upon the point in which all times are present. While I was with Virgilus conjoined upon the mountain that the souls doth heal, and when descending into the dead world, was spoken to me of my future life some grievous words. Although I feel myself in sooth for square against the blows of chance, on this account my wish would be content to hear what fortune is approaching me, because foreseen an arrow comes more slowly. Thus did I say unto that self-same light that unto me had spoken before, and even as Beatrice willed, with my own will confessed, not in vague phrase in which the foolish folk ensnared themselves of old, ere yet was slain the Lamb of God who taketh sins away, but with clear words and unambiguous language responded that paternal love, hidden revealed by its own proper smile, contingency that outside of the volume of your materiality extends not, is all depicted in the eternal aspect. Necessity, however, thence it takes naught, except as from the eye in which tis mirrored, a ship that with the current down descends. From thence, e'en as there cometh to the ear, sweet harmony from an organ, comes in sight to me the time that is preparing for thee. As forth from Athens went Hippolytus, by reason of his stepdame false and cruel, so thou from Florence must perforce depart. Already this is willed, and this is sought for, and soon it shall be done by him who thinks it, for every day the Christ is bought and sold. The blame shall follow the offended party, and outcry as is usual, but the vengeance shall witness to the truth that doth dispense it. Thou shalt abandon everything, beloved, most tenderly, and this the arrow is which first the bow of banishment shoots forth. Thou shalt have proof how savoureth of salt the bread of others, and how hard a road the going down and up another stairs. And that which most shall weigh upon thy shoulders will be the bad and foolish company with which into this valley thou shalt fall. For all in great, all mad and impious, will they be come against thee. But soon after they, and not thou, shall have the forehead scarlet, of their bestiality their own proceedings shall furnish proof. So twill be well for thee a party to have made thee by thyself. Thine earliest refuge and thine earliest inn shall be the mighty Lombard's courtesy, who on the ladder bears the holy bird. 
who such benign regard shall have for thee that twixt you twain in doing and in asking that shall be first which is with others last with him shall thou see one who at his birth has by this star of strength been so impressed that notable shall his achievements be not yet the people are aware of him through his young age since only nine years yet around about him have these wheels revolved but ere the gascon cheat the noble henry some sparkles of his virtue shall appear in caring not for silver nor for toil so recognized shall his magnificence become hereafter that his enemies will not have power to keep mute tongues about it on him rely and on his benefits by him shall many people be transformed changing condition rich and mendicant and written in thy mind thou hence shall bear of him but shalt not say it and things said he incredible to those who shall be present then added son these are the commentaries on which was said to thee behold the snares that are concealed behind few revolutions yet should i not thy neighbors thou shouldst envy because thy life into the future reaches beyond the punishment of their perfidies when thy silence showed that sainted soul that it had finished putting in the wolf into that web which i had given it warped began i even as he who yearneth after being in doubt some counsel from a person who seeks and uprightly wills and loves well see i father mine how spurreth on the time towards me such a blow to deal me as heaviest is to him who most gives way therefore with foresight it is well i arm me that if the dearest place be taken from me i may not lose the others by my songs down through the world of infinite bitterness and o'er the mountains from which future summit the eyes of my own lady lifted me and afterward through heaven from light to light i have learned that which if i tell again will be a savior of strong herbs to many and if i am a timid friend to truth i fear lest i may lose my life with those who will hereafter call this time the olden the light in which was smiling my own treasure which there i had discovered flashed at first as in the sunshine doth a golden mirror then made reply a conscience overcast or with its own or with another's shame will taste forsooth the tartness of thy word but ne'ertheless all falsehood laid aside make manifest thy vision utterly and let them scratch wherever is the itch for if thine utterance shall offensive be at the first taste a vital nutriment twill leave thereafter when it is digested this cry of thine shall do as doth the wind which smiteth most the most exalted summits and that is no slight argument of honour therefore are shown to thee within these wheels upon the mount and in the dolorous valley only the souls that unto fame are known because the spirit of the hearer rests not nor doth confirm its faith by an example which has the root of it unknown and hidden for other reason that is not apparent paradiso canto eighteen now was alone rejoicing in its word that soul beatified and i was tasting my own the bitter tempering with the sweet and the lady who to god was leading me said change thy thought consider that i am near unto him who every wrong disburdens unto the loving accents of my comfort i turned me round and then what love i saw within those holy eyes i hear relinquish not only that my language i distrust but that my mind cannot return so far above itself unless another guide it thus much upon that point can i repeat that her again beholding my affection from every other longing was released while the eternal pleasure which direct rayed upon beatrice from her fair face contented me with its reflected aspect conquering me with the radiance of a smile she said to me turn thee about and listen not in my eyes alone is paradise even as sometimes here do we behold the affection in the look 
if it be such that all the soul is rapt away by it. So by the flaming of the effulgence holy to which I turned, I recognized therein the wish of speaking to me somewhat farther, and it began. In this fifth resting place, upon the tree that liveth by its summit, and ah, bears fruit, and never loses leaf, our blessed spirits set below, ere yet they came to heaven, were of such renown that every muse therewith would affluent be. Therefore look thou upon the cross's horns. He whom I now shall name will there enact what doth within a cloud its own swift fire. I saw it walk the cross, the splendor drawn by naming Joshua, even as he did it, nor noted I the word before the deed. And at the name of the great Maccabee, I saw another move itself revolving, and gladness was the whip unto that top. Likewise for Charlemagne and for Orlando, two of them I regard attentive followed, as followeth the eye its falcon flying. William there afterward, and Renaud, and the Duke Godfrey, did attract my sight upon the cross, and Robert Giscard, then moved and mingled with the other lights. The soul that had addressed me showed how great an artist was among the heavenly singers. To my right side I turned myself around, my duty to behold in Beatrice, either by words or gestures signified, and so translucent I beheld her eyes, so full of pleasure, that her countenance surpassed its other and its latest want. And as by feeling greater delectation, a man in doing good from day to day becomes aware his virtue is increasing. So I became aware that my gyration with heaven together had increased its bark, that miracle beholding more adorned, and such as is the change in little lapse of time in a pale woman when her face is from the load of bashfulness unladen. Such was it in mine eyes when I had turned, caused by the whiteness of the temperate star, the sixth which to itself had gathered me. Within that jovial torch did I behold the sparkling of the love, which was therein delineate our language to mine eyes. And even as birds uprisen from the shore, as in congratulation o'er their food, make squadrons of themselves, now round, now long, so from within those lights the holy creatures sang flying to and fro, and in their figures, made of themselves, now D, now I, now L. For singing they came to their own music moved, then one becoming of these characters, a little while they rested and were silent. O divine Pegasi, thou who genius doth glorious make and render it long lived, and this through thee the cities and the kingdoms. Allume me with thyself, that I may bring their figures out as I have them conceived. Apparent by thy power in these brief verses. Themselves then they displayed in five times seven vowels and consonants, and I observed parts as they seem spoken unto me. Dilijat justium. These were first verb and noun of all that was depicted. Ki jituricus terum were the last. Thereafter in the M of the fifth word remained they so arranged that Jupiter seemed to be silver there with gold inlaid. And other lights I saw descend where was the summit of the M and pause there singing the good, I think, that draws themselves to itself. Then, as in striking upon burning logs, upward there fly innumerable stalks, when fools are wont to look for auguries. More than a thousand lights seem thence to rise, and to ascend some more, and others less, even as the sun that lights them had allotted. And each one being quiet in its place, the head and neck beheld eye of an eagle, delineated by that inlaid fire. He who there paints has none to be his guide, but himself guides, and is from him remembered that virtue which is form unto the nest. The other beatitude, that contented seemed at first to bloom a lily on the M, by a slight motion followed out the imprint. O gentle star, what and how many gems did demonstrate to me, 
that all our justice effect is of that heaven which thou engendest. Wherefore I pray the mind, and which begin thy motion, and thy virtue, to regard whence comes the smoke that vitiates thy rays, so that a second time is now be wrought with buying and with selling in the temple, whose walls were built with signs and martyrdoms. O soldiery of heaven, whom I contemplate, implore for those who are upon the earth all gone astray after the bad example. Once t'was the custom to make war with swords, but now it is made by taking here and there the bread the pitying father shuts from none. Yet thou, who writest but to counsel, think that Peter and that Paul, who for this vineyard which thou art spoiling died, are still alive. Well, canst thou say, so steadfast my desire, if unto him who will to live alone, and for a dance was led to martyrdom, that I know not the fisherman, nor Paul. Better do so. Canto 19. Appeared before me with its wings outspread, the beautiful image that in sweet fruition made jubilant the interwoven souls. Appeared a little ruby each, wherein ray of the sun was burning so enkindled that each into mine eyes refracted it. And what it now behooves me to retrace, nor voice has e'er reported, nor ink written, nor was thy fantasy e'er comprehended. For speak I saw, and likewise heard, the beak and utter with its voice both I and my, when in conception it was we and our, and it began, being just and merciful, am I exalted here unto that glory which cannot be exceeded by desire, and upon earth I left my memory such that the evil-minded people there commend it, but continue not the story. So doth a single eat from many embers make itself felt, even as from many loves issued a single sound from out that image. Whence I thereafter all perpetual flowers of the eternal joy, that only one make me perceive your odors manifold. Exhaling, break within me the great vast, which a long season has in hunger held me, not finding for it any food on earth. Well do I know that if in heaven is a mirror, justice divine another realm doth make. Yours apprehends it not through any veil. You know how I attentively address me to listen, and you know what is the doubt that is in me so very old a fast, even as a falcon issuing from his hood doth move his head and with his wings applaud him, showing desire and making himself thine. Saw I become that standard which of lauds was interwoven of the grace divine with such songs as he knows who there rejoices. Then it began. He who a compass turned on the world's outer verge and who within it devised so much occult and manifest, could not the impress of his power so make on all the universe, as that his word should not remain in infinite excess. And this makes certain that the first proud being, who was the paragon of every creature, by not awaiting light, fell immature, and hence appears it that each minor nature is scant receptacle unto that good which has no end and by itself is measured. In consequence, our vision, which perforce must be some ray of that intelligence with which all things whatever are replete, cannot in its own nature be so potent that it shall not its origin discern far beyond that which is apparent to it. Therefore into the justice, sympaternal, the power of vision that your world receives as I into the ocean penetrates, which though it see the bottom near the shore, upon the deep perceives it not, and yet tis there, but it is hidden by the depth. There is no light but comes from the serene that never is o'ercast. Nay, it is darkness or shadow of the flesh, or else it's poison. Amply to thee is open now the cavern, which has concealed from thee the living justice of which thou mapst such frequent questioning. For saidest thou, 
for a man is on the shore of Indus, and is none who there can speak of Christ, nor who can read, nor who can write. And all his inclinations and his actions are good, so far as human reason sees, without a sin in life or in discourse. He dieth unbaptized and without faith. Where is this justice that condemneth him? Where is his fault, if he do not believe? Now who art thou that on the bench would sit in judgment at a thousand miles away, with the short vision of a single span? Truly to him who with me subtilizes, if so the scripture were not over you, for doubting there were marvelous occasion. O animals terrene, O stolid mind, the primal will, that in itself is good, ne'er from itself the good supreme has moved. So much is just as in accordant with it, no good created draws it to itself, but if by raying forth occasions that, even as above her nest goes circling round the stork, when she has fed her little ones, and he who has been fed looks up at her, so lifted I my brows, and even such became the blessed image which its wings were moving, by so many counsels urged, circling around it sang and said, As are my notes to thee, who dost not comprehend them, such is the eternal judgment to you mortals. Those lucent splendors of the Holy Spirit grew quiet then, but still within the standard that made the Romans reverend to the world. It recommenced, Unto this kingdom never ascended one who had not faith in Christ, before or since he to the tree was nailed. But look thou, many crying, Ah, Christ, Christ, who at the judgment shall be far less near to him than some shall be who knew not Christ. Such Christians shall the happy up condemn when the two companies shall be divided, the one forever rich, the other poor. What do your kings, may not the Persians say, when they that volume opened shall be old, in which are written down all their dispraises? There shall be seen among the deeds of Albert, that which ere long shall set the pen in motion, for which the realm of Prague shall be deserted. There shall be seen the woe that on the sin he brings by falsifying of the coin, who by the blow of a wild boar shall die. There shall be seen the bribe that causes thirst, which makes the Scot and Englishmen so mad that they within their boundaries cannot rest. Be seen the luxury and effeminate life of him of Spain and the Bohemian, who valor never knew and never wished. Be seen the cripple of Jerusalem, his goodness represented by an eye, while the reverse in M shall represent. Be seen the avarice and poltroonery of him who guards the island of the fire, wherein Anchises finished his long life, and to declare how pitiful he is, shall be his record in contracted letters, which shall make note of much in little space and shall appear to each one the foul deeds of uncle and of brother, who a nation so famous have dishonored, and two crowns. And he of Portugal, and he of Norway, shall there be known, and he of Rosca too, who saw in evil hour the coin of Venice. O oh, happy Hungary, if she let herself be wronged, no father, and the bar, the happy, if with the hills that gird her she be armed, and each one may believe that now is Hansel thereof to Nicotia and from Augusta lament and rage because of their own beast, who from the other's flank departeth not. When he who all the world illuminates out of our hemisphere so far descends, that on all sides the daylight is consumed. The heaven, that erst by him alone was kindled, doth suddenly reveal itself again by many lights, wherein in one resplendent. And came into my mind this act of heaven, when the ensign of the world and of its leaders had silent and the blessed beak become, because those living luminaries all, so far more luminous, 
Did songs begin lapsing and falling from my memory? O oh, gentle love, that with a smile doth cloak thee, How ardent in those thoughts didst thou appear, That had the breath alone of holy thoughts. After the precious and pellicid crystals, With which be gemmed the sixth light, I beheld silence imposed on the angelic bells, I seemed to hear the murmuring of a river that clear descended down from rock to rock, showing the affluence of its mountain top, and as the sound upon the cithern's neck, taken its form, and as upon the vent of rustic pipe the wind that enters it, even thus, relieved from the delay of waiting, that murmuring of the eagle mounted up along its neck as if it had been hollow. There it became a voice, and issued thence from out its beak, in such a form of words, as art waited for wherein I wrote them. The part in me which sees and bears the sun in mortal eagles, it began to me, now fixedly must needs be looked upon. For of the fires of which I make my figure, those whence the eye doth sparkle in my head, of all their orders the supremest are. He who is shining in the midst as pupil was once the singer of the Holy Spirit who bore the ark from city unto city. Now knoweth he the merit of his song in so far as effect of his own counsel by the reward which is commensurate. Of five that make a circle for my brow, he that approacheth nearest to my beak to the poor widow for her son console. Now knoweth he how dearly it doth cost not following Christ, by the experience of this sweet life and of its opposite. He who comes next in the circumference of which I speak, upon its highest arc, did death postpone by penitence sincere. Now knoweth he that the eternal judgment suffers no change, albeit worthy prayer maketh below tomorrow of today. The next who follows with the laws in me under the good intent that bore bad fruit, became a Greek by seeding to the pastor. Now knoweth he how all the ill deduced from his good action is not harmful to him, although the world thereby may be destroyed, and he, whom in the downward arc thou seest, Guglielmo was, whom the old sane land deplores, that weepeth Charles and Frederick yet alive. Now knoweth he how heaven enamored is with a just king, and in the outward show of his effulgence, he reveals it still. Who would believe down in the errant world that ere the Trojan Rufus in this round could be the fifth one of the holy lights? Now knoweth he enough of what the world has not the power to see of grace divine, although his sight may not discern the bottom like as a lark that in the air expatiates, first singing and then silent with content of the last sweetness that doth satisfy her. Such seemed to me the image of the imprint of the eternal pleasure, by whose will doth everything become the thing it is. And notwithstanding to my doubt, I was as glass is to the color that invests it, to wait the time in silence it endured not, but forth from my mouth. What things are these extorted from the force of its own weight? Whereas I saw a great joy of coruscation thereafterward, with eyes still more enkindled, the blessed standard made to me reply to keep me not in wonderment suspended. I see that thou believest in these things, because I say them. But thou seest not how, so that, although believed in, they are hidden. Thou doest as he doth, who a thing by name well apprehendeth. But its quiddity cannot perceive unless another show it. Regnum colorum suffereth violence from fervent love and from that living hope that overcometh the divine volition. Not in the guise that man overcometh man, but conquers it because it will be conquered, and conquered conquers by benignity. The first life of the eyebrow and the fifth cause thee astonishment, because with them thou seest the region of the angels painted. 
they pass not from their bodies as thou thinkest, Gentiles, but Christians in the steadfast faith of feet that were to suffer and had suffered, for one from hell, where no one e'er turns back unto good will, returned upon his bones, and that of living hope was the reward of living hope that placed its efficacy in prayers to God, made to resuscitate him, so that twere possible to move his will. The glorious soul concerning which I speak, returning to the flesh, where brief its day, believed in him who had the power to aid it, and in believing, kindled to such fire of genuine love, that at the second death worthy it was to come unto this joy. The other one, through grace, that from so deep a fountain wells that never hath the eye of any creature reached its primal wave, set all his love below on righteousness. Wherefore from grace to grace did God unclose his eye to our redemption yet to be, whence he believed therein, and suffered not from that day forth the stench of paganism, and he reproved therefore the folk perverse, those maidens three, whom at the right hand wheel thou didst behold, were unto him for baptism more than a thousand years before baptizing. O thou predestination, how remote thy root is from the aspect of all those who the first cause did not behold in dire, and you, O mortals, hold yourselves restrained in judging. For ourselves who look on God, we do not know as yet all the elect, and sweet to us is such deprivation, because our good in this good is made perfect, that whatsoever God wills, we also will. After this manner, by that shape divine, to make clear in me my short-sightedness, was given to me a pleasant medicine. And as a good singer, a good lutenist accompanies with vibrations of the chords, whereby more pleasantness the song acquires. So while it spake, do I remember me that I beheld both of those blessed lights, even as the winking of the eyes concords, moving unto the words, their little flames. Paradiso, Canto 21. Already on my lady's face mine eyes again were fastened, and with these my mind, and from all other purpose was withdrawn, and she smiled not. But if I were to smile, she unto me began. Thou wouldst become like Semle, where she was turned to ashes, because my beauty that along the stairs of the eternal palace more enkindles, as thou hast seen the farther we ascend. If it were tempered not, is so resplendent that all thy mortal power in its effulgence would seem a leaflet like the thunder crushes. We are uplifted to the seventh splendor that underneath the burning lion's breast now radiates downward, mingled with his power. Fix in direction of thine eyes the mind, and make of them a mirror for the figure that in this mirror shall appear to thee. He who could know what were the pastorage my sight had in that blessed countenance when I transferred me to another care would recognize how grateful was to me obedience unto my celestial escort, by counterposing one side with the other, within the crystal which, around the world revolving, bears the name of its dear leader, under whom every wickedness lay dead. Colored like gold on which the sunshine gleams, a stairway I beheld to such a height uplifted that mine eyes pursued it not. Likewise beheld I down the steps descending so many splendors, that I thought each light that in the heaven appears was there diffused, and as accordant with their natural custom, the rooks together at the break of day bestir themselves to warm their feathers gold. Then some of them fly off without return, others come back to where they started from, and others wheeling round still keep it home. Such fashion it appeared to me was there within the sparkling that together came, as soon as on a certain step it struck, and that which nearest unto us remained, came so clear that in my thought I said, 
will I perceive the love thou showest me. But she, from whom I wait the how and when of speech and silence, standeth still, whence I against desire do well if I ask not. She thereupon, who saw my silentness, in the sight of him who seeth everything, said unto me, Let loose thy warm desire, and I began. No merit of my own renders me worthy of response from thee, and for her sake who granteth me the asking. Thou blessed life, that doth remain concealed in thy beatitude, make known to me the cause which draweth thee so near my side, and tell me why is silent in this wheel the dulcet symphony of paradise, that through the rest below sounds so devoutly. Thou hast thy hearing mortal as thy sight, if answer made to me, they sing not here for the same cause that Beatrice has not smiled. Thus far adown the holy stairway steps have I descended, but to give thee welcome with words and with the light that mantles me. Nor did more love cause me to be more ready, for love as much and more up there is burning as doth the flaming manifest to thee. But the high charity that makes us servants prompt to the counsel which controls the world, a lot of here, even as thou dost observe. I see full well, said I, O sacred lamp, how love unfettered in this court sufficeth to follow the eternal providence. But this is what seems hard for me to see. Wherefore, predestinate, wast thou alone unto this office from among thy consorts? No sooner had I come to the last word, and of its middle made a light of center, whirling itself about like a swift millstone. When answer made the love that was therein, on me directed is the light divine, piercing through this in which I am embosomed, of which the virtue with my sight conjoined lifts me above myself so far I see the supreme essence from which this is drawn. Hence comes the joyfulness with which I flame, for to my sight, as far as it is clear, the clearness of the flame I equal make. But that soul in the heaven, which is most pure, that seraph, which is eye on God most fixes, could this demand of thine not satisfy. Because so deeply sinks in the abyss of the eternal statue what thou askest, from all created sight it is cut off. And to the mortal world, when thou returnest, this carry back, that it may not presume longer toward such a goal to move its feet. The mind that shineth here on earth doth smoke. From this observe, how can it do below that which it cannot through the heaven assume it? Such limit did its words prescribe to me. The question I relinquished and restricted myself to ask it humbly who it was. Between two shores of Italy rise cliffs, but not far distant from thy native place. So high the thunders far below them sound, and form a ridge that Catria is called, neath which is consecrate a hermitage, wont to be dedicated to worship only. Thus unto me the third speech recommenced, and then continuing it said, There un unto God's service I become so steadfast, that feeding only on the juice of olives, lightly I passed away the heats and frosts, contented in my thoughts contemplative. That cloister used to render to these heavens abundantly, and now is empty grown, so that perforce it seem must be revealed. I in that place was Peter Damiano, and Peter the sinner was I in the house of Our Lady on the Adriatic shore. Little of mortal life remained to me when I was called and dragged forth to the hat which shifteth evermore from bad to worse. Came Cephas, and the mighty vessel came of the Holy Spirit, meager and barefooted, taking the food of any hostelry. Now some one to support them on each side, the modern shepherds need, and some to lead them. So heavy are they, and to hold their trains. They cover up their palfreys with their cloaks, so that two beasts go underneath one skin. O oh, patience, that dost tolerate so much. At this voice, 
saw I many little flames from step to step, descending and revolving, and every revolution made them fairer. Round about this one came they and stood still, and a cry uttered of so loud a sound it here could find no parallel, nor I distinguished it. The thunder so overcame me. Recording by Christy Nowak Paradiso, Canto 22 Oppressed with stupor, I unto my guide turned like a little child who always runs for refuge there where he confideth most. And she, even as a mother who straightway gives comfort to her pale and breathless boy with voice whose wont it is to reassure him, said to me, Knowest thou not thou art in heaven? And knowest thou not that heaven is holy all, and what is done here cometh from good zeal? After what wise the singing would have changed thee, and I by smiling, thou canst now imagine, since that the cry has startled thee so much, in which, if thou hadst understood its prayers, already would be known to thee the vengeance which thou shalt look upon before thou diest. The sword above here smiteth not in haste, nor tardily, howe'er it seem to him who fearing or desiring waits for it. But turn thee round towards the others now, for very illustrious spirits shalt thou see if thou thy sight directest as I say. As it seemed good to her, mine eyes I turned, and saw a hundred spherules that together with mutual rays each other more embellished. I stood as one who in himself represses the point of his desire, and ventures not to question, he so feareth the too much. And now the largest and most luculent among those pearls came forward, that it might make my desire concerning it content. Within it then I heard, If thou couldst see, even as myself, the charity that burns among us, thy conceits would be expressed. But, that by waiting thou mayst not come late to the high end, I will make answer even unto the thought of which thou art so cherry. That mountain on whose slope Casino stands was frequented of old upon its summit by a deluded folk and ill-disposed. And I am he who first up thither bore the name of him who brought us upon the earth, the truth that so much sublimateth us. And such abundant grace upon me shown that all the neighboring towns I drew away from the impious worship that seduced the world. These other fires, each one of them, were men contemplative, in kindling by that heat which maketh holy flowers and fruits spring up. Here is Macarius, here is Romuldus, here are my brethren who within the cloisters their footsteps stayed and kept a steadfast heart. And I to him, the affection which thou showest speaking with me, and the good countenance which I behold and note in all your ardors, in me have so my confidence dilated as the sun doth the rose when it becomes as far unfolded as it hath the power. Therefore I pray, and thou assure me, Father, if I may so much grace receive that I may thee behold with countenance unveiled. He thereupon, Brother, thy high desire in the remotest fear shall be fulfilled, where are fulfilled all others and my own. There perfect is, and ripened, and complete every desire. Within that one alone is every part where it has always been, for it is not in space, nor turns on poles, and unto it our stairway reaches up, whence, whence thus from out thy sight it steals away. Up to that height the patriarch Jacob saw it, extending its supernal part, what time so thronged with angels it appeared to him. But to ascend it now, no one uplifts his feet from off the earth, and now my rule below remaineth for mere waste of paper. The walls that used of old to be an abbey are changed to dens of robbers, and the cowls are sacks filled full of miserable flour. But heavy usury is not taken up so much against God's pleasure as that fruit which maketh so insane the heart of monks. For whatsoever hath the church in keeping is for the folk that ask it in God's name, not for one's kindred or for something worse. The flesh of mortals is so very soft that good beginnings down below suffice not from springing of the oak to bearing acorns. Peter began with neither gold nor silver, and I with orison and abstinence, and Francis with humility his convent. If thou lookest at each one's beginning, and then regardest whither he has run, thou shalt behold the white changed into brown. In verity the Jordan backward turned, and the sea fleeing when God willed were more a wonder to behold than succor here. 
Thus unto me he said, and then withdrew to his own band, and the band closed together. Then, like a whirlwind, all was upward wrapped. The gentle lady urged me on behind them up o'er that stairway by a single sign, so did her virtue overcome my nature. Nor here below, where one goes up and down by natural law, was motion e'er so swift that it could be compared unto my wing. Reader, as I may unto that devout triumph return, on whose account I often for my transgressions weep and beat my breast, thou hadst not thrust thy finger in the fire and drawn it out again before I saw the sign that follows Taurus, and was in it. O oh, glorious stars, O oh, light impregnated with mighty virtue, from which I acknowledge all my genius, whatsoever it may be, with you was born, and hid himself with you, he who is father of all mortal life, when first I tasted of the Tuscan air. And then, when grace was freely given to me to enter the high wheel which turns around you, your region was allotted unto me. To you, devoutly, at this hour, my soul is sighing, that it virtue may acquire for the stern pass that draws it to itself. Thou art so near unto the last salvation, thus Beatrice began, thou oughtest now to have thine eyes unclouded and acute. And therefore, ere thou enter farther in, look down once more, and see how vast a world thou hast already put beneath thy feet, so that thy heart, as jocund as it may, present itself to the triumphant throng that comes rejoicing through this rounded ether. I with my sight returned through one and all the sevenfold spheres, and I beheld this globe such that I smiled at its ignoble semblance, and that opinion I approve as best which doth account at least and he who thinks of something else may truly be called just. I saw the daughter of Latona shining without that shadow, which to me was cause that once I had believed her rare and dense. The aspect of thy son Hyperion, here I sustained, and saw how moved themselves around and near him Maya and Dion. Thence there appeared the temperateness of Jove, twixt son and father, and to me was clear the change that of their whereabout they make. And all the seven made manifest to me how great they are, and eke how swift they are, and how they are in distant habitations. The threshing floor that maketh us so proud, to me revolving with the eternal twins, was all apparent made from hill to harbor. Then, to the beauteous eyes, mine eyes I turned. End of Canto 22 Canto 23 even as a bird, mid the beloved leaves, quiet upon the nest of her sweet brood throughout the night that hideth all things from us, who, that she may behold their longed-for looks, and find the food wherewith to nourish them, in which, to her, grave labors grateful are, anticipates the time on open spray, and with an ardent longing waits the sun, gazing intent as soon as breaks the dawn. Even thus my lady standing was, erect and vigilant, turned round towards the zone underneath which the sun displays less haste, so that, beholding her, distraught and wistful, such I became as he is, who, desiring for something, yearns, and hoping, is appeased. But brief the space from one when to the other, of my waiting, say I, and the seeing, the welkin grow resplendent more and more. And Beatrice exclaimed, Behold the hosts of Christ's triumphal march, and all the fruit harvested by the rolling of these spheres. It seemed to me her face was all aflame, and eyes she had so full of ecstasy that I must needs pass on without describing. As when in nights serene of the full moon smiles trivia among the nymphs eternal who paint the firmament through all its gulfs, saw I, above the myriads of lamps, a sun that one and all of them enkindled, e'en as our own doth the supernal sights. And through the living light transparent shone the lucent substance so intensely clear into my sight that I sustained it not. O oh, Beatrice, thou gentle guide and dear, to me, she said, what overmasters thee a virtue is from which naught shields itself. There are the wisdom and the omnipotence that oped the thoroughfares twixt heaven and earth, for which there erst had been so long a yearning. As fire from out a cloud unlocks itself, dilating so it finds not room therein, and down against its nature falls to earth, so did my mind among those elements become larger, issue from itself, and that which it became cannot remember. 
Open thine eyes and look at what I am. Thou hast beheld such things that strong enough hast thou become to tolerate my smile. I was as one who still retains the feeling of a forgotten vision and endeavors in vain to bring it back into his mind when I this invitation heard. Deserving of so much gratitude, it never fades out of the book that chronicles the past. If at this moment sounded all the tongues that Polyhymnia and her sisters made most lubrical with their delicious milk to aid me to a thousandth of the truth it would not reach, singing the holy smile and how the holy aspect it illumined, and therefore, representing paradise, the sacred poem must perforce leap over, even as a man who finds his way cut off. But whoso thinketh of the ponderous theme, and of the mortal shoulder laden with it, should blame it not, if under this it tremble. It is no passage for a little boat, this which goes cleaving the audacious prow, nor for a pilot who would spare himself. Why doth my face so much enamour thee, that to the garden fair thou turnest not, which under the rays of Christ is blossoming? There is the rose in which the word divine became incarnate. There the lilies are, by whose perfume the good way was discovered. Thus Beatrice. And I, who to her counsels was wholly read, once again betook me unto the battle of the feeble brows. As in the sunshine, that unsullied streams through fractured cloud, ere now a meadow of flowers mine eyes with shadow covered o'er have seen, so troops of splendors manifold I saw, illumined from above with burning rays, beholding not the source of the effulgence. O power benignant that dost so imprint them, thou didst exalt thyself to give more scope there to mine eyes that were not strong enough. The name of that fair flower I e'er invoke morning and evening utterly enthralled my soul to gaze upon the greater fire. And when, in both mine eyes depicted, were the glory and greatness of the living star which there excelleth, as it here excelled, athwart the heavens a little torch descended, formed in a circle like a coronal, and cinctured it, and whirled itself about it. Whatever malady most sweet soundeth on earth, and to itself most draws the soul, would seem a cloud that, rent asunder, thunders. Compared unto the sounding of that lyre, wherewith was crowned the sapphire beautiful, which gives the clearest heaven its sapphire hue. I am angelic love, that circle round the joy sublime, which breathes from out the womb that was the hostelry of our desire. And I shall circle, Lady of Heaven, while thou followest thy Son, and makest diviner the sphere supreme, because thou enterest there. Thus did the circulated melody seal itself up, and all the other lights were making to resound the name of Mary. The regal mantle of the volumes, all of that world which most fervid is, and living with breath of God and with his works and ways, extended over us its inner border, so very distant, that the semblance of it there, where I was not yet, appeared to me. Therefore mine eyes did not possess the power of following the incoronated flame which mounted upward near to its own seed. And... As a little child that toward its mother stretches its arms when it the milk has taken, through impulse kindled into outward flame, each of those gleams of whiteness upward reached so with its summit that the deep affection they had for Mary was revealed to me. Thereafter they remained there in my sight, Regina Coeli singing with such sweetness that ne'er from me has the delight departed. Oh, what exuberance is garnered up within those richest coffers which had been good husbandmen for sowing here below. There they enjoy and live upon the treasure which was acquired while weeping in the exile of Babylon wherein the gold was left. There triumpheth beneath the exalted Son of God and Mary in his victory, both with the ancient council and the new, he who doth keep the keys of such a glory. End of Canto 23 Paradiso, Canto 24 O company elect to the great supper of the Lamb, Benedite, who feedeth you so that forever full is your desire, if, by the grace of God, this man foretaste something of that which falleth from your table, or ever death prescribe to him the time, direct your mind to his immense desire, and him somewhat be due, Ye drinking are for ever at the font whence comes his thought. Thus Beatrice. And, 
Those souls beatified transform themselves to spheres on steadfast poles, flaming intensely in the guise of comets. And as the wheels in works of horologies revolve so that the first to the beholder motionless seems and the last one to fly, so in like manner did those carols, dancing in different measure of their affluence, give me the gauge as they were swift or slow. From that one which I noted of most beauty beheld I issue forth a fire so happy that none it left there of a greater brightness. And around Beatrice three several times it whirled itself with so divine a song my fantasy repeats it not to me. Therefore the pen skips, and I write it not, since our imagination for such folds, much more our speech, is of a tint too glaring. O holy sister mine, who is implorest with such devotion, by thine ardent love thou dost unbind me from that beautiful sphere. Thereafter, having stopped, the blessed fire unto my lady did direct its breath, which spake in fashion as I here have said. And she, O light eterna of the great man to whom our Lord delivered up the keys, he carried down of this miraculous joy, this one examine on points light and grave, as good beseemeth thee, about the faith by means of which thou on the sea didst walk. If he love well, and hope well, and believe, from thee tis hid not, for thou hast thy sight there where depicted everything is seen. But since this kingdom has made citizens by means of the true faith, to glorify it, tis well he have the chance to speak thereof. As Baccalaureate arms himself, and speaks not until the master doth propose the question to argue it, and not to terminate it, so did I arm myself with every reason, while she was speaking, that I might be ready for such a questioner and such profession. Say, thou good Christian, manifest thyself. What is the faith? Whereat I raised my brow unto that light wherefrom was this breathed forth. Then turned I round to Beatrice, and she prompt signals made to me that I should pour the water forth from my internal fountain. May grace that suffers me to make confession, began I, to the great centurion my cause conceptions all to be explicit. And I continued, As the truthful pen, father, of thy dear brother wrote of it, who put with thee Rome into the good way, Faith is the substance of the things we hope for, and evidence of those that are not seen, and this appears to me quiddity. Then heard I, Very rightly thou perceivest, if well thou understandest why he placed it with substances, and then with evidences. And I thereafterward, The things profound that here vouchsafe me their apparition unto all eyes below are so concealed, that they exist there only in belief, upon which is founded the high hope, and hence it takes the nature of a substance. And it behooveth us from this belief to reason without having other sight, and hence it has the nature of evidence. Then heard I, If whatever is acquired below by doctrine were thus understood, no sophist's subtlety would there find place. Thus was breathed forth from that enkindled love. Then added, very well has been gone over already of this coin, the alloy and weight, but tell me if thou hast it in thy purse. And I, yes, both so shining and so round that in its stamp there is no peradventure. Thereafter issued from the light profound that there resplendent was, this precious jewel, upon the which is every virtue founded, whence hast thou it? And I, the large outpouring of Holy Spirit which has been diffused upon the ancient parchments and the new, a syllogism is, which proved it to me with such acuteness that, compared therewith, all demonstration seems to me obtuse. And then I heard, the ancient and the new postulates that to thee are so conclusive, why dost thou take them for the word divine? And I, the proofs, which show the truth to me, are the works subsequent, whereunto nature ne'er heated iron yet, nor anvil beat. T'was answered me, Say, who assureth thee that those works ever were, the thing itself that must be proved, naught else to thee affirms it? Were the world to Christianity converted, I said, without miracles this one is such, the rest are not its hundredth part. Because that poor and fasting thou didst enter into the field to sow there, the good plant which was a vine has become a thorn. This being finished, the high holy court resounded through the spheres, One God we praise, in melody that there above is chanted. 
And then that baron, who from branch to branch examining had thus conducted me till the extremest leaves we were approaching, again began. The grace that dallying plays with thine intellect, thy mouth has opened, up to this point, as it should opened be, so that I do approve what forth emerged. But now thou must express what thou believest, and whence to thy belief it was presented. O Holy Father, Spirit who beholdest what thou believest, so that thou or canst towards the sepulchre more youthful feet, began I, thou dost wish me in this place the form to manifest of my prompt belief, and likewise thou the cause thereof demandest. And I respond, in one God I believe, sole and etane, who moveth all the heavens with love and with desire, himself unmoved. And of such faith not only have I proofs physical and metaphysical, but gives them likewise the truth that from this place rains down through Moses, through the prophets and the Psalms, through the Evangel, and through you, who wrote, after the fiery spirit sanctified you. In persons three, etane believe, and these, one essence I believe, so one and trying, they bear conjunction both with sunt and est. With the profound condition and divine which now I touch upon doth stamp my mind oft times the doctrine evangelical. This the beginning is. This is the spark which afterwards dilates to vivid flame and, like a star in heaven, is sparkling in me. Even as a Lord who hears what pleaseth him, his servant straight embraces, congratulating for the good news as soon as he is silent, so, giving me its benediction, singing three times encircled me when I was silent, the apostolic light, at whose command I spoken had, in speaking I so pleased him. End of Canto 24 Canto 25 If e'er it happened that the poem sacred, to which both heaven and earth have set their hand, so that it many a year hath made me lean, Overcome the cruelty that bars me out from the fair sheepfold, where a lamb I slumbered, an enemy to the wolves that wore upon it. With other voice, forthwith, with other fleece, poet, will I return, and at my font baptismal will I take the laurel crown. Because, into the face that maketh known all souls to God there entered I, and then, Peter, for her sake, thus my brow encircled. Thereafterward, Towards us moved a light out of that band whence issued the first fruits which of his vicars Christ behind him left. And then my lady, full of ecstasy, said unto me, Look, look, behold the baron from whom below Galatia is frequented. In the same way as when a dove alights near his companion, both of them pour forth, circling about and murmuring their affection, so one beheld I by the other, grand prince glorified, to be with welcome greeted, lauding the food that there above is eaten. But when their gratulations were complete, silently, Korame, each one stood still, so incandescent it o'ercame my sight. Smiling thereafterwards, said Beatrice, Illustrious life, by whom the benefactions of our basilica have been described, make hope resound within this altitude. Thou knowest, as oft thou dost personify it, as Jesus to the three gave greater clearness. Lift up thy head, and make thyself assured, for what comes hither from the mortal world must needs be ripened in our radiance. This comfort came to me from the second fire, wherefore mine eyes I lifted to the hills which bent them down before with too great weight. Since through his grace our emperor wills that thou shouldst find thee face to face before thy death in the most secret chamber with his counts, so that the truth beholden of this court, hope which below there rightfully enamors, thereby thou strengthen in thyself and others. Say what it is, and how is flowering with it thy mind, and say from whence it came to thee? Thus did the second light again continue. And the compassionate, who piloted the plumage of my wings in such high flight, did in reply anticipate me thus. No child whatever the church militant of greater hope possesses, as is written in that sun which irradiates all our band. Therefore it is conceded him from Egypt to come into Jerusalem to see, or ever yet his warfare be completed. The two remaining points, that not for knowledge have been demanded, but that he report how much this virtue unto thee is pleasing, to him I leave, for hard he will not find them, 
nor of self-praise, and let him answer them, and may the grace of God in this assist him. As a disciple, who his teacher follows, ready and willing, where he is expert, that his proficiency may be displayed, hope, said I, is the certain expectation of future glory, which is the effect of grace divine and merit precedent. For many stars this light comes unto me, but he instilled it first into my heart, who was chief singer unto the chief captain. Sperent in te, in the high theity he saith, those who know thy name, and who knowest not if he my faith possess. Thou didst instill me then with his instilling in the epistle, so that I am full, and upon others reign again your reign. While I was speaking, in the living bosom of that combustion quivered an effulgence, sudden and frequent in the guise of lightning. Then breathed, the love wherewith I am inflamed towards the virtue still which followed me unto the palm and issue of the field, wills that I breathe to thee, that thou delight in her, and grateful to me is thy telling whatever things hope promises to thee. And I, the ancient scriptures and the new, the mark establish, and this shows it to me of all the souls whom God hath made his friends. Isaiah saith that each one garmented in his own land shall be with twofold garments, and his own land is this delightful life. Thy brother, too, far more explicitly, there where he treateth the robes of white, this revelation manifests to us. And first, and near the ending of these words, Sperent in te, from over us was heard, to which responsive answered all the carols. Thereafterward a light among them brightened, so that, if cancer one such crystal had, winter would have a month of one sole day. And, as uprises, goes, and enters the dance, a winsome maiden, only to do honor to the new bride, and not from any failing, even thus did I behold the brightened splendor approach the two, who, in a wheel revolved, as was beseeming to their ardent love. Into the song and music there it entered, and fixed on them my lady kept her look, even as a bride silent and motionless. This is the one who lay upon the breast of him our pelican, and this is he to the great office from the cross elected, my lady thus. But, therefore, none the more did move her sight from its attentive gaze before or afterward these words of hers. Even as a man who gazes and endeavors to see the eclipsing of the sun a little, and who by seeing sightless doth become, so I became before that latest fire, while it was said, Why dost thou daze thyself to see a thing which here hath no existence? Earth in the earth my body is, and shall be with all the others there, until our number with the eternal proposition tallies. With the two garments in the blessed cloister are the two lights alone that have ascended, shalt thou take back into your world. And at this utterance the flaming circle grew quiet, with the dulcet intermingling of sound that by the trinal breath was made, as to escape from danger or fatigue, the oars that erst were in the water beaten are all suspended at a whistle's sound. Ah, how much in my mind was I disturbed when I turned round to look on Beatrice, that her I could not see, although I was close at her side and in the happy world. End of Canto 25 Canto 26 While I was doubting for my vision, quenched out of the flame refulgent that had quenched it, issued a breathing that attentive made me, saying, while thou recoverest the sense of seeing which in me thou hast consumed, begin then and declare to what thy soul is aimed, and count it for a certainty. Sight is in thee bewildered and not dead, because the lady who through this divine region conducteth thee has in her look the power the hand of Ananias had. I said, as pleaseth her, or soon or late, let the cure come to eyes that portals were when she with fire I ever burn with entered. The good that gives consent to this court, the Alpha and Omega is, of all the writing that love reads me, low or loud. The selfsame voice that taken had from me the terror of the sudden dazzlement, to speak still farther put it in my thought, and said, In verity with finer sieve behoveth thee to sift, thee it behoveth to say who aimed thy bow at such a target. And I, by philosophic arguments, and by authority that hence descends, such love must needs imprint itself in me, 
For good, so far as good, when comprehended, doth straight enkindle love, and so much greater as more of goodness in itself it holds. Then, to that essence, whose in such advantage that every good which out of it is found is nothing but a ray of its own light, more than elsewhither, must the mind be moved of every one in loving, who discerns the truth in which this evidence is founded. Such truth he to my intellect reveals, who demonstrates to me the primal love of all the sempiternal substances. The voice reveals it of the truthful author, who says to Moses, speaking of himself, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Thou, to revealest to me, beginning the loud evangel that proclaims the secret of heaven to earth above all other edict. And I heard say, by human intellect, and by authority concordant with it, of all thy loves, reserve for God the highest. But say again, if other cords thou feelest, draw thee towards him, that thou mayst proclaim with how many teeth this love is biting thee. The holy purpose of the eagle of Christ not latent was, nay, rather, I perceived whither he fain would my profession lead. Therefore I recommenced, all of those bites which have the power to turn the heart to God unto my charity have been concurrent. The being of the world and my own being, the death which he endured that I may live, and that which all the faithful hope, as I do, with the forementioned vivid consciousness have drawn me from the sea of love perverse, and of the right have placed me on the shore. The leaves wherewith embowered is all the garden of the eternal gardener, do I love as much as he has granted them of good. As soon as I had ceased, a song most sweet throughout the heaven resounded, and my lady said with the others, Holy, holy, holy! And as at some keen light one wakes from sleep by reason of the visual spirit that runs unto the splendor passed from coat to coat, and he who wakes abhorreth what he sees, so all unconscious is his sudden waking until the judgment cometh to his aid. So from before mine eyes did Beatrice chase every mote with radiance of her own that cast its light a thousand miles and more. Whence better after than before I saw, and in a kind of wonderment I asked about the fourth light that I saw with us. And said my lady, There within those rays gazes upon its maker the first soul that ever the first virtue did create. Even as the bough that downward bends its top at transit of the wind, and then is lifted by its own virtue, which inclines it upward, likewise did I. And while that she was speaking, being amazed, and then I was made bold by a desire to speak wherewith I burned. And I began, O apple, that mature alone hast been produced, O ancient father, to whom each wife is daughter and daughter-in-law, devoutly as I can I supplicate thee, that thou wouldst speak to me. Thou seest my wish, and I, to hear thee quickly, speak it not. Sometimes an animal, when covered, struggles so that his impulse needs must be apparent by reason of the rapage following it, and in like manner the primeval soul made clear to me athwart its covering how jubilant it was to give me pleasure, then breathed, Without thy uttering it to me, thine inclination better I discern than thou whatever thing is surest to thee, for I behold it in the truthful mirror, that of himself all things Parhelion makes, and none makes him Parhelion of itself. Thou fain wouldst hear how long ago God placed me within the lofty garden, where this lady unto so long a stairway thee disposed. And how long to mine eyes it was a pleasure, and of the great disdain the proper cause, and the language that I used and that I made. Now, son of mine, the tasting of the trees not in itself was cause of so great exile, but solely the o'erstepping of the bounds. There, whence thy lady moved Virgilius, four thousand and three hundred and two circuits made by the sun, this counsel I desired. And him I saw return to all the lights of his highway nine hundred times and thirty, whilst I upon the earth was tarrying. The language that I spake was quite extinct before that in the work interminable the people under Nimrod were employed. For never more result of reasoning, because of human pleasure that doth change obedient to the heavens, was durable. A natural action is it that man speaks. But whether thus or thus doth nature leave to your own art, as seemeth best to you. Ere I descended to the infernal anguish, 
El was on earth the name of the chief good, from whom comes all the joy that wraps me round. Eli he then was called, and that is proper, because the use of men is like a leaf on bough which goeth, and another cometh. Upon the mount that highest or the wave rises was I, in life, or pure or sinful, from the first hour to that which is the second, as the sun changes quadrant to the sixth. End of Canto 26 Canto 27 Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. All paradise began, so that the melody inebriate made me. What I beheld seemed unto me a smile of the universe, for my inebriation found entrance through the hearing and the sight. O joy, O gladness inexpressible, O perfect life of love and peacefulness, O riches without hankering secure! Before mine eyes were standing the four torches enkindled, and the one that first had come began to make itself more luminous, and even such in semblance it became as Jupiter would become if he and Mars were birds and they should interchange their feathers. That providence which here distributeth season and service in the blessed choir had silence upon every side imposed, when I heard say, If I my color change, marvel not at it, for while I am speaking thou shalt behold all these their color change. He who usurps upon the earth my place, my place, my place which vacant has become before the presence of the Son of God, has of my cemetery made a sewer of blood and stench, whereby the perverse one who fell from here below there is appeased. With the same color which, through sun and verse, painteth the clouds at evening or at morn, beheld I then the whole of heaven suffused, and as a modest woman, who abides sure of herself, and at another's failing from listening only, timorous becomes, even thus did Beatrice change countenance, and I believe in heaven was such eclipse, when suffered the supreme omnipotence. Thereafterward proceedeth forth his words with voice so much transmuted from itself, the very countenance was not more changed. The spouse of Christ has never nurtured been on blood of mine, of Linus, and of Cletus, to be made use of in aquist of gold. But, in aquest of this delightful life, Sixtus and Pius, Urban and Calixtus, after much lamentation, shed their blood, our purpose was not that on the right hand of our successor should in part be seated the Christian folk, in part upon the other, nor that the keys which were to me confided should e'er become an escutcheon on a banner that should wage war on those who are baptized nor I be made the figure of a seal to privileges venal and mendacious, whereat I often reddened and flash with fire. In garb of shepherds the rapacious wolves are seen from here above o'er all the pastures. O wrath of God, why dost thou slumber still? To drink our blood the Chaorcines and Gascons are making ready. O thou good beginning, unto how vile an end must thou needs fall! But the high providence, that with Scipio at Rome the glory of the world defended, will speedily bring aid, as I conceive. And thou, my son, who by thy mortal weight shalt down return again, open thy mouth. What I conceal not, do not thou conceal. As with its frozen vapors, downward falls in flakes our atmosphere, what time the horn of the celestial goat doth touch the sun, Upward in such a ray saw I the ether become, and flaked with the triumphant vapors which there together with us had remained. My sight was following up their semblances, and followed till the medium, by excess the passing farther onward, took from it. Whereat the lady, who beheld me freed from gazing upward, said to me, Cast down thy sight, and see how far thou art turned round. Since the first time that I had downward looked, I saw that I had moved through the whole arc which the first climate makes from midst to end, so that I saw the mad track of Ulysses past Gades, and this side well nigh the shore whereon became Europa a sweet burden. And of this threshing floor the sight to me were more unveiled, but the sun was proceeding under my feet, a sign, and more removed. My mind enamored, which is dallying at all times with my lady, to bring back to her my eyes was more than ever ardent. And if or art or nature has made bait to catch the eyes and so possess the mind in human flesh or in its portraiture, all joined together would appear as naught to the divine delight which shone upon me when, to her smiling face, I turned me round. 
The virtue that her look endowed me with from the fair nest of Leda tore me forth and up into the swiftest heaven impelled me. Its parts exceeding full of life and lofty are all so uniform I cannot say which Beatrice selected for my place. But she, who was aware of my desire, began, the while she smiled so joyously that God seemed in her countenance to rejoice, the nature of that motion which keeps quiet the center and all the rest about it moves, from hence begins, as from its starting point. And in this heaven there is no other where than in the mind divine, wherein is kindled the love that turns it, and the power it reigns. Within a circle light and love embrace it, even as this doth the others, and that precinct he who encircles it alone controls. Its motion is not by another meted, but all the others measured are by this, as ten is by the half and by the fifth. And in what manner time in such a pot may have its roots, and in the rest its leaves, now unto thee can manifest be made. O covetousness, that mortals dust engulf beneath thee so, that no one hath the power of drawing back his eyes from out thy waves. Full fairly blossoms in mankind the will, but the uninterrupted rain converts into abortive wildings the true plums. Fidelity and innocence are found only in children. Afterwards they both take flight, or ere the cheeks with down are covered. One, while he prattles still, observes the fasts, who, when his tongue is loosed, forthwith devours whatever food under whatever moon. Another, while he prattles, loves and listens unto his mother, who, when speech is perfect, forthwith desires to see her in her grave. Even thus is swarthy made the skin so white in its first aspect of the daughter fair of him who brings the morn and leaves the night. Thou, that it may not be a marvel to thee, think that on earth there is no one who governs whence goes astray the human family. Ere January be unwintered wholly by the centesimal on earth neglected, shall these supernal circles roar so loud the tempest that has been so long awaited shall whirl the poops about where are the prows, so that the fleet shall run its course direct, and the true fruit shall follow on the flower. Recorded by Kirsten Ferreri Canto 28 after the truth against the present life of miserable mortals was unfolded by her who doth in paradise my mind, as in a looking-glass a taper's flame he sees who, from behind, is lighted by it, before he has it in his sight or thought, and turns him round to see if so the glass tell him the truth, and sees that it accords therewith as doth a music with its meter. In similar wise, my memory recollecteth that I did, looking into those fair eyes, of which love made the springs to ensnare me. And as I turned me round, and mine were touched by that which is apparent in that volume, whenever on its gyre we gaze intent, a point beheld I, that was raying out light so acute, the sight which it enkindles must close perforce before such great acuteness. And whatsoever star seems smallest here would seem to be a moon, if placed beside it, as one star with another star is placed. Perhaps at such a distance as appears a halo cincturing the light that paints it, when densest is vapor that sustains it, thus distant round the point, a circle of fire so swiftly whirled that it would have surpassed whatever motion soonest girds the world. And this was by another circumstance, that by a third, the third then by a fourth, by a fifth the fourth, and then by a sixth the fifth. The seventh followed thereupon in width so ample now, that Juno's messenger entire would be too narrow to contain it. Even so the eighth and ninth, and every one more slowly moved, according as it was in number distant further from the first. And that one had its flame most crystalline, from which less distant was the stainless spark, I think because more with its truth imbued. My lady, who in my anxiety beheld me much perplexed, said, from that point, dependent is the heaven and nature all. Behold that circle most conjoined to it, and know thou that its motion is so swift through burning love, whereby it is spurred on. And I to her, if the world were arranged in the order which I see in yonder wheels, what set before me would have satisfied me. But in the world of sense, 
we can perceive that evermore the circles are diviner, as they are from the center more remote. Wherefore, if my desire is to be ended in this miraculous and angelic temple that has for confines only love and light, to hear behooves me still how the example and the exemplar go not in one fashion, since for myself in vain I contemplate it. If thine own fingers unto such a knot be insufficient, it is no great wonder, so hard hath it become for want of trying. My lady thus, then said she, Do thou take what I shall tell thee, if thou wouldst be sated, and exercise on that thy subtlety. The circles corporal are wide and narrow, according to the more or less of virtue which is distributed through all their parts. The greater goodness works the greater wheel, the greater wheel the greater body holds, if perfect equally are all its parts. Therefore, this one which sweeps along with it the universe sublime doth correspond unto the circle which most loves and knows. On which account, if thou unto the virtue apply thy measure, not to the appearance of substances that unto thee seem round, thou wilt behold a marvelous agreement, of more to greater, and of less to smaller, in every heaven with its intelligence. Even as remaineth splendid and serene the hemisphere of air, where Boreas is blowing from that cheek where he is mildest, because it is purified, and resolved the rack that erst disturbed it, till the welkin laughs with all the beauties of its pageantry. Thus did I likewise. After that my lady had me provided with her clear response, and like a star in heaven the truth was seen. And soon as to a stop her words had come, not otherwise does iron scintillate when molten than those circles scintillated. Their coruscation all the sparks repeated, and they so many were their number makes more millions than the doubling of the chess. I heard them sing Hosanna choir by choir to the fixed point which holds them at the ubi, and ever will, where they have ever been. And she, who saw the dubious meditations within my mind, the primal circles said, have shown me seraphim and cherubim. Thus rapidly they follow their own bonds, to be as like the point as most they can, and can as far as they are high in vision. Those other loves that round about them go, thrones of the countenance divine are called, because they terminate the primal triad. And thou shouldst know that they have all delight, as much as their own vision penetrates the truth, in which all intellect finds rest. From this it may be seen how blessedness is founded in the faculty which sees, and not in that which loves, and follows next. And of this seeing merit is the measure, which is brought forth by grace, and by good will. Thus on from grade to grade doth it proceed. The second triad, which is germinating in such wise in this sempiternal spring that no nocturnal Aries despoils, perpetually Hosanna warbles forth with threefold melody, that sounds in three orders of joy, with which it is enshrined. The three divine are in this hierarchy, first the dominions, and the virtues next, and the third order is that of the powers. Then, in the dances twain, penultimate, the principalities and archangels wheel, the last is wholly of angelic sport. These orders upward all of them are gazing, and downward so prevail, that unto God they all attracted are, and all attract. And Dionysius, with so great desire to contemplate these orders, set himself. He named them, and distinguished them as I do. But Gregory afterwards dissented from him. Wherefore, as soon as he unclosed his eyes within this heaven, he at himself did smile. And if so much of secret truth a mortal proffered on earth, I would not have thee marvel. For he who saw it here revealed it to him, with much more of the truth about these circles. Canto 29 At what time the children of Latona, surmounted by the ram and by the scales, together make a zone of the horizon, as long as from the time the zenith holds them in equipoise, till from that the girdle both, changing their hemisphere, disturb the balance. So long her face depicted with a smile did Beatrice keep silence, while she gazed fixedly at the point which had overcome me, um, while she gazed fixedly at the point which had overcome me. 
Then she began, I say, and I ask not what thou dost wish to hear, for I have seen it where centers every when and every ubi, not to acquire some good unto himself, which is impossible, but that his splendor, in its resplendency, may say, Subsisto, in his eternity outside of time, outside all other limits, as it pleased him, into new loves the eternal love unfolded. Nor, as if torpid, did he lie before, for neither after nor before preceded the going forth of God upon these waters. Matter and form, unmingled and conjoined, came into being that had no defect, even as three arrows from a three-stringed bow. And as in glass, in amber, or in crystal a sunbeam flashes so, that from its coming to its full being is no interval, so from its lord did the triform effect ray forth into its being altogether, without discrimination of beginning. Order was co-created and constructed in substances, and summit of the world were those wherein the pure act was produced. Pure potentiality held the lowest part, midway bound potentiality with act such bond that it shall never be unbound. Jerome has written unto you of angels, created a long lapse of centuries, or ever yet the other world was made. But written is this truth in many places by writers of the Holy Ghost, and thou shalt see it if thou lookest well thereat. And even reason seeth it somewhat, for it would not concede that for so long could be the motors without their perfection. Now dost thou know both where and when these loves created were, and how, so that extinct in thy desire already are three fires. Nor could one reach in counting unto twenty so swiftly, as a portion of these angels disturbed the subject of your elements, the rest remained, and they began this art which thou discernest, with so great delight that never from their circling do they cease. The occasion of the fall was the accursed presumption of that one whom thou hast seen by all the burden of the world constrained. Those whom thou here beholdest modest were to recognize themselves as of that goodness which made them apt for so much understanding, on which account their vision was exalted by the enlightening grace and their own merit so that they have a full and steadfast will. I would not have thee doubt, but certain be, tis meritorious to receive this grace, according as the affection opens to it. Now, round about in this consistory, much mayest thou contemplate, if these my words be gathered up, without all further aid. But since, upon the earth, throughout your schools, they teach that such is the angelic nature that it doth hear, and recollect, and will, more will I say, that thou mayest see unmixed the truth that is confounded there below, equivocating in such like prelections. These substances, since in God's countenance they jocund were, turned not away their sight from that wherefrom not anything is hidden. Hence they have not their vision intercepted by object new, and hence they do not need to recollect through interrupted thought. So that, below, not sleeping, People dream, believing they speak truth, and not believing, and in the last is greater sin and shame. Below you do not journey by one path philosophizing, so transporteth you love of appearance, and the thought thereof. And even this above here is endured with less disdain than when is set aside the holy writ, or when it is distorted. They think not there how much of blood it costs to sow it in the world, and how he pleases who, in humility, keeps close to it. Each striveth for appearance, and doth make his own inventions, and these treated are by preachers, and the evangel holds its peace. One saith that the moon did backward turn in the passion of Christ, and interpose herself so that the sunlight reached not down below, and lies, for of its own accord the light hid itself, whence to Spaniards and to Indians, as to the Jews, did such eclipse respond. Florence has not so many lapi and bindi as fables such as these, that every year are shouted from the pulpit back and forth in such wise that the lambs, who do not know, come back from pasture fed upon the wind, and not to see the harm doth not excuse them. Christ did not to his first disciples say, Go forth, and to the world preach idle tales, but unto them a true foundation gave 
and this so loudly sounded from their lips, that in the warfare to enkindle faith they made of the evangel shields and lances. Now men go forth with jests and drolleries to preach, and if but well the people laugh, the hood puffs out, and nothing more is asked. But in the cowl there nestles such a bird that if the common people were to see it, they would perceive what pardons they can find in. For which so great on earth has grown the folly, that without proof of any testimony, to each indulgence they would flock together. By this St. Anthony his pig doth fatten, and many others, who are worse than pigs, paying in money without mark of coinage. But since we have digressed abundantly, turn back thine eyes forthwith to the right path, so that the way be shortened with the time. This nature doth so multiply itself in numbers, that there never yet was speech nor mortal fancy that can go so far. And if thou noticed that which is revealed by Daniel, thou wilt see that in his thousands number determinate is kept concealed. The primal light that all irradiates it by modes as many is received therein, as are the splendors wherewith it is mated. Hence, inasmuch as on the act conceptive the affection followeth, of love the sweetness therein diversely fervid is, or tepid. The height behold now, and the amplitude of the eternal power, since it hath made itself so many mirrors, where it is broken, one in itself remaining as before. Canto 30 Perchance six thousand miles remote from us is glowing the sixth hour, and now this world inclines its shadow almost to a level. When the mid-heaven begins to make itself so deep to us, that here and there a star ceases to shine so far down as this depth, and as advances bright exceedingly the handmaid of the sun, the heaven is closed, light after light, to the most beautiful. Not otherwise the triumph, which forever plays round about the point that vanquished me, seeming enclosed by what itself encloses. Little by little from my vision faded, whereat to turn mine eyes on Beatrice, my seeing nothing and my love constrained me. If what has hitherto been said of her were all concluded in a single praise, scant would it be to serve the present turn. Not only does the beauty I beheld transcend ourselves, but truly I believe its maker only may enjoy it all. Vanquished do I confess me by this passage, more than by problem of his theme was ever overcome the comic or the tragic poet. For as the sun, the sight that trembles most, even so, the memory of that sweet smile my mind depriveth of its very self. From the first day that I beheld her face in this life, to the moment of this look, the sequence of my song has never been severed. But now, perforce, this sequence must desist from following her beauty with my verse, as every artist at his uttermost. Such as I leave her to a greater fame than any of my trumpet, which is bringing its arduous matter to a final close. With voice and gesture of a perfect leader, she recommenced, We, from the greatest body, have issued to the heaven that is pure light, light intellectual, replete with love, love of true good, replete with ecstasy, ecstasy that transcendeth every sweetness. Here shalt thou see the one host and the other of paradise, and one in the same aspects which at the final judgment thou shalt see even as a sudden lightning that disperses the visual spirits, so that it deprives the eye of impress from the strongest objects. Thus round about me flashed a living light, and left me swathed around with such a veil of its effulgence that I nothing saw. Ever the love which quieteth this heaven welcomes into itself with such salute to make the candle ready for its flame. No sooner had within me these brief words an entrance found than I perceived myself to be uplifted over my own power, and I, with vision new, rekindled me, such that no light whatever is so pure but that mine eyes were fortified against it. And light I saw, in fashion of a river, fulvid with its effulgence, twixt two banks depicted with an admirable spring. Out of this river issued living sparks, and on all sides sank down into the flowers, like unto rubies that are set in gold. And then, 
as if inebriate with the odors, they plunged again into the wondrous torrent, and as one entered, issued forth another. The high desire that now inflames and moves thee to heave intelligence of what thou seest pleaseth me all the more, the more it swells. But of this water it behooves thee drink, before so great a thirst in thee be slaked. Thus said to me the sunshine of mine eyes, and added, The river and the topazes, going in and out, and the laughing of the herbage, are of their truth foreshadowing prefaces. Not that these things are difficult in themselves, but the deficiency is on thy side, for yet thou hast not vision so exalted. There is no babe that leaps so suddenly with face towards the milk if he awake much later than his usual custom is, as I did, that I might make better mirrors still of mine eyes, down stooping to the wave which flows, that we therein be better made. And even as the penthouse of mine eyelids drank of it, it forthwith appeared to me out of its length to be transformed to round. Then, as a folk who have been under masks seem other than before, if they divest the semblance not their own they disappeared in, thus into greater pomp were changed for me the flowerets and the sparks, so that I saw both of the courts of heaven made manifest. O splendor of God, by means of which I saw the lofty triumph of the realm voracious, give me the power to say it how I saw. There is a light above, which visible makes the Creator unto every creature, who only in beholding Him has peace. And it expands itself in circular form to such extent that its circumference would be too large a girdle for the sun. The semblance of it all is made of rays, reflected from the top of primal motion, which takes therefrom vitality and power. And, as a hill in water at its base mirrors itself, as if to see its beauty when affluent most in verdure and in flowers, so, ranged aloft all round about the light, mirrored I saw in more ranks than a thousand all who above there have from us returned. And if the lowest row collect within it so great a light, how vast the amplitude is of this rose in its extremest leaves! My vision, in the vastness and the height, lost not itself, but comprehended all the quantity and quality of that gladness. There, near and far, nor add nor take away, for there, where God immediately doth govern, the natural law in naught is relevant. Into the yellow of the rose eternal that spreads and multiplies and breathes an odor of praise unto the ever-vernal sun, as one who silent is, and fain would speak, me Beatrice drew on, and said, Behold of the white stoles how vast the convent is! Behold how vast the circuit of our city! Behold our seats so filled to overflowing that here henceforward are few people wanting! On that great throne, whereon thine eyes are fixed, for the crown's sake already placed upon it, before thou suppest at this wedding feast, shall sit the soul, that is to be Augustus on earth, of noble Henry, who shall come to redress Italy ere she be ready. Blind covetousness, that casts its spell upon you, has made you like unto that little child who dies of hunger and drives off the nurse. And in the sacred forum then shall be a prefect such that openly or covert, on the same road, he will not walk with him. But long of God he will not be endured in holy office. He shall be thrust down where Simon Magus is for his deserts, and make him of Alanya lower go. Canto 31 In fashion, then, as of a snow-white rose, displayed itself to me the saintly host, whom Christ, in his own blood, had made his bride. But the other host, that flying sees and sings the glory of him who doth enamour it, and the goodness that created it so noble, even as a swarm of bees that sinks in flowers one moment, and the next returns again to where its labor is to sweetness turned, sank into the great flower that is adorned with leaves so many, and thence reascended to where its love abideth evermore. Their faces had they all of living flame, and wings of gold, and all the rest so white no snow unto that limit doth attain. 
From bench to bench, into the flower descending, they carried something of the peace and ardor which by the fanning of their flanks they won. Nor did the interposing twixt the flower and what was over it of such plenitude of flying shapes impede the sight and splendor, because the light divine so penetrates the universe, according to its merit, that naught can be an obstacle against it. This realm, secure and full of gladsomeness, crowded with ancient people and with modern, unto one mark had all its look and love. O trinal light, that in a single star sparkling upon their sight so satisfies them, look down upon our tempest here below. If the barbarians, coming from some region that every day by Helice is covered, revolving with her son whom she delights in, beholding Rome and all her noble works, were wonderstruck, what time the Lateran above all mortal things was eminent, I, who to the divine had from the human, from time unto eternity, had come from Florence to a people just and sane, with what amazement must I have been filled? Truly, between this and the joy, it was my pleasure not to hear, and to be mute. And as a pilgrim, who delighteth him in gazing round the temple of his vow, and hopes some day to retell how it was, so through the living light my way pursuing, directed I mine eyes o'er all the ranks, now up, now down, and now all round about. Faces I saw of charity persuasive, embellished by his light and their own smile, and attitudes adorned with every grace. The general form of paradise already my glance had comprehended as a whole, in no part hitherto remaining fixed. And round I turned me with rekindled wish my lady to interrogate of things concerning which my mind was in suspense. One thing I meant... Another answered me. I thought I should see Beatrice, and saw an old man, habited like the glorious people. Or flowing was he in his eyes and cheeks with joy benign, in an attitude of pity as to a tender father is becoming. And she, where is she? Instantly I said. Whence he? To put an end to thy desire, me Beatrice hath sent from mine own place. And if thou lookest up to the third round of the first rank, again shalt thou behold her, upon the throne her merits have assigned her. Without reply I lifted up mine eyes, and saw her, as she made herself a crown reflecting from herself the eternal rays. Not from that region which the highest thunders is any mortal eye so far removed, in whatsoever sea it deepest sinks, as there from Beatrice my sight. But this was nothing unto me because her image descended not to me by medium blurred. O lady, thou, in whom my hope is strong, and who for my salvation didst endure in hell to leave the imprint of thy feet, of whatsoever things I have beheld, as coming from thy power and from thy goodness, I recognize the virtue and the grace. Thou from a slave hast brought me unto freedom, by all those ways, by all the expedients whereby thou hadst the power of doing it. Preserve towards me thy magnificence, so that this soul of mine, which thou hast healed, pleasing to thee, be loosened from the body. Thus I implored, and she, so far away, smiled as it seemed, and looked once more at me, then unto the eternal fountain turned, and said the old man wholly, that thou mayest accomplish perfectly thy journeying, whereunto prayer and holy love hast sent me, Fly with thine eyes all round about this garden, for seeing it will discipline thy sight further to mount along the ray divine. And she, the Queen of Heaven, for whom I burn wholly with love, will grant us every grace, because that I, her faithful Bernard, am. As he who peradventure from Croatia cometh to gaze at our Veronica, who through its ancient fame is never sated, but says in thought, the while it is displayed, my Lord, Christ Jesus, God of very God, now was your semblance made like unto this. Even such was I, while gazing at the living charity of the man who in this world through contemplation tasted of that peace. Thou son of grace, this jocund life, began he, will not be known to thee by keeping ever thine eyes below here on the lowest place. But mark the circles to the most remote, 
until thou shalt behold enthroned the queen, to whom this realm is subject and devoted. I lifted up mine eyes, and as at morn the oriental part of the horizon surpasses that wherein the sun goes down, thus, as if going with mine eyes from vale to mount, I saw a part in the remoteness surpass in splendor all the other front. And even as there, where we await the pole that Phaeton drove badly, blazes more the light, and is on either side diminished, so likewise that pacific oriflame gleamed brightest in the center, and each side in equal measure did the flame abate. And at that center, with their wings expanded, more than a thousand jubilant angels saw I, each differing in effulgence and in kind. I saw there, at their sports and at their songs, a beauty smiling, which the gladness was within the eyes of all the other saints. And if I had in speaking as much wealth as in imagining, I should not dare to attempt the smallest part of its delight. Bernard, as soon as he beheld mine eyes, fixed and intent upon its fervid fervor, his own with such affection turned to her, that it made mine more ardent to behold. Canto 32 Absorbed in his delight, that contemplator assumed the willing office of a teacher, and gave beginning to these holy words. The wound that Mary closed up and anointed, she at her feet who is so beautiful, she is the one who opened it and pierced it. Within that order which the third seats make is seated Rachel, lower than the other, with Beatrice, in manner as thou seest. Sarah, Rebecca, Judith, and her who was ancestress of the singer, who for dole of the misdeeds said miserere me, canst thou behold from seat to seat descending down in gradation, as with each one's name I, through the rows, go down from leaf to leaf. And downward from the seventh row, even as above the same, succeed the Hebrew women, dividing all the tresses of the flower, because, according to the view which faith in Christ had taken, these are the partition by which the sacred stairways are divided. Upon this side, where perfect is the flower with each one of its petals, seated are those who believed in Christ who was to come. Upon the other side, where intersected with vacant spaces are the semicircles, are those who looked to Christ already come. And as upon this side, the glorious seat of the Lady of Heaven, and the other seats below it, such a great division make. So, opposite doth that of the great John, who ever holy, desert and martyrdom endured, and afterwards two years in hell. And under him, thus to divide, were chosen Francis, and Benedict, and Augustine, and down to us the rest from round to round. Behold now the high providence divine, for one and the other aspect of the faith in equal measure shall this garden fill. And know that downward from that rank which cleaves midway the sequence of the two divisions, not by their proper merit are they seated, but by another's, under fixed conditions. For these are spirits one and all assoiled before they any true election had. Well canst thou recognize it in their faces, and also in their voices prayerile, if thou regard them well, and hearken unto them. Now doubtest thou, and doubting, thou art silent. But I will loosen for thee the strong bond in which thy subtle fancies hold thee fast. Within the amplitude of this domain, no casual point can possibly find place, no more than sadness can, or thirst, or hunger. For by eternal law has been established whatever thou beholdest, so that closely the ring is fitted to the finger here. And therefore are these people festinate unto true life, not sine causa here, more and less excellent among themselves. The king, by means of whom this realm reposes in so great love, and in so great delight, that no will ventureth to ask for more. In his own joyous aspect, every mind creating, at his pleasure dowers with grace diversely, and let here the effect suffice. And this is clearly and expressly noted for you in Holy Scripture, in those twins who in their mother had their anger roused, according to the color of the hair, therefore... With such a grace the light supreme consenteth that they worthily be crowned. Without then any merit of their deeds, 
stationed are they in different gradations, differing only in their first acuteness. Tis true that in the early centuries, with innocence, to work out their salvation sufficient was the faith of parents only. After the earlier ages were completed, behooved it that the males, by circumcision unto their innocent wings, should virtue add. But after that the time of grace had come. Without the baptism absolute of Christ, such innocence below there was retained. Look now into the face that unto Christ hath most resemblance, for its brightness only is able to prepare thee to see Christ. On her did I behold so great a gladness rain down, born onward in the holy minds created through that altitude to fly, that whatsoever I had seen before did not suspend me in such admiration, nor show me such similitude of God. And the same love that first descended there, Ave Maria Grazia Plena singing, in front of her his wings expanded wide. Unto the canticle divine responded from every part the court beatified, so that each sight became serener for it. O Holy Father, who for me endurest to be below here, leaving the sweet place in which thou sittest by eternal lot, who is the angel that with so much joy into the eyes is looking of our queen, enamored so that he seems made of fire? Thus I again recourse had to the teaching of that one who delighted him in Mary, as doth the star of morning in the sun. And he to me. Such gallantry and grace as there can be in angel and in soul, all is in him. And thus we fain would have it, because he is the one who bore the palm down unto Mary, when the Son of God to take our burden on himself decreed. But now, come onward with thine eyes, as I speaking shall go, and note the great patricians of this most just and merciful of empires. Those two that sit above there most in rapture as being very near unto Augusta are, as it were, the two roots of this rose. He who upon the left is near her place, the father is, by whose audacious taste the human species so much bitter tastes. Upon the right thou seest that ancient father of holy church, into whose keeping Christ the keys committed of this lovely flower. And he who all the evil days beheld before his death, of her the beauteous bride, who with the spear and with the nails was one, beside him sits, and by the other rests that leader, under whom on manna lived the people in great fickle and stiff-necked. Opposite Peter seest thou Anna seated, so well content to look upon her daughter, her eyes move not while she sings Hosanna. And opposite the eldest household father Lucia sits, she who thy lady moved when to rush downward thou didst bend thy brows. But since the moments of thy vision fly, here will we make a full stop, as a good tailor who makes the gown according to his cloth. And unto the first love will turn our eyes, that looking upon him, thou penetrate as far as possible through his effulgence. Truly, lest peradventure thou recede, moving thy wings believing to advance, by prayer behooves it that grace be obtained, grace from that one who has the power to aid thee, and thou shalt follow me with thy affection, that from my words thy heart not turn aside. And he began this holy orison. Canto 33 Thou virgin mother, daughter of thy son, humble and high beyond all other creatures, the limit fixed of the eternal counsel, thou art the one who such nobility to human nature gave, that its creator did not disdain to make himself its creature. Within thy womb rekindled was the love, by heat of which in the eternal peace, after such wise this flower has germinated. Here unto us thou art a noonday torch of charity, and below, there, among mortals, thou art the living fountainhead of hope. Lady, thou art so great, and so prevailing, that he who wishes grace, nor runs to thee, his aspirations without wings could fly. Not only thy benignity gives succor to him who asketh it, but oftentimes forerunneth of its own accord the asking. In thee compassion is, in thee is pity, in thee magnificence, in thee unites whatever of goodness is in any creature. Now doth this man, who from the lowest depth of the universe as far as here has seen one after one the spiritual lives, 
supplicate thee through grace for so much power, that with his eyes he may uplift himself higher towards the uttermost salvation. And I, who never burned for my own seeing more than I do for his, all of my prayers proffer to thee, and pray they come not short, that thou wouldst scatter from him every cloud of his mortality, so with thy prayers, that the chief pleasure be to him displayed. Still further do I pray thee, Queen, who canst whatever thou wilt, that sound thou mayest preserve after so great a vision his affections. Let thy protection conquer human movements. See Beatrice and all the blessed ones my prayers to second clasp their hands to thee. The eyes, beloved and revered of God, fastened upon the speaker, showed to us how grateful unto her our prayers devout. Then unto the eternal light they turned, on which it is not credible could be by any creature bent an eye so clear. And I, who to the end of all desires was now approaching, even as I ought the ardor of desire within me ended, Bernard was beckoning unto me, and smiling, that I should upward look. But I already was of my own accord such as he wished, because my sight, becoming purified, was entering more and more into the ray of the high light which of itself is true. From that time forward, what I saw was greater than our discourse, that to such vision yields, and yields the memory unto such excess. Even as he is who seeth in a dream, and after dreaming the imprinted passion remains, and to his mind the rest returns not, even such am I. For almost utterly ceases my vision, and distilleth yet within my heart the sweetness born of it. Even thus the snow is in the sun unsealed. Even thus upon the wind in the light leaves were the soothsayings of the sibyl lost. O light supreme, that dost so far uplift thee from the conceits of mortals, to my mind, of what thou didst appear, relend a little, and make my tongue of so great puissance, that but a single sparkle of thy glory it may bequeath unto the future people. For by returning to my memory somewhat, and by a little sounding in these verses, more of thy victory shall be conceived. I think the keenness of the living ray which I endured would have bewildered me if mine eyes had been averted from it. And I remember that I was more bold on this account to bear, so that I joined my aspect with the glory infinite. O grace abundant, by which I presumed to fix my sight upon the light eternal, so that the seeing I consumed therein, I saw that in its depth far down is lying, bound up with love together in one volume, what through the universe in leaves is scattered, substance and accident, and their operations all interfuse together in such wise that what I speak of is one simple light. The universal fashion of this knot, methinks I saw, since more abundantly in saying this I feel that I rejoice. One moment is more lethargy to me than five and twenty centuries to the emprise that startled Neptune with the shade of Argo. My mind, in this wise, wholly in suspense, steadfast, immovable, attentive gazed, and evermore with gazing grew enkindled. In presence of that light one such becomes, that to withdraw therefrom for other prospect it is impossible he ever consent, because the good, which object is of will, is gathered all in this, and out of it that is defective which is perfect there. Shorter henceforth will my language fall of what I yet remember than an infant who still his tongue doth moisten at the breast, not because more than one unmingled semblance was in the living light on which I looked, for it is always what it was before, but through the sight that fortified itself in me by looking, one appearance only to me was ever changing as I changed. Within the deep and luminous subsistence of the high light appeared to me three circles, of threefold color, and of one dimension. And by the second seemed the first reflected, as iris is by iris, and the third seemed fire that equally from both is breathed. Oh, how all speech is feeble, and falls short of my conceit, and this to what I saw is such, it is not enough to call it little. O light eternal, soul in thyself that dwellest, soul knowest thyself, and known unto thyself, and knowing, 
lovest and smilest on thyself. That circulation, which being thus conceived, appeared in thee as a reflected light, when somewhat contemplated by mine eyes, within itself, of its own very color, seemed to me painted with our effigy, wherefore my sight was all absorbed therein. As the geometrician, who endeavors to square the circle, and discovers not, by taking thought, the principle he wants, even such was I at that new apparition. I wished to see how the image to the circle conformed itself, and how it there finds place, but my own wings were not enough for this. Had it not been, that then, my mind there smote a flash of lightning, wherein came its wish. Here vigor failed the lofty fantasy. But now was turning my desire and will, even as a will that equally is moved, the love which moves the sun and other stars.